for The Wickening, starring Jonathan. That was my favorite part of a movie when he said it's John in time and then he Johned all over the assassins. What does it yeah, mean to good. John on someone? Oh, that's mm, I don't know if we can say that on on YouTube. Well, it might, be a, might be like a urination thing. Uh, I'm going to use you as a John. Oh, yeah. All right. There you go. Makes enough sense. Ah. <sighs> Like uh, like a what, the the Grinch movies, right? Cindy Lou Who. She's called that because everyone pisses on her. <laughs> the, it's a strange element of the Grinch movies. I haven't seen many Grinch stuff. The main one I remember Grinch. is the Jim Carrey one, right? It's like there's the um, original, the, the, the original that was made in like the fifties. Uh huh. Uh, let me check. Original Grinch movie was in no 1966, 1966. and that was the oh I dude that was like 300 it. years ago damn I know Boris Karloff was the narrator um, good old Boris was Chuck Jones who did the animation for that I'm not sure but um, yeah then there was the the Jim Carrey one then there was the recent one. Recentish one, I think Benedict Cumberbatch was the Grinch. You uh, you seen that? Any clips? Yeah, that's maybe? the Illumination one. I saw it. That was fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, that's that's all right. Is Illumination gonna fix up its reputation with Mario? Do you reckon? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think I think probably. I think they're probably. I think that the Mario movie is gonna be responded to well, but like. I'm I'm so curious whether or not that film is going to be like actually like like good or just fine. Maybe it'll because be bad. I I'm I don't think I'm there anymore. I think Maybe it's it going to be, be the worst movie. I think, I think it's going to be okay. Um, mm. But I don't know that it's going to be anything more than that. Wow, I flip think, flopping like, fringy over here. Maybe yeah, this I mean, will be the um... yeah. What 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 crazy me changing my opinion is more information. <laughs> so first you know, off, that's a, that's a sign of a weak mind. Yes, or wow. a lack of spine, or both. No spine yeah. in your brain. I was told you can't change ever. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're not allowed to change your opinion when you receive like information that would lead you to change your opinion. <laughs> yep, it yeah. just means that you don't stand for anything. You're just a leaf in the wind. Yeah. You're just that, uh it's out real soon. It's only a few days away. Jeez. Oh boy. Mm. Yeah. Well, we got Resident um, Evil next week, okay? Mario, Jesus. It's gonna Man. be interesting to see the Mario movie very quickly yeah. clip the box office of Ant Man. Because <laughs> I think it will. I think this one's gonna be yeah. a billion dollars. I think it's gonna be really successful. Um Absolutely. how how's the marketing been? You guys seen it in lots of places? I keep seeing no. ads. Um I think they've got like toys and stuff around the place, like uh, like Happy Meal toys and merchandise and stuff. Well, that'd do you it. Think they'll uh, ever make like uh, you think they'll ever make games, like uh, that'd be like, cool adaptations of the movie. You make like <laughs> Mario games. I mean, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. How would but, it even uh, work? What is to make a game of? It's just some guy yeah, jumping around. It's like an Italian <laughs> plumber in overalls, but he's in this mushroom realm. And there's a say, dinosaur kinda... he's on, and a big, like, big turtle who's angry. Well, and did you see the, the part of getting cars? What's that about? The real, the real question is, is there going to be a post credit scene for the film Ooh. with the Wario and Waluigi? That's the, oh my. That's the real question. Ooh, place your bets. Place I now. I feel like that. I feel like that actually might be exactly what it's going to be. Is going to be Wario. Wario. Doesn't seem unheard of. Well, it's just you got Bowser, right? Now you, you you could do what the games do and just have it be Bowser every time. But I mean, they're probably going to make a sequel, aren't they? Like, if this this film's probably going to make a lot of money. They're probably they're already make... writing or setting up everything for well, the sequel. Because I think uh, part of the reason why this film exists is because like Universal, like you you know how like there's Disney World, there's like a Universal equivalent, and they've got like a big like Mario portion for it. So like that seems to be some deal between Nintendo and Universal and I imagine that they'd want to keep it going for as long as possible. Like, I don't know, it's it's this seems like a really good uh 
like this seems like a, a good thing to try and make movies from like if you can right from a financial perspective I mean I think they're gonna go crazy and uh, once it makes a shit ton of money they're gonna start expanding have a deal with Nintendo they'll have that sit down they'll be like listen you guys want any more characters to have some movies and then they're like do you have any and they're like, well, oh, oh, oh. Right, like, oh, boy, <laughs> what if, uh, what if the Mario movie opens the floodgates for like Nintendo based films? Oh boy. That what could be, possibly I mean, go wrong? Um, Nintendo cringe films. more. Like. I mean, the thing is, is that <laughs> Nintendo is often like quite protective of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but that's... if they see a lot of money, they might be like, hmm. Well, I guess I guess what we'd look at with like the Mario movie is that the Mario movie in particular like would definitely signal that we're in the era where like they're going to I don't know if there's if we can say like for sure that they they're going to actually adapt like the material of the stories of games faithfully. Uh but they're definitely going to use the iconography like we're there, we're at that point now where they're not like they're not running away from that. Like stuff like Mortal Kombat still felt like it was kind of like it's kind of like Hell Sonic bad. the Hedgehog, where it's like, you're still a little bit too scared to, like, fully embrace the games, like, for what they are. But I think we're past that at this point. Um, like, this film doesn't seem like it's doing a lot of the things that a lot of old video game adaptations do, where they, like, really run away from the material. They're like, well, I guess we use the name, but, like, we're changing all of this. Like, it's got all of the iconography, it's got all of the characters and everything. I mean, who knows what it's actually gonna, like, be in terms of a story, but... Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like that's where we're at now, and, you know, The Last of Us being, like, pretty faithful, especially by comparison to a lot of other yeah. video game adaptations in the past. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's and there's... Oh, They're right, on the way! ...coming out, and that's gonna have Shadow the Hedgehog in it, so you know I'm gonna be there, watching that one. And just theaters. like the first and second, I will be there to ask, Ringy, was it, was it cringe? <laughs> How was it? <laughs> oh well, that that one will probably be that one will probably be self aware. That'd be my guess. They'll be like hyper self aware about. Are they Shadow. not all self aware to some degree? Or um, the 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 first two films are more like Marvel self aware, which I don't know if I would describe as like you know the the self aware that it might be with like Shadow the Hedgehog, like they're they're not like Sonic Boom self aware. Okay, is what I'd say. I, I don't know if anybody here has watched Sonic Boom. But that, that, show is like, that show is very aware of what it is and like the Sonic world and like what people think of Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's kind of funny, right? Because we may be doing uh, coverage of that Mario movie. It depends on what we're dealing with. And mm -hmm. But before that, we'll have to do Resident Evil 4. But before that, we'll have to do a movie called John Wick. And it's kind of funny that it's like movie game and then movie game. John Wick, again? Mm -hmm. um... See? Again, games. it's uh, it's 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 the whole gamut, I guess. Uh, I, I was thinking we should probably talk a little bit about John Wick as as it is the thing. It's been mentioned on a lot of other times, covering a lot of other things, and it's just this shocking perspective to a lot of people. Like, ain't all the John Wicks awesome? And then it's like, mm. Mm. John Wick One's really cool. Yeah. Yes, John Wick One's good. Yeah, I liked John Wick One. That was Still that do. was a neat movie. I I like that. I like that first John Wick movie. That was they, some. They just fun kept action. making them. Kept on. Yeah, going. Well, they and, kept, and they then, kept making them the, bad. But the perspective is that they've been improving. I think, mm. I think that's that's how people view oh, the, the series overall. Is that they're improving. But why? Um. Um. <laughs> Well, it's like, what's the appeal of the, of the first one? Why, why did people think it was neat? And it's just like, well, it was really, really straightforward and simple to understand, and the action was clean, and uh, you could really get behind that main badass guy who had to work pretty hard to get the things he needed to get to, to get revenge for a real cute and happy little puppy, but ultimately represented a lot more than just a good friend slash innocent animal. It was the connection he had to his wife, who was the reason he was able to escape his previous life as an assassin. He was like, oh, that's that's a real solid little story you got there. And mm -hmm. then you get some and scenes where you're like, ooh, real, those action scenes, neat. Those are neat, stylish yeah. action, um, to compliment it. Well, that that really is what you're there for, but, like, at the very least, there's a story that's worthwhile to connect it all together. 
um, you get the the soundtrack then as well, and like a stylish yeah. bit of lighting work being done in a lot of different sequences, and then of course the crazy idea of hey, what if the world was like you know assassin friendly in a lot of ways, and there's just so many assassins, a whole world of assassins. When I think from the first one, you may have inferred it's just a particular area that presents itself not as an assassin place but uses very special currency and language in order for the people who know to get mm -hmm. shit done. And the people who don't yeah. to just be like, I don't know, this is a normal place where normal things happen. Don't worry about it. Um, and then, of course, like the interaction with the cop in the first one where it sort of implies that the assassins are uh, so prevalent and widespread that there's even some level of communication with uh, law enforcement or at least an understanding of they have business, you leave it alone. Probably mm -hmm. the kind of thing you get maybe between cops and like the highest powerful levels of the mafia at certain points in history. Or just be like, you don't fuck with us, we don't fuck with you, sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, and, and, and they only ever mostly implied things. They never really went further than that, which was kind of neat. Uh, you, it left your, to your imagination. And, uh, and they also gave us a villain that was pretty fucking, I don't know, dare I say relatable, in that he was like this very veteran bad guy who's friends with uh, John, at least in the older times, and was just like, mm -hmm. this is all chill and fine. We'll sort all this out. And then uh, he's like, hey, you you know, this event is taking place. But then he understands the gravity of it, and he's like, oh shit. And speed runs himself immediately to trying to kill John Wick, because he knows where all this will go. Yeah. And that's exactly where all of it goes. Yes. Like, damn. Then they have themselves oh. a big old fucking fist fight to end the end the thing, and then John is Gotta like bleeding out, you know, and looking at uh, a video of his wife. I think either on his phone or like a camera or something. It's actually what they play uh, right at the beginning of the film. I yeah, think. yeah, it's yeah, the, they do. Yeah, that's... yeah, we see the end first, sort of. And then he he goes to patch himself up, and it's like, oh, there's a dog that's about to be uh, so, uh the, the Minecrafted. And it's like, no, I'm going to take the dog with me. And then they walk over the bridge into the sunset, if you will. And then oh, it ends. Fucking hell, I forgot you had a second dog. Yeah. Is that What, did you, yeah. what happened to that dog? Was it John McToo he gave it into the concierge or something? Oh, yeah, he's just like, oh, I leave that dog here. And then just chills in front of the concierge. Well, yeah, the whole movie. There after he got his house blown up. Yeah. By that guy, <laughs> that new guy who was never and mentioned John in the Wick first too, film at all. Yeah. Even though he had yeah. like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, so the oh, that's the thing, right? As the new mechanic, I in no way think that John Wick One is some kind of masterpiece. I think it's really solid. Nope. I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. I like it. It's cool. Could have made a really great franchise out of it, but instead they made the second John Wick, which mm -hmm. is one Ruined of the everything. three movies that I've talked about before. The three movies that I nearly walked out on in the cinema. That I never ever do that. And John Wick Two was. It was specifically the subway scene where I was just like, <laughs> fucking hell, I, I want to go. Like, I can't watch this. This is so embarrassing. And, uh, you know, what struck me immediately was that I was no longer watching... Um, I no longer believed this was a skilled assassin. I instead was just like, what fucking clouds made this? And thought that this was, like, believable. Which, uh, mm -hmm. I guess everybody has a threshold. You know? In terms of what they'll believe. And a lot of people yeah, felt that, like... Yeah, everyone's got their line. Everyone's got their little line to cross. Well, and then um, there's another set of people who are like, well, it was always absurd. That's the point. It's supposed to be a big old absurdity. Um, a little nonsense uh, it, action movie. It never really was. The first one really wasn't absurd. That's no, one of wasn't. the reasons that it was so uh, so good. But it seemed quite believable. And it seemed like, oh, yeah, this is like a human at like the, the best a human could be, kind of. This is a guy who's, who's insanely good at what he does. And the way that he acts and the way that he behaves kind of, you know, it makes me buy into it, makes me believe it. But I guess it's it's far easier to just write your characters to have insane plot armor. And they started the um, they started stapling things on and they never stopped. They just keep no. doing it every single movie. And in this case There's it was new, uh yeah, new <laughs> crazy like things that are going to be super relevant to the plot that have just were never the case before, like just didn't exist. Nor was there any implication that they did. He He's leaving. He's done. He's done his stuff. He got the kid. The dad came after him. He's got him too. And he's going back and he has his dog. And then it's like, ah, but you forgot about villain man who's here now. 
It's like, yeah. what? And he's like, you have a blood debt, and those things are like markers or whatever. Th those are super important and a part of the Continental and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, I mean, Mel, you're going to remember better than me, but you have to be told what, what the deal is with a marker, right? Oh, it has to be. So, basically what happened, apparently, if we believe the movie, so the, the, the Antonio guy, he comes back to John's like, hey, uh, sorry about your wife. By the way, I heard you're back in, in the business. He's like, uh, not really. I was like, well, I helped you with all... So, I actually have to go back to one for that one, because... Uh, in, in, in the first one, it's mentioned that he had to kill, like, an almost impossible amount of people or has yeah. to do an impossible task. And apparently this uh, D'Antonio guy, he helped him with that. Mm -hmm. But in order to get that help, remember, the help is to get out of the business. He was like, hey, do this blood debt. If you do that, you have to do whatever I tell you. Yeah, Even though he helps of... him to get out of the business, which is... Stupid anyway. And isn't it that if someone holds your marker, you can't do anything to them or something? Yeah, something like that. It's uh, essentially he traded one life debt for another. Pretty much, yeah. Well, uh, the, but the, it never would have been cashed if not for him coming back into the business or something. Right? That's he what was, he says. That's yeah. what he says. We only have his word, which is bullshit anyway. Why even bother if you never wanted to put it out anyway? And then like John, like, outright I, I declining it, which is Yeah, uh, because he interesting. pretends like he can just do that even though he should know better because he if you watch three he made one of those deals with Halle Berry yeah he, he cashes in one of those markers for himself which is kind of funny uh you should have just had her like, assassinate the table member <laughs> yeah just to pull, to pull it around it's, it's it's insane yeah it's just you just have to think about this because if you I can understand you want someone like John Wake on in your back pocket I guess but you don't want a John Wick that's just retired and just hangs out at home with his wife, not doing anything. Like, he's probably not going to be as good when you cash in this thing, I don't know, 10 years from now. He might be older. Shit, he might have gotten fat. <laughs> he's just yeah, hanging that would out be funny. Get, get <laughs> he a comes... piece oh, I, I, piece I'll sure shit. kill your we target, cut, sir. <laughs> we cut to the whale. And he's in his room, and it's John Wick now. <laughs> he I throws a pistol life. to him and says, go. Now I just want to read essays and eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, 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 the whole premise of him having made that deal is bizarre. And it's incredibly though. stupid. They, but they, they like, shut off up. The second That's how we get the second movie. Yeah, we, they start off the second movie, essentially adding in this, this mechanic that he has, that, that John has engaged with. That makes him seem incredibly, shockingly stupid, um, which is always great. That's how you, you know you open up, making well, your and character it's like, an idiot. You're annoyed already with that. It's like, fine, I guess I'll allow it. Let's move on. What happens next? John declines, and then his whole house blows up. And you're like, what? what? <laughs> Doesn't That's he get fine. blown out a window or something? Yes, it's. Something I think like it's that. incendiary uh, grenades, and the whole house starts to fire and explodes, and. He and a dog get like propelled out of the window, but they're both fine. It's no worries. Yeah, and so it just and makes reason... you think like Marker Man. You could have just fucking killed him just then. What? Yeah, because his reasoning is, ah, oh, I, I did that because I needed the angry John Wick. It's like, no, no, you almost <laughs> killed him, you fool. <laughs> like, what are you, you doing? Very well killed him. That he's just like, but... okay, but now I hate you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you still have to do what I say. So ha 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 ha. This couldn't possibly backfire on me. Yeah. Oh, I and just plus, forgot as well. This was after even... he kills the because that's all after the prologue where he's. Oh yeah, the whole prologue is like a whole action scene because he wants his car back, and instead of using his you know his communication that he has with that garage guy that he gives it to repair it for and tells him, hey, can you tell uh, the boss man's brother I killed that I want my car back, because that guy has no no interest in fighting John Wick. He's like fucking hell. Why would I do that? And I like in, in that scene, even the henchman is like, why just don't give it back? It's like, oh, you think he's going to stop now? Just to, at the end, make a peace treaty with him, basically have a vodka. It's like, okay, we're cool now. And then he leaves. With his total car now, by the way. And I remember that I scene being movie. shockingly <laughs> like, he's hyper incompetent in it. He gets himself run over several times. Because that's just something John does these days. We'll get to that. Oh yeah, th this is where the running over uh, John with a car meme starts. And he's, His like, mostly fist-fighting like everybody, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can see 
He has a gun that's... No, he just uses his gun at some point. It's like, oh, you had a gun this whole time? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's because you have this big worry of like, what the fuck's going on? And then, yeah, you know, to speed it up a bit, I guess, he does go for that mission, and then he's like betrayed during it, and then he's obsessively trying to hunt down... What is even the guy's name? Antonio uh, Vigo. Vigo, okay. I think it was. Whatever. And Ruby Rose is his personal bodyguard, no, isn't she? One and two. Vigo was uh, in the first one, right? Oh, I'm oh talking... did I mix him up? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Whoever the second one guy is. And then, yeah, uh, but meanwhile, he's also got that other guy chasing him. Uh, is, I forget what his name is. Well, he's in loser stuff. They have and, a little um... stairs sequence. But yeah, the, the, um, the subway thing. Was was where I was just like, so John Wick is destroyed as a like the potential <laughs> of the first one's dead. Really the part when uh, well, they're walking through like a crowded place trying to shoot at each other while everybody's walking around and nobody like notices or cares. It's quite amazing how much damage it does all at once because you're like, I thought it was cool, and it's like, do you really think John Wick would do that? Like it's incredibly fucking dangerous to all of these innocent people that are surrounding these two right now. And uh, John seems like the kind of guy who's uh, pretty honor bound. I don't remember him being like, who fucking cares about civilians if they're in the crosses, they go down, that sort of thing. But like, it's just bizarre that they would try that. Secondly, like, they both just consistently miss every single shot. When if you're going to do that, you may as well just aim instead of like yeah. blind fire, almost. Essentially, yeah. And then, yeah, course, because even, even if, we, if we accept the whole movie silence trope, it's still a yeah. stretch. Well, it's yeah, like then of course there's the insane. whole nobody notices anything, which is insane. Yeah, there's people in front of them, next to them. Behind there's literally them, pieces everywhere. of walls breaking apart. Yeah. All around. It should be like, hmm, that's weird. There should be people like, ah, what the fuck was that? It's like, is this guy a gun? But what the hell? Kind of because, I mean, what we see in this film is, like, a, a big change to what I think we all thought the world was. We thought it was a world where, like, there was there was this world of assassins that existed and was organized and, and big. But, like, not the whole world. Not, like, that it was actually the world that seems to have a complete awareness of it. Like, that everybody in the world seems to know it exists and is indifferent to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, sort of exemplified by that, that last scene in the film, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, just everyone gets the message. It's like, here's yeah, the bounty. It's the like, message. oh, that's yeah. a lot of people. And don't even this get me started on the hobo assassins, dude. Those oh, hobos. yeah, that was intensely insane. <laughs> yeah, what John if you just like put a coin into, like, a gangs. normal hobo's cup? It's like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, and then, um, you know, some of the better sequences of action are still, they, they have, like, mainly one way of doing combat. And uh, you just see it all the time. You see it again in this one, but I will say, you, you know, like before we get there, that that was John Wick Two was just kind of like eh, and 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 that it's it's gone now. But then three came out. I didn't even see three straight away. I think I talked to because Fring, you went to see it, right? And then I was like, I went to see it, and then I told you like how baffled I was when he like jumped off the roof of the Continental and survived. Yeah, he gets <laughs> shot down. He goes that, like. That, that, like <laughs> Yeah, that like blew my mind. Um, cause I I remember I, I liked John Wick two at first. Um, Me too. And and then gradually that opinion started to change. And by the time three came out, and then he like fell off the building. Uh, I think that was like <laughs> all right, I'm I'm like totally done at this point. Like I just I'm I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, well, it's, like so a, any any meaningful real investment I might have had in John Wick, like yeah. Something that should have oh, yeah, been said as well about uh, yeah. John Wick 2 is it in one. introduced the uh, body armor jackets. The... Oh. oh, the body Stinky. armor, yeah. I, uh, I hate gradually, him. I hate him. Very gradually, John Wick turned from like a really sort of like cool action like world <laughs> that, to, fall, that had man. interesting elements to it. Yeah. Bam, like... bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I. Yeah, when I saw that, in that's the still theater, picture. It's like, just John Wick. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, God. Um, yeah, the the John Wick is set in like a fantasy universe, is in like an actual fantasy world where like human beings are more durable than they are in reality. John um, Wick is indestructible. Is set in a crazy science fiction world where like you have a suit, and like when you hold up the flap of the suit, and you can see that it's visibly like a flappy fabric. Of mm -hmm. a suit, it just deflects the bullets with sparks coming out. So it's set this... in a crazy sci-fi universe too. That's the only conclusion you can draw from stuff like this. 
Like this saying, is a movie prevalent with guns that doesn't know how guns work, and it's very annoying. Like, look at the spot. The, yeah. the thing that was cool <laughs> with like John Wick One and like John. Hey, look at him go! <laughs> oh Jesus! It's he, that like, hit on the um... his head on the. Yeah, like, there's a the reason concrete. why I put a laugh track over this fucking scene when I put it in my video. It's <laughs> That's just it's insane. I don't know what the idea is though. You see this stuff and you're like, funny. Yeah. I there there were the, yeah like I, I don't even the know. The slide doesn't make. come back on that pistol when he's shooting because it's all CGI. That no. was Black Widow esque. It's worse than the Black Widow one. Yeah, this Black Widow's one is more survivable than this. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, this the Black Widow one like I can believe like it's a stretch, but I can believe. And this one is just like no, the way he hits his head on the fucking pavement at the end. That's GG. That's like, CGI. Oh yeah, it looks pretty bad too. Fact, but geez. yeah, but, but they had to do it as CGI, right? Like it should tell you something. <laughs> About this is like door. obviously we can't, can't have a kill a stunt man for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> the thing with John Wick, the first John Wick that was cool was I Rag said it. He was he was highly competent, but he wasn't invincible. Um, he, he makes a few mistakes in that film, but like he's it, but it, but it's like he's so good within the bounds of a human being that he's kind of scary, right, to his adversaries. Um, yeah. but he was like a guy. He was very much a person. And gradually, as the John Wick films went along, he became less and less of a human and more of, like, a superhero, just in terms of, like, what he can do. Um, and, like, the vulnerability of, of like, an action hero, is, uh, that, that can be super valuable. I mean, why is John McClane, like, part of what makes him so endearing is that he is, like, out of his depth. That he yeah. is vulnerable. He gets hurt. It's really hard. Like, it's really, really difficult for him. Um, but he, you know, like, he fights his way to success. Um, and even, even like, John McClane, right, there are things that happen to him that he probably shouldn't survive, but, like, not, it's, it's not, it ain't, it ain't like what's been happening with John No, Wick. no, no. Jumping out of a, jumping off the top of the Intercontinental and surviving the fall, and then doing the same thing again in, in 4. <laughs> Twice. 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 So, so the suit is real, they actually made it on YouTube. Um, so if, if you would have given <laughs> me a John Wick series where they had bulletproof fabric... It's like, okay, you have bulletproof fabric, okay. So what happens would be that every time you get hit with a bullet in that bulletproof fabric, that would hurt an insane amount. You'd have a massive bruise. It would, it would, you would just be like, oh, the, the pain would be insanely bad. You know, it would stop the bullet from going into you, but you might have, potentially you might have a broken bone or something, yeah. depending on what you're hit with. Especially just because the, the pain soft. of it. Yeah, and, and the day afterwards, like, you would be sore beyond belief. That kind of energy that's hitting you uh, and being well, transferred right. into your body. And, well, of course, it's all cool, flappy, yeah. too, yeah. so you can't hold yeah. on with one. There is a reason Very, why I'm bringing yeah. up this here, right? So what yeah. I like about this is that it goes wrong, his plan in the club. It doesn't go quite as well as he wants it to. He's done a really good job right up until he has almost exactly what he wants, but he's just, is he spotted? He's spotted by, like, some guy who's walking around. And it makes yeah. them fight early, the guy rushes off. And a lot of this is improvised as a result. Uh, and he's doing as best he can. And like he nearly gets a shot on him, then he sees the bearded guy coming through, so he gets him. And when recovering from the bearded guy fight, you get the the main sort of subordinate dude who turns up possibly like the most talented of all the uh, the people he fights in this yeah, movie. He's like the mini boss of the yeah. film. Um, and he gets two shots on him, center of mass, and it hits his, uh, jacket, like the actual yeah, Kevlar exactly. vest type. Yeah, he has a Kevlar vest, yeah, 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 you see him put it on. And so, that feels to me much more satisfying, because it's like, yeah, you block those, because you have that, but yeah, it dude, pushes yeah, him down, and he's struggling, like, after that. Well, and this, this prevents him from getting the guy, he gets yeah. away now, like, it's, he can't get him now. Um, it's... It's actually one of my, it's another one of those like gun things that this film really, the films, films constantly get gun stuff wrong. A lot of it's for cinematic reasons. A lot of it's probably because they just don't know, or a lot of it's because of, it's like we saw the Winston shooting him on the roof, how the, the gun slide doesn't come back because it's just all CG'd and everything. But um, we'll talk about this in John Wick 4 when we get, well, you know what? Let's just talk about it in John Wick 4 when we get to it. So yeah, let's just, let's just carry well, right along. Someone just said, why can't Muller accept it's an alternative world? It feels like you're not even listening to the complaint, like not even yeah. at all. Yeah, we so, <laughs> no, we're fine with alternative worlds. It's just that what they're doing is stupid and not believable. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sorry, but John Wick One, 
is what the films are based on. This is the first film. They're making sequels to it. They've already established a bunch of rules. I'm sorry. Too late. (laughs) Keep changing. Yeah. They just keep changing. I I don't know. Like it's got like I, I this is better than like everybody running around in action scenes holding up the suit in front of their face while sparks are flying off of it, like in every action scene. Yeah, because, and, um... because that's the thing that the suit kind of created like a continuity error. About, like it for a long time, it's like why isn't everybody using him? Why does only John Wick get him? And then they finally realize, oh, everybody yeah. should use this. So um... the um, yeah, the I I don't think I've ever seen a character in all of fiction who had more plot armor than John Wick. Um... I think across the three, essentially the three movies uh, after the first. The plot armor has gotten so over the rails, and he's just indestructible, and the plot has willed that he will always survive and make it out. Well, previously it would have been another um, character that, that the competes. Mandalorian was one that we used, we would uh, reference, um, but this kind of outclasses Mando. Um, oh yeah, we're like, talking Mando like has hundreds of men shooting thousands of bullets at this man, and they yeah. all miss. All they hit is literal plot armor. I would be curious if you went through and you counted all of the shots that were taken at John Wick, considering that he's, you know, um, yeah, he, he's alive by counted, the end of it. If you counted the Sparks, how many times Sparks <laughs> hit his suit, and you compared it to how many times the best guard deflected, uh, deflected, Blasters, uh, yeah. lost, yeah. Because I, even though, even though Mando is a television show, I'm pretty sure it would be less. <laughs> Well, and I think it's actually less. On that note, uh, we can begin talking about John Wick Four. But before we do, I'm going to remind everybody we're breaking this down as a story, and we'll often talk about how the action works as well. So characters, mm-hmm. will building rules, plot progression—that's what's happening. And, if you think that this film is um, a parody of action and thus shouldn't be treated this way, or that you think you're taking it way too seriously when you should be sitting back and enjoying it, or that it looks great and it feels great and we shouldn't care about the consistency of the writing that's fine i don't know why you're here though <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not that's really so, our thing yeah something that is worth adding though because you see it where it's like oh well, i'm just going into it as like a fun action movie that is one thing and that would be one thing but like the, these films get like reviewed very well like like these films get reviewed incredibly well like as stories yeah not just as action films. Like, John Wick 4 has got a 78 on Metacritic. That's really high. Mm-hmm. Way too yeah. like that, high. That, that's higher than, oh, I'm just going into it as a fun action film. That's like, no, the film is actually, like, great storytelling. And, like, a lot of the other films have got that. I'm pretty sure that all of the sequels got reviewed better than the first film. Like, they're not just reviewed well as, like, oh, well, yeah, they're, like, fun action. They're just, like, a fun time, but they're not that great. And They're considered good. Um, so I, 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 and I get the impression that they're sort of meant to be taken seriously. So oh, yeah. this film yeah. certainly wants to be taken seriously. The way they fucking talk to each other. Well, yeah, the the oh. idea that it's supposed to be silly, fun, and not particularly like I don't think the people writing this would feel very like if you said you know all the stuff to do with Kane and John and uh, his wife and everything coming to a close, everything with Sharon and uh, and uh, Winston. If you said yeah, it's all fucking goofy, they'd be like no. No, no, we tried to. I don't think so. No, I don't think that's what it's meant to be. Um, but um, the other thing that's probably worth mentioning is people (laughs) saying yes, okay, fine, but it is still a lot better than everything else that's coming out these days. No, and what's funny about Uh, that is like, well, (laughs) uh, uh, those Oscars, man, it was like, well, there's quite a few good movies in there. I know that was. You got some good. You got year. some really good stuff out, actually. Yeah. But uh, they've all been on on the mind recently. Yeah, and 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 you I know, guess like, we're only talking about like big budget like action films. I guess so, but um. But I mean, all of the compliments that I would levy for John Wick are like style, like cinematography, lighting, stuff like that, soundtrack, but like... Which I'm happy to concede on, are really cool, but there's a lot of movies that have those things that are really, really cool. Well, yeah, like, Marvel films might look like... Marvel films might look like shit, but there are a lot of other... Like, Avatar. Avatar looked incredible, but, like, damn, the script. (laughs) Like, jeez. That's the thing. Uh, I mean, we we talk about Interstellar as one of those big examples of, you know, really great acting and a great soundtrack, and it just... it, it. 
pull, tries to pull so hard for that story and with the care you know the actual characters themselves happens all the time and if you can see past some of the and, and i would say that the action in two three and four is really not good at all uh, i was not at all enjoying the action scenes and how they played out and what happens in them at all um, um well we can talk about that as we go because yeah. that's going to sound oh, we will, we will. like an insane perspective until we manage to break these things down and that's kind of how i feel about this whole movie it's just like Let's go through it slowly now, instead of mm. watching it all happen real quick. And, you know, some of the stuff you don't remember, some of the stuff you don't know whether or not makes even any sense. It's like, well, we can summarize it and then talk about it and compare it with the stories that have been told before, after, during, the ones it's based on. It's, it's going to be great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love it. Because, okay, I just, I've got my notes all ready. John Wick Chapter 4, right? Which, by the way, was all the evidence you needed that this is not the last John Wick. <laughs> chapter 4, part 1. The <laughs> final chapter. Resurrection. Maybe. Dot, resurrection. Dot, dot. It um, starts out, the John Wick 5 begins with a shot of just an arm reaching up from the ground in front of the <laughs> gravestone. Out of the grave. That's just John's house where he lives. And he just lives down there now. So, well, you know, <sighs> it's not quite that cringe, the opening rags, but it's still not, not fantastic. We have uh, Lawrence Fishburne walking, the, 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 uh, the Hobo King, he's, he's walking toward John. So that's where we left off. John was thrown off a building, as you just saw, and uh, he's been recuperating, recharging, almost, uh, in e. the sewers with the Hobo King. And he's reciting the, um, the poem... It's uh, it's it's to do with uh, Dante's, Dante's Inferno. Dante's Inferno. Yeah, yeah. it uh. is. Guys, this is cringe. <laughs> uh, uh, you just, have it, Lawrence I, Fishburne says, as like the whole thing. Well, a lot of the thing, but then he says, "Abandon all hope, those who are about to enter here. You are now in the presence of the motherfucking king." And it shows John Wick, and it's like, Ugh. it it's all really really cringe. Uh. Um, it, this movie made me cringe at. Lawrence Fishburne. Um, <laughs> so we're already off to a pretty darn good start, where he's just like walking down the alleys and the little little what are the little tunnels, saying all this stuff and this voice. I'm like, what are we doing? This is like a, this is just crescendoing with being thing. like the king. Here he is, John. It's like God, you fucking. These movies are too influenced by the meta, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> John just turned around and was like, do you need to do this every time you get in here? Like, come on. <laughs> well, <It's> ridiculous. <laughs> and it, it reassures <laughs> you that we're in, like, the, the same level. Because he says, like, you ready, John? And then, you know, you have that pause. And then uh, Keanu Reeves is like, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, no, no. Keanu, we, could do, we could do another take. We'll, we'll just do another take real quick. Just try to do it, but good this well, time. I was saying before, he's done it so many times now that that is John Wick. That is how John Wick John speaks. Wick. Yeah. yeah. We're, are yep. we gonna have to have yeah. the, the Keanu Reeves acting talk again? <laughs> are we gonna have to do it? <laughs> it happens every once in a while. Dude, I was on, I was over over bar. Little platoon just fucking like came out with it pretty hardcore. He's just like they give him material that he can handle, but even that could be too much sometimes. <laughs> like, they gave oh, him no. a word to say. <laughs> he he just like he. I don't know how you clunk through one word, but you kind of. But he did. <laughs> like no no no. Yeah has one syllable. Keanu, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Guys, Keanu, Keanu enough Keanu of that. Is a bad actor. Yeah. We're cutting to the desert. Boom. Whoa. It's John on a horseback shooting at three other guys who are on horseback while chasing them. And it's so funny. As, as, again, someone who's watching it, you know, to sort of just see what's happening to John Wick. I'm just immediately like, uh, <laughs> why is this <laughs> because happening? Like? Because immediately in my brain, it's, it's oh, there's a bounty on you, and you just travel to wherever this is. Yeah, how, he's got how did you, how the did that whole happen? table looking for him. Uh, the bounty is what, 10 seven, million? 7 million at that point. 7 million, of, I okay. Think. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's give or take 3 million, you know. Who, who cares about that at that point? I mean, it goes up considerably over the movie, but. Uh, oh, yes. So it's yeah, like I think fine. with 7 now. Give yeah. it the benefit of the doubt, Mel, that, that that all made total sense. He got there and he's just he's just there. And he kills them all, and okay. we find out pretty quickly he's there for the uh for the elder, who isn't the oh. elder from the previous movie, and that's already because, a little bit confusing. Yeah, because he apparently died. Yeah. Yes. Um and well, you John know, these scorpions out there, dehydration, heat stroke. 
<laughs> he's got no like coverage at all. He's just sitting well, on the thing the out thing. in the sun. <laughs> this he sits because the previous elder had a there. tent. You're right. The, yeah, but this guy can't one. afford because they didn't spring for a tent for this one. No. Um, nope. Well, do we talk about him just like chasing random guys on horses and shooting them? <laughs> That's well, I, 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 I don't know what else to say about that. It's such a just random like, here you go, this is happening, and it's like, okay. Well, the reason why that was thrown in was because the first like proper action scene in the film is a while away. Yeah, it's like half an hour from then, so they have to have something. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Well, but here's also the problem with John just finding the elder. It was like a big deal in three that he had to like go into the desert and he maybe gets found by the elder if he's lucky. And he had to yeah, only I survive remember that, on, yeah. <laughs> they only had to survive on Halle Berry spit water. <laughs> as like Jesus. But well, we'd all do that. Uh yeah, okay. And then he goes there and gets found. But now he just, I don't know, finds three of them, which are apparently also his only guard. Like that's the elder's security. Because there's no one else there except the elder. The just, yeah. <laughs> just riding around. And then he goes up there, it's like, hello, I want my ring back, please. <laughs> Wait, like... He says, uh, my ring, my freedom. Like, I, th I think, is he there to clarify whether or not he's free from the table being... Leave me with him. I don't know. He, uh, from what I gather, he just wants to go around and kill the people who wronged yeah, him what, now. I was going to go over that. Like, it's a little confusing as to whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because it, like we said in John Wick One, there was a clear sort of a there was a clear goal that he had, um, like a very clearly defined goal. Pretty much ever since two, it sort of feels like he's he's just kind of like around, and like his goal is a lot more vague, other than to continue living, I suppose. Which, like, I guess there's that, we... but as a motivation, it seems to oscillate between like getting revenge on like. Uh, the high table or getting revenge on that that dude in, in 2 who betrayed him. But, like, at this point, where's he at, you know? And how does his wife factor into all of this? <laughs> kind of like a question on your mind. It was nice that they remembered she existed in this movie, briefly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. totally forgotten about her in, like, 2 and 3. Yes. Uh, so, it seems to me that he was... Because he, he's there, seemingly from that dialogue, to find out what his current state is with the high table. Because the guy says... Your ring is gone, like the elder before me. Which, first of all, is like, is that their way of trying to clarify, like, yeah, I know I'm a different elder. <laughs> like, we couldn't <laughs> we get, could the get the actor. other one. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. What they, would happen to They repossessed the tent. That's why I'm sitting out here in the <laughs> fucking hot ass desert sun, just it's in just, my chair. It's just funny because when they cast that guy, probably was like, hey, we need you for, like, I don't know, a scene. Oh, okay. What do we do? Oh, you got killed. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. Well, I get paid, right? Like, I yeah. get paid, right? Yeah. I'm like, hi, I'm in. Yeah, we don't have a tent, though, but don't worry, it's all fucking green screen. <laughs> so then, uh, he says, my death will not change the outcome anymore, uh, any, any more than you can change your own nature. None of us can escape who we are, no one can escape the table, the only way that you can reach peace is in death. And he says, I know. Like, oh, okay, and then he says, you've come here for, uh, for nothing. And he says, yeah, not really, and then shoots him. Yeah. So there's no one else here except the other again, by the way. Yeah, there were just no the three security, nothing. Oh, I'm sure he killed all the other gods. We didn't see that part. Cause... Oh. There's just the three. They were just really good. That's why they ran away from John and got shot. Can't wait but for you the have, to, you have, have to address the fact that that's, that's, let's, we're sowing the seeds of a theme, maybe, for uh, John Wick. Well, not even maybe. I think that is what they're going for. Oh, this, I hope you like those going. words because you're going to hear them. Over mm. Everyone's over, got an opinion on death over. in this movie. Because uh, mm -hmm. it's the last chapter, okay, guys? Maybe. Not really. Part one. Nah. <laughs> well, except this film has made the most money out of, like, it, at least the, it's making money the fastest, so they'll make more. Mm. Um, right. So, yeah, he, uh, he kills him. And as to if you wanted to ask why, the best I can guess is he just fucking is annoyed at the high table. So he's, yeah. he's going to kill that guy, because that guy is an, an extension of them. It's like, okay. We don't um, ever meet the high table people, do we? We only no, ever saw the only one, one member, right? And that's the sister. That was, that was the sister, and technically that's... Santino after, because he gets the... He gets By default, he gets the table in two. But we they both dead after, so we don't know who is at the table right now. Okay. So, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, the second movie starts off with the fact that you could use your little... 
markers to have yeah. someone kill people who run the whole organization and that's just like in the rules oh god I yes so i remember that. that yep i was about I to say I, i'd like to remember that Gianna de antonio is not only currently sitting at the table the highest position you can have from what i understand unless they make something else up i don't know if the elder is actually above or below i don't fucking know <laughs> and uh they're also friends And instead of John go like, hey, your brother uses this marker bullshit to kill someone at the table, specifically you. Can we do something about that? He was like, yeah, I have to kill you now. Sorry. Don't be John Wick's friend. He kills you. Oh, Don't there's be actually anyone's some friend. points to make about that. Yeah. Uh, in any case, th there's a good reason they showed us that opening because it's, it's going to have big consequences, which is actually kind of why we're probably going to return to it a couple of times. But we'll get to the consequences first. Clancy Brown is here! Yay! He's cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, it's funny, when he, he turns up and he's uh, at the desk with um, uh, Lance Reddick, and he's like, and, and he picks up the phone and says, a harbinger is here to see yeah. you. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck's sake. Another, like, name for a, you know, like, th there's all these, like, uh, special names for everybody in all these places. It's just like... They're obviously clearly written to be to make the audience go like, ooh, ooh, oh, what is that going to wow, mean? Damn, oh, oh my that sounds that's really. Like one of those, oof. That's one of those things that you hear. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those things. Oh, what did they call the other one in three? I completely forgot. Oh, the uh, girl. The chick. Yeah. The. Someone in chat might she... remember. Uh, I can't remember. Ah, uh, was... yeah, she had one of those titles too, and I forget what the hell it was. Um. It... It, it was wasn't like, negotiator, was it like a consecrator, no. or adjudicator. Adjudicator, adjudicator, adjudicator yeah. yeah. <laughs> the adjudicator. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> she's not in this movie, by the way. Oh no, she's done. No, yeah, she yeah. lived to the end of the third one, but she's not in this one at all. Got a new you guy. You only assume that she's off. I'm sure John doing, killed her. Living somewhere, she's adjudicating <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Bitch. She, I, um, I, there was a scene, there was a deleted scene where she uh, said it's adjudicating <laughs> time and she adjudicated all over the assassins. I thought that um, Clancy Brown turning up, I thought he might be like a veteran assassin man, but it's like, no, he works at the high table and he's more business related. It's like, okay, cool, that's fine as well. He's getting on, you know, maybe he has talking roles now as more than action roles and that's okay. It's all right. I don't need to see Mr. Krabs killing everybody, but I'd like to. That's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, And then... You know, I'm seriously going into this movie good faith. I'm like, all right, give me a story. I'm already like, you know, a little bit unimpressed, but that's fine. You know, this could be the we one. We have that plenty of movie time left. Gets us back. We have oh, plenty of time. Lots of time. Lots and lots of time. So much time. Story. Why don't so, you put the movie okay. in the background anymore, bro? <laughs> John, John McFour is in theaters. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I don't even know how we saw it. I, oh yeah, that's right. I I got I God guys, I gotta. I gotta be real with y'all. Uh, we gotta do something about my pay because <laughs> I have I have to keep flying to India to see these movies. <laughs> and boy, it's really, really hitting the it's really hitting the pocketbook having to go fly to India and back to see these movies. <laughs> um, God, I've oh, maybe maybe you know if I, if I went to one X bet and I, <laughs> I I got really lucky, maybe I wouldn't need to. Maybe I wouldn't need it, but oh boy, I'm gonna be in the poorhouse soon. So, um, the, 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 it, it's it's kind of funny. So, like I said, I was just I was sitting there paying attention. I was like, all right, let's do it. And then Mr. Harbinger, Clancy Brown man, he's like, by order of the Marquis, this hotel is condemned. You have one hour, and he sets down a fucking hourglass. <laughs> It's a comically it's so large big. hourglass. It's so it's big. It's so big. And is it just me, or I was immediately like, this is a, what the, this, ah, uh, <laughs> like, this, <laughs> fucking John Wick. That's all this is now. It's this, like, all these so words, funny. you don't know what they mean, and, like, it's all supposed to be really, like, lofty and, oof, this is significant. Ooh, and then, consecrated. <laughs> you Ooh, have like an hour. <laughs> Here is my hourglass. Right. <laughs> it's, it's cool because it's analog, right? Like, it's cool yeah. because it's kind of, like, old and strange. You yeah, wouldn't so normally see restaurant, that. He orders his meal, and then <laughs> when the waiter leaves, he gets out the big hourglass and puts it on the table. I'm timing you. <laughs> like it would be awful uh, if you were. But that's late. every like when he, when he goes to bed at night, he takes an hourglass and he puts it on the nightstand. 
You have to have a rammed... special one that's like eight hour glass. So that it gives him a nice bit uh, of sleep. Then the last of the sand filters through and it's just silent because it's an hourglass and he sleeps through it. And anyway. as someone is highlighted, it's not even the official hourglass. That one's in the guy's office. I don't know if there were two <laughs> hourglasses. Or they, yeah. How did they synchronize them? Did they know to flip them <laughs> yeah, over at the right Yeah, just at exactly time? the right time, yeah. I just thought it was... It's just funny that they keep doing shit like that. I don't know if, uh, if Winston took... The one he left there, over to that office, passed it to them, and they put it into the room before they got there. That's how there's a second. Let Sharon uh, just uh, just grab it and say, like, "Oh, we need to bring this, or they get even more mad." Evacuate <laughs> the hourglass. <laughs> like, <laughs> the hourglass. The sand uh, is representative of the desert that that other scene took place in. But yeah, um, you might be like, "Wait, why is the hotel condemned? Didn't Winston shoot John Wick?" Didn't he betray him in the previous movie? Like, why would he shot what's him? Going on? Well, he shot him many times, sure but did. never, not in the head. Uh, it was all in the chest area. To be fair, he did really. definitely died from that fall, except he didn't. Uh, well, yeah, of course, because I mean, just in case, on the on the off chance that he was <laughs> able to survive, um, you would have checked for a body, of course, to make sure you know that. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is what you do clearly. Sharon is like, can they do this? And Winston says, the decree is signed by all twelve. The Marquis is now our judge, jury, and it's implied executioner. So, yeah, just like, yeah, so he can good. just uh, and and I'll I'll just say it for the sake of people who haven't seen it yet. You're just like condemning a hotel. I assume that means everyone has to leave, or that it can no longer you know function as currently is. Yeah. And and even says like evacuate. And it's like okay. That's, uh, evacuate. I, uh, like, hopefully, we get more information as to why they've done that, and uh, I hope the evacuation is simply because you know you're not allowed on these grounds. Or, like, it would like be like remodeling, or they're selling it, or, or moving something. a whole new set of people in, and you need to get the fuck out, otherwise mm -hmm. they'll kill you, or something like that. Which is weird because if if a hotel changes hands, typically the guests don't they don't really have to leave. It's curious. You know? like, it's curious, right? It's very strange. I wonder what yeah, they mean. Interesting choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so Winston and Sharon are heading to the, uh, the meeting with, uh, the Marquis, who's the new bad guy of this film, and who we get an intro to, and, and, and I guess before then, um, uh, Winston is talking about what Ned Kelly's final words are, he says, such is life, and so he, I, I think the implication, of course, is that he thinks he's about to die, especially if the hotel's been condemned, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Sharon says, you will not die today. And he says, you shouldn't even be here, my friend. It will not be pleasant. And he says, such is life. Like, oh man, somebody's dying. You wouldn't have oh, this kind God. of dialogue without it. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, as they enter the room, you see another hourglass. And I just thought that was funny again. Like, I, yeah. I, I can't not <laughs> they, see they it in laugh. flip them over at the right time. Um, so, Marquis Man. He's, uh... The, Bill Skarsgård, is that... Yeah. Yeah, uh, who played the clown in It. That's basically what I know him from. <laughs> um, no. He's in some other stuff. I just don't know that I've seen it. He's uh, he's an actor. He's fine. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, but the character that he's playing is an absolute clown. Yeah, I don't like the character, but it's <laughs> oh, the same character we had. Twice. Yeah, I was about to say. It's John Wick uh, 2's character guy. It's pretty much him. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. They're just sort of like sleazy assholes who betray everybody. Um, with, so that's like, some fun and interesting. Uh, Instead of having these quirky, really interesting kinds well, of character, the kinds uh, of people that you think who could exist who live in this like mega luxury, super high up in these like assassin crime kind of you know organizations, you know, just like interesting people. No, it's just a jerk guy. It's and also, the party ever like mentioned in any prior films because I do not remember them like ever being a thing. Well, you think why hasn't the Marquis? Yeah, Marquis been... Oh they... no, they made them up completely yeah, new. Yeah, I, I, that's what I thought because like yeah. they weren't in three at all. And why haven't they been used before? Why haven't they been? Uh, yeah. Why was the adjudicator used be... instead of the Marquis? Well, yeah, the Marquis seems to be like. Well, I was about to say they seem like more well equipped, but it doesn't matter. They all still no. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, the adjudicator the, wasn't the strong is, enough to carry around the hourglass. If I remember correctly, <laughs> it's been a while since I covered John Wick three, but. Uh, uh, the adjudicator pretty much had all those resources as well. She was able to put pretty like much, a whole I think. assassin squad in there, oh, or like a soldier squad in there. It did seem like yeah. she could do anything she wanted, yeah. I think. 
But I'll say this guy has a power that I was very much unaware anyone would have the power to. But we'll get there. We're we're seconds Mm -hmm. away. And uh, he does, I guess, kind of introduce himself by saying he believes in rules and consequences and not second chances. Uh. So that's that's just bullshit. That's a fucking lie. He, just, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. he does not. <laughs> it was like we've got so little dialogue and it's already fucked up. Well, only because oh, we know what's going to happen. Just, this, guy, this guy saying that he believes in rules is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's the way he says as well. Second chances are the refuge of men who fail. It's like oh, cringe. But, oh, but you got to understand. It's all. It's all. See, it's all foreshadowing. It's all. Yeah. Cause it's him. I quite. He's uh, that guy, I guess. I quite hate this conversation, and it's going to be difficult for me to explain why. So you start with the Marquis saying, and he needs to he needs to explain what's going on, obviously, because we're like, why why have the New York people been fucked over? And he says, there are those on the table who blame this atrocity, and by this atrocity he's referring to the Elder's execution by John Wick in the prologue. Well, I guess it's that. It had more um, than three horsemen. He says, that atrocity is blamed on New York. He says, they believe it's this city. They believe they have indulged this fucking place for too long. And it's like, huh? What the hell does that have to do with anything? The first thing yeah, you think, I... and this is what Winston responds with, is that it's like, well, we tried to kill John Wick the last, the, our interaction. And he says, I shot him. And his response to that is, he lives. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, all of those other people who tried to kill him and failed... Like, yeah, does, even, that have, does that impugn them in any way? Or the thing about you know, it is, dead. no matter the what city that they live in, <laughs> no matter what you try to argue, if everybody said, and this is the way they go in, in the film, Winston knew John would survive somehow, I guess. But like, uh, it doesn't work. Um, John should have died. John Wick what, what he experienced should have killed him. And and of course, in the last film, somebody should have gone down there and grabbed him. Or that like too, checked, but, yeah, but just check I guess on. what I'm getting at, right, is that there is a way you could attempt to assassinate someone or kill them, whatever, and someone looking at that scene could be like, you weren't trying to kill them at all. And you'd be like, yeah, I was. And there's, there's ways to do that, like you could just awkwardly not quite hit them. You're like, oh, fuck, I missed. Or you shoot them in the leg and you're like, I'm oh, just, you know, I'm really bad at aiming. Oh, no, yeah. Um, in fact, they do it in John Wick 3, I think. He shoots the doctor, right? And he, he points exactly where he wants him to shoot him so that it won't kill him, I think. Um, that's something that happens. And, yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is there's ways to do that, but what Winston did, like, you can't argue that that was an attempt to not kill John. Like, well, I don't know. The fact that he kept shooting him over and over in his clearly bulletproof suit, not in the head at all. That's, well, all the, the, shots that's the thing. That blank. would be it. That would work, except for the fact that he pushed him so far he fell off the roof and to his death. Like, not even how... Winston can argue that he... Like, can you picture Winston being like, he'll be fine? It's like, no? No, he's dead. He's dead. I mean, they had this CGI person because it's just not survivable. But it's I not guess... Winston's fault, yeah. And that's, this is, this and is that's what I mean. It. You can't actually like... blame him. Even though I believe Winston didn't want John dead, even, but now it just causes those problems. Like, why did you do that to him? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, no matter which way you cut it, there are problems. I don't know. Yeah, like, none of this works. So the idea that the Marquis is like, I blame you for John Wick and, and New York because of what you've done. It's like, the last thing they did was give the best attempt at killing John out of everyone. So that doesn't really line up. Um... Anyway, he, he, he says he lives and he's polluting everything he touches. And it's like, okay, so this is definitely about John Wick specifically then, from what the Marquis has just said. And so Sharon says, look, none of us are above the rules. The Continentals and their management are a reminder to all that we are not above the rules. Which is a really weird thing to start off with. I don't know what it has to do with John Wick. Like, yeah, what like, okay. rule is he referring to specifically about health? Well, so that's the thing, right? About... He's not done yet. And so it's like, okay, okay, th- I'm sure he's going to make this make sense. He then says, John Wick, and he goes on to say something else, but he's cut off by the Marquis who says, we're not here because of John Wick. But it's like, yeah, uh, we are. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's almost exclusively why all of this is happening. <laughs> you just said that John Wick is the reason that the table have done this to the New York uh, Continental. I have no idea why he said that. It's conversations already. Just like we're just going places. It feels like he made it clear that it was about John Wick as well. Um, and then he says, "John Wick is simply the face of your failure, Mister Manager, and the sand in the glass is merely an echo of my remaining patience." And again, I want to clarify: Winston is the closest anyone has come to killing John Wick. He's come the closest. 
all of the other thousands of people failed. Well, I guess Vigo in the first one actually almost killed him. Oh, when he, he did stab him, didn't he? But uh, no, yeah. I don't think that's that's still not as far as close as uh, Winston. Winston is the yeah, closest. Yeah. With uh, that fall. The only true. person that comes closer than Winston, no, it's kind of the same, is uh, Killer Harkin. He, he gets him nearly. Mm. <laughs> and then I guess John Wick when he throws himself off a building, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Um, He's going to collect that bounty on John Wick. Who's this John Wick guy? I could be rich if I kill him. And yeah, so, so it's like, if it's not John, and it's just your failure in a general sense, is he talking about the fact that he would have housed John Wick in any way, helped him, or the fact that um, uh, someone was shot on continental grounds, which is not something you can necessarily stop. You can make rules against it, and punishments, i.e. shooting John Wick until he falls off a rooftop. Unless yeah. they're talking about the defense of the Continental, that whole scene. This is what I mean, I'm just like, I'm not sure entirely. Just kill Winston if you don't trust him at this point. I'm just confused. Kind of. You seem like the type, alright? You seem like the type. In any case, it's not just Winston that they have an issue with. Like he said at the beginning, it's New York. This fucking city, this place. And so you're like, so wait, what does that mean then? What are you gonna do? And the sand runs out. The hourglass. Oh my, oh my goodness. Goodness. And we see in the distance the New York Continental, the enormous building, explodes. It is a Boom. controlled demolition. The whole thing goes. Like the within inside of it just notice. explodes. Um, with an hour's notice in New York. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> like... So, kind of, remember how we were talking about the first John Wick and how was how there was this kind of relationship between the 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 police departments of the you know of, of the world it seems and this this criminal organization and there was this we don't bother us you don't bother you know yeah. you don't bother us we don't bother you kind of thing there was this understanding that they both kind of operated because almost all of the crime that's going to take place in the world is going to be of course dealt with by you know police officers and law you know typical you know law enforcement and then you have all the the assassin stuff that's its own little thing um you cannot blow up a building in downtown New York City and not have there be this massive government investigation on the state and federal level. Um, this is nonsense, and it's dumb, and it completely destroys any remaining, if there was any, investment in this idea that this kind of a world could exist sort of parallel. No, because now ours. it's like this world is the only world that there is. There is only the world of the assassins. There is no yes. normal world with regular people in it. Not like what we saw in the first film where it was that police officer shows up. It's just like, oh, hey, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah right. I'll, I'll just leave you to it, buddy. Like that kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with this. It's like, no, the whole world like is just this world of assassins. It has to be. And this is, you'll, this will be an issue throughout the movie is that there are never, law enforcement just don't exist anymore. Whenever there's gunshots or these massive fights and these, these insane long drawn out, you know, action sequences in public, the police never get involved. The police well, never show the, up. Even when the action scenes happen in public places, people just don't react anymore. Remember how in John Wick 1 in the club shootout, like people were reacting to John Wick being there shooting people? Yeah, but then and people don't want to get shot. The same, scene, the same scene just has people dancing in the background while bullets are flying all around the place because nobody reacts to this world yeah. or, like, the danger that it might place them in. Yeah, and people try to go with the whole, like, no, 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 it, it can make sense, it, it can, it's like, okay. The announcement that this place was going to be demolished in an hour was a surprise to Winston and everybody in that building. The idea that they could ever have prepared the buildings surrounding it, or the civilians surrounding it for this thing, and nobody in the Continental knew about it. Like, what I'm trying to say is, there would have had to have been a public announcement that this building's being demolished, and that they would have to make an uh, extreme bit of room. There would be- the- um, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, for how this would have to be done in order for it to pass officially in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's almost like they aren't in the real world anymore. Do you think if I talked to, like, the director, the writer, or any of the actors and said, so this is set, like, in an alternate bizarro world, right? Like, or, like, some fantasy world or purgatory or something, they would all say, yeah, obviously. When <laughs> the Continental got blown up after an hour, that should have been a big clue that when we're set in, like, a crazy fantasy world fever dream. 
Do you I think mean, that's what they'd say? People made this argument in favor of TLJ. They were like, this is a different crazy fantasy world where anything can happen. Yes, I think they would. I don't think so, but no I way. guess we can disagree on that one. Yeah, there's no way they would. They want this to be a part of the real world. Um, I mean, every place they go is real. It's Eiffel Tower stuff. It's also people and doing stuff. I, I think the whole point of this organization was, was that it existed in tandem with the rest of the real world, just sort of underneath it. Um, oh, maybe I, I made myself clear. That it was I don't just think it's an impossibility that they could get this thing done and it would have insane consequences for the high table and everyone else. I think it's incredibly stupid that they did it. Oh, yeah, I this is, this oh, is yeah, insanely yeah. stupid. I just put new people in there. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I didn't think I'd have to explain that part, but I can if you want. <laughs> like, the, well, why, yeah, do well, you, well, why do we not blow up buildings when we don't like the people in them? It's like, well, from a business standpoint, I mean, it's like, well, buildings, I mean, we can blow them up, but they can be used for something else, you know? Well, and also, for, for a guy who talks about rules and stuff, you would think that he would have a perspective on, like, institutions versus the people within institutions. Like, you get the impression that if he talks about, like, rules and stuff and how important it is, he respects institutions or believes that they are valuable, but the people who defy those institutions are the ones who need to be gotten rid of. So you could just still have the Continental in New York with the rules that they were meant to be enforcing at the beginning, but people who would actually enforce them. Yeah, Unless you, you believe that management. nobody in New York would do it, and it's like, oh, well, it's a New York mindset. I don't know, get someone who isn't from New York and get him in. Like... The world exists, so there are other people out there who would probably take on the job of the New York Continental. And, I mean, isn't this really bad for all of the people who are part of this society who live in New York that have no, like, safe ground that they can meet on to, like, do deals and stuff? How does this not, like, That's cause right, chaos yeah. in New York for this assassin world? You just can't you be can in just New do York. This with you an hour... Well, uh... that you can do it with an hour's notice is not great. Imagine if there's some assassins in there who were in there because they had a problem that they were dealing with. It's like one hour to get out, and they get out, mm -hmm. and they all get by, like, some well, no, rival gang because they have no safe haven. And that's what I was trying to get at. I thought it was a bit of a jump to kill Winston, but I could buy that. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, but fine, you want to kill him, cool. fine. Um, But then it's like, no, we're going to blow up the whole building, which I can't think of any reason to do that. And they think, when they wrote this, that it's good enough to say, the table blame New York. They hate this city. They've indulged it long enough. It's like, what the fuck? Are you, what? Even though it is very specifically that John Wick, like, he was mad about things that happened to him personally. Mm -hmm. But no, that means the whole city is worthless. New York, one of the most important cities in the world. <laughs> yeah, and may yeah, I remind you how many how many assassins were around in two and three? In New York, yeah. it's a lot, and they have nowhere to lot. go. To well, there's more assassins there. than people. Well, remember, yeah. how many people did John Wick fight like in the opening of three? When that was like an hour after the, so all those people yeah. from New York, and how many was that? I was like, what, like a hundred people? Oh I mean, well, fuck New York. We hate it now because we didn't like John Wick specifically. John Wick specifically went out to go kill that guy in the desert. It's a show of force for anyone who helps John, I guess. What is that? What? Wouldn't that be uh, way better to just kill person, kill Winston right? if you want to do that? Yeah. But cuz all the people in the hotel, they don't know anything about Yeah, this. most of them They're don't even know like, what the fuck is going on. <laughs> And then, as, are, as was just pointed to... out, most assassins, we're talking 99% of the assassins in New York City have been trying to kill John Wick. Why blow up the HQ? What are the... Yeah. Just replace management. Why did you do this? And the answer is, it feels big. That's a big thing to do. The Continental's been in all three movies. Seeing it blow up in the fourth one, that's big. It's a big thing to have happen. Significant. And there's some people saying this is all happening because the uh, the guy was killed in the Continental in the second movie. Unfortunately, uh, Koji uh, confirms in about 10 minutes' time the reason this is all happening is because John killed the Elder at the beginning of this film. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't actually seem to have anything to do with the stuff that was happening in 2 and 3. Yeah. Which, Which is weird when, really, the only reason why any of this is happening is because of that guy in 2. <laughs> like, he is the most important character in the John Wick world because, like, he creates the majority of the story. Um, more so than the dog did in the first film. <laughs> it's, I, I just, I, uh, that arbitrary kill he had at the beginning of that one elder who wasn't even the elder that he talked to, it was some other elder. 
Like he's a different elder. That he's he not even gonna said, go after the rest like, of the elders, though. You came here for nothing, and he's like, nah, I can at least kill you. And it's like, why? And all that's done now is get the Continental destroyed. As well the as the elder even says okay. there's going to be someone who replaces me. Yeah, there's it's, it's like, uh, and <laughs> the rest of the movie isn't John Wick hunting down the high table or all of the elders. It's basically running away from the Marquis until he can kill him. Yeah, like, like it, it totally changes from what I thought was going to be happening in four, which was the high table. But they just throw in this new guy to be the villain. Yeah. Maybe because they thought that it was actually too insane to have John Wick succeed in like destroying the high table. Because well, even they thought, realized, like, you couldn't destroy that kind of institution, this ancient well, I thought we're gonna, we're just gonna have, like, a big old war with the hobo assassins and John Wick, and maybe they go and hire some more people that have, you know, gripes with the high table for whatever reason. Oh, it'd like, be way like better that. to, like, actually, you know, recruit... <sighs> That's another thing these films never like to do. This, this poster I've got on screen right now is clearly fan-made. And can you see who they think is going to be in John Wick 4? they got Halle Berry and the girl, the bad guy girl yeah. from episode, the third chapter. And it's like, nope, neither of them are here. You're like, that's no. strange. And you're like, yeah. Instead, we got a bunch of new characters, new friends, new old friends that we've never heard of before that are super important to the plotline. They line. just keep popping up. To accompany the new old rules that would have ended these stories, like, dead in their tracks if anybody had mentioned them in, like, three. Yeah. Or two. Well, yeah, we'll go over how each new edition fucks up all the ones before it, but it doesn't care. Each of these movies do not care about the previous ones. They're moving on. <sighs> so, uh, he then says, um, you're no longer New York. You are nothing. You are excommunicado. And as such, you no longer need the service of a concierge. And he shoots Lance Reddick's character. <clears throat> Uh, presumably in the heart as well. He's he's pretty much out, and it's just like, mm -hmm. um, why? It, it, yeah, uh, the thing is, I know exactly why he does make it clear, and I've got it. I just want to, I just want that to sit for a little bit of just why, 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 why would you shoot the guy who's got like nothing to do with any of this other than like serving on the phones, as far as you know? I don't even think they know he was shooting with John Wick in the. Uh, in the, in the in the Continental. And he supports Winston and everything he does, so isn't it Winston you want to kill? Isn't, isn't that? Obviously, especially and, if you don't give second chances. Mm -hmm. So it, it feels really odd, and uh, the reason is, he actually says in this moment, I, I, was, I was like, God, this is, I really don't like the writing in this film, if it hasn't been made clear already. Uh, he says, as he's dying, he says, it's been an honor, my friend. And then it, like, shows Winston, and he says, should have been me. It's just like, it, you probably could have achieved that with a look. You didn't have to, just, like, immediately have him say that. And then the Marquis is walking above him, uh, well, walking while he's uh, kneeling down. He says, yes, but it wasn't. Why do uh, you think that is? And, and why, uh, if you could figure it out, then perhaps one of us will have benefited from this conversation. Just, and then uh, okay. We, we since perspective on that a couple of times in the movie and they're all bizarre they're just weird well yeah i mean i want to i wouldn't mind skipping because ahead just a little bit to winston's theory on why what? he was left alive that that bizarre oh, quote yeah, yeah, sure. we can jump ahead <sighs> to that uh so uh, the hobo king asks winston why uh the frenchman left you alive and he says well if you kill a man he can become a martyr if you leave him alive, everyone will think he's either a turncoat or a coward. That just, that just makes no sense. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's just that's just a really what stupid I, thing to I, say. That doesn't make sense. I just I don't even see like what informs like that thought. I don't even know where it comes from. Like it it is like devoid of any like connection. I don't get it. And I don't. Uh, if you're alive, you're either a coward or a, a betrayer. <laughs> The thing about it is, I, if you kill him and then tell everybody he betrayed the high table, that's gonna. He's, why would he? Who's who's martyr? Will he be? John's? <laughs> oh no! I don't actually understand anything about that that quote. I don't. I don't, I don't know what he's drawing from at all. And the reality is, they didn't want to kill Winston. The writers They're like, no, we like Winston. Hmm. He's Ian McShane. He's cool. And you're like, okay, all right. Gotta come up with okay. something else. So, yeah, I don't know. That That's what we're told. He, he'd rather not kill him so that he can be seen by people as either a traitor or a coward. He, it would be tough to think of him as a 
traitor when you've taken everything from him. Like a traitor to anyone else, or a traitor to John. Who's he talking about? <laughs> like, who does, who's, the, who's the person who will have Don't, the viewpoint of no. him being a traitor or a tinko or a coward, whatever? I didn't think it'll make the Marquis like, look, like, weak you know, throughout, in... Throughout history, people who commit treason are known for, like, staying alive. Oh yeah, they never get killed. Oh, we yeah, we wouldn't want to kill them, because then they'd be a martyr. A death penalty throughout all of history. Well, and this like, is funny. Mean... Go ahead, sorry. I no, that was that was basically it. Uh, like the this you might think like, well, does he need to kill him? And you're like, well, you might want to worry about it. You just killed what apparently is his closest friend. You destroyed the building he worked in. You've basically annihilated his career, and you've told him like, haha, you can live now and be be sad. <laughs> that that I'm is a man who is basically one of the highest connected network of assassins persons ever. Well, yeah, just because you've destroyed like this hotel doesn't mean that he doesn't have the connections to still. You like, might uh... want to not make a huge enemy out of somebody whose best well, friends are all assassins. Is kind of what I'm saying. Wait, what if what if in that room he just pulled out a gun and shot you? Because he's like, well, I'm just gonna kill you then. Like I, you right, killed my best friend. You blew up my hotel. Loot. So I'm like, well, fuck I mean, it. I'm just gonna kill maybe you. Maybe they would check the guns more, on their way in. That's that's the more well known thing of like a man who has nothing to lose. I mean, that's what John Wick kind of was. Well, so like you that know, was what he was in the first film. Um, I was also in India at the time, and so uh, I was I was talking to Rags, and and I think you said like if you don't kill him, he's gonna try and kill you. And then like the next time we see Winston, he's devising a plan to kill the Marquis, and it's like. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, there you go, I guess. That's what happens. Uh, yeah, of course he's going to orchestrate revenge <laughs> with with all of the uh, his his information and all of his connections well, and, and with, everything. With like the duh. guy John Wick, who thus far in terms of the timeline in this world has had what? Has 500 people have fallen before him, maybe? Yeah, maybe something like, like that. Maybe that many people. Because here's a, I mean, it might be premature to just float this as a thing, because it's it's much more apparent, like, later in the film when the action starts. Why are people even, like, trying to go for John Wick? Like, you can't get him. Like, nobody, yeah. nobody succeeded. Like, how many because people I'm died different for John Wick? And everybody I've just... got a pistol, and I'm gonna they... be the one to do it. They just didn't Wouldn't... do it right, but I can do I... it. At what point do you just go like, nah, you know what? Nah, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I, I can just beat live. John Wick. That was, I a, think that was a problem exactly. in, in the second one already when they put the bounty out. You just saw all these, yeah. see all these people. It's like, ooh, a bounty, yep. who's that? John Wick. And they just start smiling. It's like, yeah, I'm John gonna Wick, get that. Well, so remember, in, the... in the first film was introduced as the man you sent to kill the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the thing about it, because Mark brought this up when we uh, we did The Forge, right? He, he was saying... He can understand it when you put a particular number on a thing that m some people will do some crazy stuff, but he's, he was saying, like, it starts to get a little weird, though, when you're like, hey, not 5 million, 6 million, not 6 million, 7 million, not 7 million, 10 million. It's like, how, why is, why is the jump from 7 to 10 going to encourage, like, a shit ton more people? It, it, like, surely 7 is still enough for the 10 million people? <laughs> it just seems just like okay. What's that All extra three million? All the stuff I wanted to do so. that I just couldn't do it with seven million. I needed that extra three million. And then like you know, ten to twenty, and it's like oh shit, ton more people again. It's like the ten to twenty. Okay, I mean that is double. But like, did you not want the ten? Did you not think the ten was enough? Whatever you were doing with the twenty, the ten wasn't useful enough to you. Okay, so like there's that direction, but then there's also just yeah, in a world where there is an assassin man. Who maybe is famous for, for being really good at his job, and then they put a big amount of money on you go after him. That's like, that's like one thing, but when he's actually, like, categorically been killing hundreds of people that have all been sent to kill him, of differing yeah. levels and differing uh, technology and literally locations from all over the world, is no other assassin just being like, man... I don't know that I'm better than all of them. <laughs> like, I mean, it's... I think I think it probably really helps John that all of these guys think that the strategy is to drive up to him or walk up to him with their pistols and try and out pistol John Wick um, instead of like just shooting him from a lar a long distance. This is a cool thing about guns that they're ranged weapons and oh, that really? you can yeah yeah it's That's true. Crazy. And you could no, like kill people. For, you could kill people from a long distance with like rifles and things. And how Willem Dafoe ha sniper rifles do exist in the John Wick universe. Uh, we know that <laughs> oh yes, it's too late to pretend Wick. they don't. You can't pretend that they don't exist. 
and nobody ever uses nobody ever uses a sniper. Well, there's rifle. one guy a... who uses a mid-range weapon, I guess you could say, to to take out John. It's not like maximum range, but still. And uh, he's in this yeah. movie, and he does try, but there are mm -hmm. obviously always going to be reasons to stop him. Mm -hmm. Oh, um... yeah, pistols are just glorified punches in this game, essentially. Like, <laughs> did you do that on purpose? Just... You just said in this game. <laughs> No, I, I do it all the time. I, I don't know. It just happens. <laughs> because glorified um, punches, like, but rags, punches do more. <laughs> like, typically. In this game, they probably do. Or in this, punches. fuck, this movie, they probably do. The punches are pretty good in this movie. That's some good like, guys, punching. like, all these people that need to get killed, as we'll discover, is like, you just, if you really want someone dead, this is part of one of the things that you could kind of, kind of try and temper and control with the rule system and how this. Uh, criminal organization sort of thing operate so that you're not constantly living in fear 24-7 that you're just going to die to a sniper all the time but in this movie their solution is no, just no one uses rifles nobody, no one gets rifles and uses them as rifles well, not only does nobody use rifles some people don't even use pistols some people, some don't even people use guns. aren't even true, using they... the bulletproof belt uh, sorry suits right. There is no the uh, the Hotline Miami sequence. I'm pretty sure all the guys in that sequence don't have bulletproof uh, vests. Yeah, those so. are just normie peasants. They don't mm. get to have yeah, them. Yeah, they're low level. <laughs> <laughs> they're like the villagers. <laughs> you can take them out easily. Old Forastero. <laughs> they would have put up more of a fucking fight against John. <laughs> they would have grabbed him and broke his neck. Yeah. I'm gonna throw this brick at you. <laughs> <laughs> that would do more. <laughs> There's no point in trying pistols. There was uh, a man with just like a bullhead and a hammer <laughs> randomly in Paris. And so we introduce Donnie Yen. He's uh he's seemingly sitting down and listening to music while holding uh, a little thing with a picture of his daughter in like a pendant thing. Uh how do you qualify that with he's seemingly listening to music? I don't know. I I, I, <laughs> I have so much I wanna say and I'm just that's that's my problem whenever Allegedly. I'm summarizing anything. I'm like trying to get to the point where I can start ripping into it, but I'm like, you gotta do, you gotta get all the context out first. And I almost like, oh, I'm not ready for that bit. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, I guess you need to know this, this, this. Um, so he's he's dragged in to see the marquee, and he's like, I have someone I want you to kill. And then he's like, I'm retired. And I, and I was already like, this is cliche. <laughs> like, this is just guy okay, who's clearly not in again. the business anymore is going to be convinced to be coming into the business. And how do we do it? It's like, well, we'll kill your daughter if you don't. You're like, hey, there we go. This, this is one of those things that the rules should be like really big on in this, uh, this, this criminal organization world where there are ways to get out of the business. There are ways to, because obviously you're going to have people who just, they're not going to do it for their entire lives. They're going to stick around, and but then they start a family and whatever, and then they leave, and they go do other things, and they're out, and they're, they're done, and it's over, and the connections are cut. You can't have this idea of, oh, anyone that we're just going to threaten to kill their family to coerce them to start working for us again. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially, like, surely the rules would be against that, right? The, the organization wouldn't allow that kind of behavior. Especially someone like Kane who, for some reason, sees this as, ah, so it's either me or John, so it has to be John. It's like, no, it's either you or the Marquis. That's the actual decision being made yeah. here. Like, you, you've decided that because the Marquis told you this, that you have absolutely no choice, when it's like, I mean... Fundamentally here, like, if, if they're always going to manipulate you with your daughter, you'll have stories where they'll just be like, they'll go out in a blaze of glory because they know that if they're dead, they can no longer be used. Their, daughter, or their children can't be used as leverage, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, but that never comes up, and neither does the idea of him going against the table. In fact, we only have one reference, really, to him saying that you never go against the table. That's just, we all know that's true. And it's like, oh. Even though the table is snakes that constantly break their own rules and don't care about mm -hmm. you at all and use your daughter against yeah. you. Really? Okay. Yeah, that uh, definitely want to work with them. They sure seem like good employers. Yeah, it's uh, boring to me. But yeah, he's like, all right, fucks. then. It's lame. It's like it's like the trope of the bad guy who kills their own henchmen all the time. It's basically that. It's like, why are you working for this asshole? <laughs> Someone said, at this point, is John Wick just Neo, but with, like, more plot armor? <laughs> like, yes. He's more yep. powerful than Neo, yes. 
virtually. Neo can die. Neo can die. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he just says, "I will serve. I'll be of service." And um, you might be thinking to yourself, "Well, none of this matters because John Wick will be safe, right? He'll be hiding out somewhere, and if they can't find him, then they're screwed." And that's when the Marquis says to Kane, "I assume you have some notion of where he is." And then Kane says, John has a few uh, few friends in this world, and even fewer he would trust with his life. And that's all we get. He knows exactly yeah. where he is. Luckily, if you ever had the opportunity to shoot one of those people, you would, you'd do it, right? You wouldn't kill some other person. You'd kill one of those few people, right? So that John couldn't use them to get revenge? Surely, Marquis, you do that, right? I just can't believe that um, the idea that like Kane just knows exactly where John Wick would have gone right now when he's had two movies before that he didn't go to this place. He went to other places that he could theoretically still go to. Like, he could still probably go to Halle Berry. I doubt she's going to kill him. He could still probably yeah. try the Russian family. In fact, we know that he could try that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Cade knows he'll try that, but he knows which <laughs> order John will try these things. It's just priceless. He really knows. You know, he's oh, he's a smart guy. Oh, yeah. He just knows John. They were friends, you see. Friend knows. Uh, someone said, Molly, your mic. Is everything... Do I sound okay? Yeah, you sound good to me? You get scratchy every second. once in a while, yeah. Um, mm. okay. All right, not every once in a while. I only noticed it that one time there. I'm going a bit floopy. Like, did it sound like it was an internet Crack thing or something else? No, no, no. It sounded like, uh, sounded like it was crackling. And if it was for everybody at, at home, right, then... Then it must have been like something with the mic or maybe the cable. Someone we'll just, just see if it happens well, again. Yeah, it's just let me know, of course. Cause... Rare thing, yeah. mm -hmm. And we can, if it happens every once in a while, we can still hear you. It's no biggie. Okie dokie. So, they move on. He's like, yeah, I'm going to kill him now. This will be great. And uh, we cut to Osaka, which is where. Have we mentioned? Sorry, I maybe I just zoned out for a second. Have we mentioned that Kane is blind? Oh no, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so, blind. Here's blind the thing: it, it's weird. We should. I know it sounds like we're retarded for not mentioning <laughs> mentioning this. It seems like it's a really big detail. The, first off, they named the blind guy Kane. A little bit insensitive, <laughs> but he's um he's blind. Uh, he's a blind guy. He cannot see. His eyes do not work. No. Um, he is, he is guess, like uh, second greatest assassin of all time, yeah, possibly, he and he's blind. He's one of the best ones. Now you guys might uh, be thinking, "Oh, did Evil Powers?" And you're like, "No powers, is no." This like this weird Zatoichi thing they're doing, or yeah, like a Daredevil thing. No powers. Um, no powers. And so now you're probably thinking, "Well, but, but you, but." How does how does a blind guy know? <laughs> that's a great yeah. question you have there. <laughs> like we'll do I'm our sure best to answer it. I, I'm sure they'll work really hard to make it seem believable. So was it he clearly has powers? Yes. <laughs> he clearly has <laughs> powers. He clearly has, has super. He's not supposed powers. to have powers though. Uh alright. Anyway, yeah. Well I mean more on that when we get to it. Then we get introduced to the next new character, Mr. Nobody. He's walking with his doggo, and he enters the Osaka Continental. And uh, we find out, you know, and I think it's better to say it now, so it kind of makes it run better. He's been tracking John Wick. And uh, his motivation, and you can kind of piece it together from his notebook, but not really, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to just say it now. His goal is to keep John Wick alive for as long as John Wick is not worth the amount of money that he wants. He wants it... about 48.5 million, I think. And the reason he wants 48.5 million is because he wants to buy a really nice big house for himself and his dog. Yes. So... It is, even though it's not worthwhile to kill John, it is worthwhile to follow him around everywhere and use all that time and effort for your life to, like, you know, do all the work and stuff, I guess. Can I just I say, everything that I just explained, I think it was actually getting close to a place where it might work right up until you find out it's for a house. It's I like, what yeah, the fuck? You, a forty eight point five million fucking house? What? <laughs> yeah. Cause he doesn't seem like the type, you know? Who'd want like this massive insane mansion no. and everything. 
You think he just went like a you know, just a you know a place in the suburbs? Well, imagine you know, he just seems the type. Imagine that he's just got the notes on what money he wants, and throughout the movie we never quite get it until like near the end we find out it's like medical bills for a loved one or like someone has cancer, you know that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, something, something insane, something really cost-worthy. Or to help a whole bunch of kids from an orphanage that he's from. Or it's just anything that's not, I want a something. house. It's like, something. What? Because there, there is an idea there. Yeah, this idea <laughs> that, you know... 2023 housing market is rough, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy a house in Australia. I need $48 million. Well, no, that's the average house price in LA, right? It's forty-eight million. Inflation, dollars. Canadian dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it's this, there's an explanation for this, okay? Because yeah. he's got a listing of uh, millions well, of dollars. That's crazy. That go from like five, mm -hmm. ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, and he's crossed out, I guess, five and ten. Because this is, I guess, at this point, he's at ten. I'm not actually sure. I need to check again, but. Yeah, he's, I think they were at 10 about that. He's point. hoping to just keep pushing up John's bounty until he gets it exactly where he needs it to buy an enormous house. It's <sighs> weird. If, if he wanted a place, he could just. I mean, I assume he'd split, uh, he'd split rent with a dog, right? So he'd only really be paying half. Mm -hmm. mm. I suppose half of this job is going to the dog. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's why, oh, yeah. that's why the are, price has to go are, so high. Yeah, because they're, they're splitting. Team. It. Or yeah, a big old pack oh, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that does. motivation other than lame. Like, it, it's not that it doesn't make um, sense. It's it, well, it doesn't make sense in that just I just don't see why the fuck you would need to buy a fifty million house. Like, I don't see it. I, I well, what I, I guess what I would say is that I find it interesting as an idea to have a dude who's basically artificially like increasing like the value of a bounty that he's going to claim. That's kind of like interesting as yes, an idea. That's the part I like. But, but to, specifically to get like one house is odd. I think I think I like the idea a lot actually of him having some like altruistic. I guess the problem is that it makes it a bit harder to justify him making the choice that he makes at the end if he has like a goal that mm. satisfying would be strictly good for the world. You know. Hence, we don't make him a strange character that ends up kind of being a good guy. Maybe it's not mm. even sure at the end. We'll have to talk about that when we reach it. But. Uh, wouldn't yeah. it have been way more tense for John to find out that motivation and to be like, "Oh fuck, what am I? What movie am I thinking of?" This, this well, is the thing. I I'm not sure what you, is movie it? you'd be thinking. Oh, of. it's it's Three Ten to Yuma. I haven't seen that. Film, it's um, actually. that's a good movie. Basically, so the premise in Three Ten to Yuma is that um, there, there's a bunch of guys who are trying to move a very like the most well known vigilante. Well, not a vigilante. He's just a criminal. Uh ever to a particular train at a particular time and his gang is catching up with them and so they start hiring a couple of people where they can and one of them is just like a farmer um and over the course of the movie the farmer gets to know that criminal pretty well and um there's like the the, the criminal likes him enough that he wants to actually be put on the train by that farmer so that the farmer can get the bounty and uh, the, mm -hmm. basically that aspect, like imagine we somehow intertwined that, that John is like almost invested in getting the bounty up so that the guy could claim it or something. Is, is the, the idea that it's just, I want a house. It's like, well, yeah, that was never going to be able to be compelling. And it doesn't come up. He never even says what he's trying to get it for, I don't think. There is, yeah, there, there, there's almost like a, a lot of stories that you could make about, like, oh, I'm this deadly assassin and everything, and, like, maybe the, the premise is, like, he's, he really is unkillable, he's just that good, he's that insane, but he knows that there's this, this huge bounty, that this essentially, this tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars on him, you know, what is, you know, what if he's like, oh, I've got cancer or something, or I'm gonna die anyway, be ashamed to let all that bounty money go to waste, mm. and so he has to, like, yeah, just... Something like that, you know. It's who's gonna, you know, gonna let someone kill me so they can get the bounty because I'm dead anyway because of cancer or whatnot. <laughs> so in chat I'm glad I missed the house pause. Like, I guess the movie is too. <laughs> like, it doesn't really mention it beyond. It's all listed. He says like it's um some real estate something. It says Daisy Real Estate or Holdings. There's like a bunch of random notes. I couldn't read all of them, but mm -hmm. um yeah, it's, there's a big old picture, a drawing of a house with the dog, and it's just like. Fuck man, kill John now, and you'll still get a pretty nice house. <laughs> like you won't well, need a pretty nice. Well, so, so, a thought that's forming in my uh, this might be jumping the gun in terms of like a thematic thing that might be going for with Mister Nobody. 
but maybe I'll save that for later if I remember it. Yeah, fair enough. Of like something that ties into a theme that I was thinking about being present in the film and whether or not I think it's well supported or not. <laughs> uh, wasn't the tracker just following the bounty that the table was placing on John, not setting it himself? Yes. I don't no, but he, he's manipulating it. He's, well, he's manipulating it by keeping John alive. To be fair, I don't know if we, some people are getting the, very much the wrong impression. He is manipulating it by protecting John from killers. The more people who Until... die trying to kill John, the more the bounty goes up. Of course, and then it will get a point where it's high enough that he'll do it because he knows how to get him. Or he knows how to track him, rather. Wait, yeah. Do you like the whole, like, I'm Mr. Nobody, I, I'm not on the grid, you know, blah, 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 that it's like, how do you plan for us to wire this money to you? And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> you're gonna have to give it to me in cash. Be like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> 50 million in cash? <laughs> <laughs> and then how is he gonna be getting this um, house, entering the market with, like, no details at all? It's like... I'm Mr. Nobody. It's all right. Well, oh, nobody. Yeah, like, who lives here? <laughs> Mr. Nobody <laughs> lives here. Paid in cash. Yeah, that's, I'm less is. concerned about that stuff, because I'm just, I'm also just, like, sad that that's what he wants. It's like, oh. All right. He's like, I want it in ones. <laughs> so, I, so I know they're not counterfeit. You'd never counterfeit one dollar bill. At that point, they would just give him some complimentary warehouses where they're still put in. It's like, there you go. Um... So yeah, that's that's his introduction, I guess. Uh, he is in the Osaka Continental, um, and then yeah. we get the uh, Koji and his daughter are the ones that run the Osaka Continental. This is all new stuff. This isn't in the other ones. Oh yeah, it's all new. Which isn't a problem yet, but it's about to be. <laughs> uh, Ooh. So and Akira. Uh, yeah, K Koji asks uh, his daughter, who is also his uh, concierge, that like what, what's what's been happening lately, and she says oh, all the nepotism. guests are very uh, concerned, and he's like, oh, they're concerned with something, they always are. And then she yeah. says, well, you know, after af after New York... Uh, All of our guests are concerned about exploding hotels. Yeah, pretty much, I think <laughs> I, I would be yeah. too, yeah. Edge or something. That would probably reach the news. <laughs> it's like, oh, the New York Wait exploded. Wait a second, I'm in one of those hotels. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and she goes on to say, uh, your relationship with John Wick is well known, and the table might come. And he says, and they will be met with our grace. And I'm just sitting there like, alright. I mean, none of that matters if John Wick is, isn't actually here, so, you know, whatever. It's fine. No need to worry about it. Um, and then we, we see John is just standing on the roof of this place. He's just yeah, there. He's just hanging out. And immediately it's like, what are you doing? Why isn't he in a room <laughs> somewhere? Like, sitting down or watching TV? Why is he on a roof? If anybody, mm -hmm. like, so many people could see him if they wanted to. A lot to. of people are looking for you, John. They yeah, want but to didn't it look you. cool how he stood there with his back turned? Wasn't it epic? Yeah, it's always epic because it's like, really there he cool, is. Yeah. And uh, the first thing Koji says to him is, Killing the Elder was a mistake, my friend. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, you can fucking say that, yeah. There was no fucking reason to do it at all, and it's just caused in immense problems. And he says uh, their response was to destroy the New York Continental, and uh, my daughter fears we're next. They they killed the concierge to, sh to prove a point. He doesn't say what the point is, he just says they proved mm. a point. And yeah, then John, um, of course, was like, oh shit, I better get out of here so we don't get killed. Ah, sorry about that, mate. I don't right? know what <laughs> is what, what point. They, especially if the point's <laughs> supposed to be made to me, and I don't know what the point is. Do you ever if wonder... I learned that um, if the writers do that to make you come up with it, the viewer. Oh, maybe, yeah. If I look, if someone came to me and said, "Hey, Rags, we killed uh this guy you knew to prove a point," and then they just left, <laughs> they left. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be like, "I well, point oh. proven, I guess." I mean, Who are oh, you? <laughs> I guess the point is, don't be my friend. I don't know. I actually don't know what what he meant. What he said, they were making a point by killing. Lance Renner's character. Why? I don't understand. What's the point being made by killing him? Maybe the you know you better be careful because concierges die, and the concierge for you is your daughter. You wouldn't you wouldn't want her to die. Is, is that it? Is, is... I'm <laughs> I'm desperately grasping at straws. I have no idea what the point of that was. Anyway. He says, have you given any thought to where this ends? The table's never going to stop, you know, and it only takes life and gives death. Which seems almost redundant, I guess. It is redundant. <laughs> I mean, yeah, gives death, takes life. Yeah. 
People saying the mic is scratching up again. This didn't happen on any I, of the uh, Resident Evil live streams. Ooh. Not happen. I mean, oh, well. A little bit. Oh, well. I feel stupid. I haven't heard it at all. <laughs> for some reason. Well, I guess I'll just keep going. There's not much I can do anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, okay, so... Uh, he says, Koji, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. And he says, friendship means little when it's convenient. Though, okay. something that is worth noting here is, John, everywhere, like, bad things are happening when you go to these places. Is that something that you maybe should be thinking about? Hmm. Like, th that you are actually kind of responsible <laughs> for, like, for everything that's happening and is about to happen? Well, I suppose to rewind a little bit, um, where was this place in John Wick 2 and 3? Uh, in Japan. <laughs> it was just chilling Far out. Away. Yeah, I don't know. That's Far all away. I know. There's nothing. It's a whole um, world full of these hotels. You'll never get to. Oh god! Like, I just. I just I'm pretty I sure this is something that came up in casual conversations about the John Wick franchise. Like he's like this very well-known guy. It's like he must have friends somewhere that can help him out somehow in some way. And even in John Wick too, like apparently John Antonio was his friend. And yeah, see how that worked out for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then I was like, oh yeah, we're very good friends, by the way. I'm going to sacrifice my life, my daughter's life, everyone's life. All the people who work here. Ar army in, in, the, uh, in the Continental. Oh, and the Continental itself for you. It's like, oh, okay. I it's... want to see a movie where John Wick realizes that everywhere he goes, they blow up because... He can't be allowed to work. We're actually going to get or... an in-universe like acknowledgement so, of that being true, no, no. by the way. And so what he yes. does is he's like, all right, I'm going to go to the table's headquarters. And he walks in and the table's like, damn, we have to oh, destroy, shit. We gotta destroy, <laughs> we <gotta> destroy <laughs> table HQ. John Wick's been here. And they blow up their own building. And then it's the, the guy with the hourglass comes running. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> what if he he's like, on the table? he's already there and he just takes it out and turns it over because he always carries it around. I wouldn't be surprised at this point if the high table building was just a really big table, like a huge <laughs> table. It's yeah. like, whoa. You have to have breathing apparatus that goes up so high. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, John Wick 2 and 3, when he was, uh, he's excommunicado currently, and he's chilling out there, which is against all of the every rule ever, uh, but they, the stakes of 3 are basically, like, he has nowhere to go and nowhere to hide, right, and 2, uh, for a portion of it, like, oh man, he should've just gone here, I guess, which is, uh, it just, they don't care, I don't even know if they remember, and I am increasingly annoyed at the fact that they refer to each other, like, what's happening here is that Koji is taking on an enormous risk. He's doing, like, a massive thing. I know, and, and there's going to be people listening right now, so who the fuck is Koji? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of my point. <laughs> Where did this guy come from? This is one of your oldest and most serious, like, friendships ever? And we've only heard about it in this film? Like, mm -hmm. okay. And, and, and you know, the, the, well, the yeah. acknowledgement that what he's doing is well out of the bounds of normal friendship, but he's doing it because, gosh darn, their connection is so strong. And you're like, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's just, I, 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 now, it could be that I'm not remembering that scene in the film, because I know it's something that is touched on in terms of, like, what will happen because John Wick is there. But, like, is that, there is no point in the film where, like, John Wick actually reflects on the fact that when he goes in at, like to these people for help, he causes them like serious damage. Yeah, like, there's, there's no, no recognition. Like, that, like th that him going there, and it could be like, well, yeah, but it's because the high tab was hunting you down. It's like, yeah, but it's because you actually did break the rules. Yeah, he the did. The Continental was meant to be like a neutral ground, and you violated those rules. You knew what they were, and you violated them. And now, like all of these people are suffering. <laughs> Because you go to them for help. And there's just no point where John Wick is like, man, like, that's actually, like, shitty. That's on me, yeah. Um, like, especially considering the consequences for, it's Koji, right? Yes. Like, the, the consequences that he suffers. Like, he goes out of his way to help John. Well, and that's what's so yeah, satisfying like about a... it. They're such good friends. They've had such a long journey together, you know? I have, was there was there something in the movie about how he had like this long outstanding like beef with the table people or that he was like some revolutionary no, type who wanted to restructure no, the whole No, Koji that says that he values no. friendship and brotherhood over the table. That's pretty oh, much it, yeah. And I mean, uh, to be fair, 
what Fine. else can they do? He's brand new. Like, he's off mm. the fucking, like, he's just been what finished cooking do? in the little oven, and it's like, what? what is this? And you're like, this is Koji. He, he likes friendship. <laughs> like, okay, and This good. is Koji. He likes friends. <laughs> Alright, then. Um, so, yeah, you have that, and then it comes back down, and uh, the guy is flipping through his little notebook, the Mr. Nobody, and he, he realizes that the men who are now entering the place, who look a little uh, little conspicuous, Rags, you kept pointing that out, you're just like, why are all of the people who matter in this story looking incredibly specific and strange <laughs> compared to everyone else? It's like, uh, and he sees that they're all wearing a symbol, and he checks his notebook, and it represents, like, they work for the Marquis, and I seriously was just like, how does he, how does Mr. Nobody know that? Like, how does it, that shit was invented for this film. Like, what, since, it's fine, he knows things. Alright, that's his thing, he's like he's tracker a tracker man. okay? Yeah. He's Trackers a tracker. know things. They say that, um, like, assassins are a, a type of person in this world, and the trackers are a type of person in this world. And it's like, we've only ever seen one, him, in this one. What? Yep. It's for me, like, they, they cruise control with, like, a lot of stuff to try and just hope everyone thinks it's cool and moves on. It's just mm -hmm. like, you're cheating all the time. Um, so then uh, the concierge notices all the marquee men are here, and she's like, okay, evacuate right now. Uh, which is just, like, damn. I guess, I guess uh, we've already cranked it up in terms of we know what's going to happen. Yep. They're um, ready to fight. And so then we come back to Koji and John, and, and, and he says, the only path this leads to is death. And then John's like, I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> and then he's like, not even you can kill everyone. You want to die, that's your choice. But a good death can only come after a good life. Which feels like just flowery meh. Like, what does that yeah, because I just don't agree. Um, I, but, but you're right, it's flowery meh. A lot of the dialogue in this tries to feel very petty and meaningful and deep. And like, like, oh wow, it's so it's so profound what they said, and they're just oh, all these bangers. But it's just like, no, no, it, it really isn't. It's just all shit nonsense. I feel like Darth really. Vader, like, kind of counters that sentiment pretty hard, doesn't it? That's, hmm. It's actually a very strange sentiment. Somebody could live like a shitty life, but then come through at the end. In fact, that's like often a, a element of redemption stories, isn't it? That yes. Yeah, I lived a bad life, like but you know, I could sacrifice dead. myself for something. Maybe good you're supposed or, you to know, do one good thing with my life. To read something else into it, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know Koji very well. I, I, he's only spoken for about one second, so I, I don't, you know, I can't think of what he might be thinking about. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Oh well. And I certainly, absolutely, do not apply that line to the end of his story. But we'll get there, Mister yeah, Mr. Koji. We'll get there. Um, yeah. John says, "You and I left a good life behind a long time ago, my friend." I don't, you know, I don't really know. What I to guess do. Koji seems like he's living a pretty sweet life, though. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he's pretty happy, like organizing this peacefully. Everything's chill, and he gets to hang out with his daughter every day. Yeah, he's, like he's he... got you know, nice place. Yeah, you know, they make pretty food. clear they the they're pretty tight as well. The daughter and him, they don't have like problems. The daughter looks out for him. It's like, hey, yeah. you've been doing a lot of work. We should have some dinner and just chill out. And he's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. We're gonna do that. Yeah, I'll hang out with my daughter. They go back to work later on and maybe make he's all this money. And... Doing evil work. Maybe all of it's really oh, bad. No. Uh, so, yeah, uh, then uh, uh, she arrives, actually. She just stumbles into the scene and says, Oh my God, the high table are here. D uh, what's John Wick doing here? And it's just <laughs> like, Oh my God. <laughs> Are you going to try to keep him secret at all? And, it, and he just says, Mr. Wick is our guest, and I will talk to them. They don't know he's here. And, and to be honest with you, because I know how films go, but I was just saying they're like, there shouldn't be any problem. There shouldn't yeah. be a problem at all, because there's no way, they, they can't know John is here. They're running strictly off the information of Kane saying he's probably yes. here. That's it. And to be honest with you, Kane would have been wrong at any other point in history, but he still would have guessed that he was here. So like... It just so happens that John actually was there. And he's got nothing to go on. And so the, the ultimate question is, what is the difference from the point of view of the Marquis as to whether John is there or not in terms of their approach? Because <laughs> like, you can't tell the difference with this. They, they, it doesn't matter Seems if he's there all or in, not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he says welcome. 
And then uh, Mini Boss, I guess is what we'll call him. He's around for the whole film. He's yeah. like, uh, the table believes this Continental is providing services to an excommunicado. We require full access. And he says, yeah, sure, 100%. Obviously, just giving your guns first, because that's the rules. And then he says, we work for the Marquis, so no. And then he says, okay, well, I speak for Osaka, and I require your guns, please. And then he says, don't make the same mistake New York made, which I thought was <laughs> priceless. <laughs> New same, York so like, didn't get to do <laughs> shit before they got blown up. What do you mean? <laughs> like, the same man. mistake they made where the manager tried to kill John Wick and didn't do good enough. Yeah. Don't make that mistake. I'm Don't make so the mistake confused. of throwing John Wick off a roof. <laughs> like that, that's man, not what we're... The citizens of New York knew <laughs> what they did wrong. They would be so upset. Imagine all the fucking men, like the hotel people were in that like Rube when he hit when he said that like what the fuck did we do I guarantee you when he said like evacuate there was probably like one dude who's not in the position to be able to get out within the hour or something maybe he was like wounded you know because a lot of people spend their time there to heal yeah yeah it's like <laughs> don't make the same mistake I don't even know what he means but the thing about it is it's like all you have to do is hide John in some secret area secret compartment then let them search what's what the fuck is the harm if they search yeah. What's going to yeah. happen? Surely you have many secret compartments that no one would ever find. So, yeah. Big hotel. Um, <laughs> or it's seems... on the roof. So, after he says, don't make the same mistake, uh, Koji says, fools talk, cowards stay silent, wise men listen. Uh huh. Oh, wait, so that's <laughs> silent. <laughs> <laughs> silent. I just. <laughs> it's such a like, I'm sorry, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like, what? I thought so we were having a conversation. So when you're listening, you're also silent. I, just, <laughs> I, I'm getting confused. I'm getting, being confused. I wasn't. <laughs> it's such a just. Okay. Anyway, so like, can you respond? Like, I appreciate whatever that is, but hello. And it's like uh, hello. But in the background, Kane says, "At which one will you be?" It's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, hello, old friend. And they, they ask each other about how their daughters are doing, which is neat. And then they're like, right, this doesn't have to end with blood. And he's like, okay, leave then. And I, <laughs> the I'm just sitting off. there like, well, why don't you just say, just let us search, bro. Just let us look yeah. around. It's, it's not going to, it's fine. Yes, we will have pistols, but let's be honest. We're not going to use them. We're just going to look around, okay? It's fine. Nothing well, bad will happen. you think that there would be... The whole point is that, like, these disputes should not happen because there should be a rule when it comes to this stuff that they, like, reference. Like, there should be someone there with, like, a, a literal rule book to make sure that everyone follows the rules of how these procedures are carried out. But they just don't do that. It's just like, uh, give your guns because it's a rule. It's like, well, actually, the rule says this. So now I was like, well, well, as an audience member, I don't know which rule is the right one. I have no clue. What What's the actual rule? Neither do they. And he says, uh, So who's in the wrong? Kane says, No one defies the table. I remember you once understood that. And then he says back, I thought you remembered brotherhood. It's just it's like, ugh, What is this? What are we doing? And J John has, like, shown you can defy the fuck out of the table. <laughs> he's been executing oh, yeah. elders. What does that mean? It's like, uh, he's, he's ignored the adjudicator. Even the, the harbinger couldn't kill him, even with his hourglass. So... I would say that, like, there's a chance you can actually push back at the high table. They're all fleshy human people. You can put metal into them real fast. Whoa! And also, there's Me? probably a system in line to, like, kind of, it. it's almost like a, like a quasi-legal system where if the table is essentially like the government, right? Like, you should be able to be like, yeah, I've got grievances with the table, and so I'm going to fill out these forms and do this thing, and I'm going to maybe have this rule, such and such, and we're going to have this... You know, some people look over it like this. So like, like, an, you know, like some system, something that I thought was really kind of neat in the first one that they kind of build up is these sorts of systems that might exist in this world. And now they only seem to be used to just bring out random plot things whenever they need it for the story they want, instead of actually having an assassin system that has all these rules and, you know, like books and stuff mm -hmm. that could be interesting because it could be like essentially the flavor over all of these interactions and these fights of, oh, we can't do this because it's, it's against the organization's rules, or we have to do this because so it stays in rules, and we can't do this because, you know, it's against the rules, and if we want to do this, that's that's duh. Well, do you want to know what happens next? 
I would love to know what happens next. It's so great. It's the they're having that little back and forth about brotherhood rules. Nobody's gonna die. No blood lost. Don't defy the table. Yeah. Blah blah. blah. They're and in then the lobby. Yeah. Mini boss cuts in and says, "Enough! By order of the marquee, this hotel has been deconsecrated. Step aside." <laughs> it's just like, no, it what? You can't oh, do that. Man. What the fuck? Yeah, that's like, not your job. You're not. You're not the hourglass man. And, Where is and, your hourglass? And not only that, but just like what? Because we're still talking. We haven't like. Calm down, dude. Okay, like we're D D Kane and uh, Koji were clearly having a back and forth, and he just says like, "Nah, fuck you, deconsecrated." <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, just like Something you can do. The thing about that is, to me, I'm just like, oh well, then I guess yeah, just you gotta. Like, why you may as well just uh, can you just do that on a whim? Like this is consecrated, this is deconsecrated. Oh, Floopy Mike. It was just for like yeah, two I heard words. it now as well. It was. Just only flimpy for a little bit, though. It's interesting. I just we the, uh... there's more of a disruption pointing it out. Than just yeah, yeah no, 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 just moving on. If that's the case, then we'll just keep we'll power through it, I guess. <laughs> right. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, it just I never I, it, we've gone to the point now with that. That was like a big event in. Uh, when did that even happen? When did when did a continental get deconsecrated? Was that episode? Episode was, that was that three. chapter three? Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a big deal, but then they just. He just like guy throws that out. That's well, yeah, happened they now. Had the, we had the fucking adjudicator, like the special person, come around to do that. It's like it's deconsecrated now. Get wrecked. And but I guess because the because that. he's like the marquee. Which it's also weird because we, the the twelve people from the table give that French guy. You have all the power, and then I guess the French guy goes, "Yeah, but I want to watch." here in my theater and watch the play so you have that power now and then you give me a call when you did the job so it's it kind of has the same powers than him i guess maybe seems like it like what does he have le left le less powers do you need to give the guy a call before he does something it's really weird you guys are watching the movie wrong definitely yes we are um <laughs> Um, someone, someone in the chat had mentioned deconsecration culture, which is oh, no. pretty funny. Just on the but, spot, um, decanceling de de someone, I knew that. Yeah, I guess. You've been deconsecrated. That sounds like something that, like, a really cringe thing that a John Wick fan would say. <laughs> like, you're, de you're deconsecrated yes. for that. You're excommunicado. Um, avocado. But when he, when he says it's deconsecrated, like... All the lights go down, and then a green mm -hmm. light is turned on because there's always special lighting in the John Wick universe whenever we fight. And, That's uh, fighting oh, yeah. lights. Those, those are the green fighting lights. And Kane is like, "Don't do this, Koji." And then uh, so uh, no I you. think the the mini boss guy takes a step forward, and then Koji says, "Attack!" And it's like, <gasps> and basically he has. I, I don't know. I, I hate this so much, right? Because uh, we've spent like half an hour getting to our first major action scene, and everybody all over the fucking planet loves it. And I was just sitting there like, Jesus fucking Christ, 10 seconds in, it's already a mess. You have Sucks. the Marquis men. They are all men in bulletproof suits. Well, the, the John Wick bulletproof suits um, with pistols. That is, that's who they are. That's what they have. There's about right, eight the to ten of them. Probably eight. Yeah. Six, six to ten, something like that. Let's say eight for the sake of it. Um... Then, Koji's men are all a floor above. There's about, I want to say, like, 10 to 20 of those guys, and they all have bows and arrows. Of course they do. Why? Because, because Japan. This is Japan. Because Japan, I think. Japan, that's really fucking lame. famously known for not being up to date on technology. I don't, like, I, I don't know what to say other than, like, that's just fucking stupid. But okay, if they're amazing with the bows and arrows, which they should be, then they've all probably be. got the uh, bows and arrows ready to take out every one of those dudes, right? Just arrow to the head, arrow to the head. I'm sure yeah. all of them can aim, and they're like, what, four meters away from their target? Should be they're able to pull it off. Close. There's they're more of them close. than there are even of the marquee men. Now, that's the setup. So when Koji says, attack, what I'm expecting to see, right? This, for me, feels like cause and effect. You have the marquee men going, oh shit, they look up, arrow all like just flung out and we're killing probably like six of the marquee men maybe one or two of them doesn't get a lethal shot 
uh, if they're lucky, and uh, they maybe attempt to throw up their stupid suits above their heads. I don't know what else is, but the thing mm -hmm. is, it, it should happen so fast that they're pretty much fucked. You know what yeah, actually you're not, you're happens? Not faster than an arrow, really. You know what actually happens? What actually happens instead of the fight being over in a second? Two. Two archers fire. That's it. None of the others. Two, he says attack. Two archers fire. One gets a critical hit in the neck of a marquee man. Dead. Okay. Second okay. arrow is fired at mini boss. Go into his head, but he, th he throws up his arm and it hits his suit. So it doesn't count. Oh, well, that's it. goes it. into his arm. That's it. Because it well, what about the rest? There's like there was like a whole bunch of archers there with bows. What about them? What'd they do? They didn't fire or loose. Sorry, whatever. But, but <laughs> Koji man said attack. I don't know if he talked to them uh, earlier and said, "When I say attack, I only I want attack. two of you to loose arrows." Okay. <laughs> well, did he say it in English and maybe they don't like speak English? Yeah, only or? two of them understood because only two in of them English. are fluent. <laughs> He should have said it in Japanese so that they all I don't understood. know why this shit happens, because I have no way to explain that. I was just like, okay, that was weird. Why not? I guess you got... Don't you want to kill them, or do you not? Or do you just want to kill some of them? But how come those were the two who got aimed at? What if they aimed at the same person? And he just got two arrows, and they're like, oh, that's... Not, that's I don't awkward. know about you, man. If I was one of the Marquis dudes, I'd be like, shit. <laughs> like, that guy just got shot through the neck. Uh, but all of them just stand well, there like, well, whatever, fuck it. Yeah, I'm like, no, I don't want that to happen to me. No, I'll leave. Yeah. I'm gonna now. put on a scarf yeah. made of that bulletproof stuff. Yeah, and then wrap it around my face. See, I would love it <laughs> if the films like had mummy. that. Like a character who has that, and everyone's like, you look ridiculous. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna look ridiculous for a long time, because I'll be alive. See <laughs> you, you. <laughs> I'll be alive. <laughs> oh, it'd be so uh. much more fun. But anyway... The film seems to think something really cool just happened, and the music starts up, and I'm just sitting there like, what is happening? And then the camera starts to pan, and it shows all of Koji's men drawing swords, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you know how you want to go attack the melee combat style when they've got guns? What? Yeah, but, 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 these are, these are samurai swords. Why? So, what good is your gun and your bullets? gonna do against samurai swords. They just proved their bow and arrow worked. Use more of them. <laughs> like... But you have to shoot them for them to work. Kind no. Of. No. They shot two and two of them yeah um I And then know. um <laughs> you know we'll we'll go back and forth a little bit here, but a fight happens between the marquee men and the bow and arrow men and the bow and arrow men and, and Koji's men, they lose. And so how, they, they start just, running away, yeah. like they back up into further parts of the Continental, and it's just like, how? How did this happen? Why? It should have been, like, attack, and then all the arrows went into the Marquee Men, and then they died. That should have been what and happened, the, yes. Yeah. That should have been what happened, because obviously that's what would have happened. And to mm -hmm. re-clarify, this is, in a world of assassins, the Assassin HQ of, like... I, I don't know if I could say the Assassin HQ of Japan or anything, but, like, it's it's going to be pretty significant. Oh, a yeah. A big place filled with experienced men and women who have been killing people their whole lives, know all about the tech and the everything. Everything to do with it. And their approach was firing two arrows and maybe using some swords. Where are your, like, better weapons? Why not have gas why not have traps well, why not have an enormous machine gun that just mows down people in that room when they try to attack why don't yeah, you have that, any lockdown features at all you don't you don't come across as if this is your job you know you come across as an amateur and you found some swords and bows you're like i don't know i guess we'll use these like we've never trained for this or practiced for this there's no you know lockdown procedure there's no emergency button it's not like a, a, a panel in the wall doesn't open and there's just a browning m2 there and it's just it was just machine gunning everybody like there's none of this it's just some guys with swords and some bow people and they lose <laughs> like this is the lamest shit ever you had them surrounded and everything and the drop on them and you lost yep. you suck you, you you're assassins and you're shit at killing people
Yeah, and it's just lame to watch. You never get to watch competent people having to fight competent people and out-competing them because they did a smart thing, or they were more prepped. You never get that. You just get, well, they're That'd dead now. And you're like, oh, bye. Oh. <sighs> well, you know, and, and <clears throat> they start moving through the Continental, and uh, Koji orders his two personal sumo guards to go and attack the now-coming-in uh, armored-up assault rifle team of fully suited people who are gonna who are gonna totally beat all of them. It's gonna be great. And you might be thinking to yourselves, like, what are sumos gonna do against guns? Die. That's that's where you Die. forgot. <laughs> They're that's wearing well, it's remember slow. it's the old video game rule. If you're fat, you got more health. Two health yeah. bars your at health least. Bar, your health bar health is bigger. If you're fat. Yeah, that's right. They got they got so much health, but they also have like bulletproof kimonos or whatever they're wearing. So that's mm -hmm. got that too. And they and actually it... show them uh, lifting their arms <laughs> up to their head so that those guys can't possibly shoot them. And then they just it looked like it was awkward to film, but they they sort of slowly sort of like punch at the the guards and they just go flying and they just as if to imply they're like Resident Evil pigman type enemies. Where whatever they do to you, you go flying because of the force, <laughs> and it's just yeah, like they're just fat, dude. Like they don't. The guy, these guys are wearing armor and they have rifles. Like, why are you telling? Like the sumos win. You're like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Fuck you. Just it's like <laughs> they're, shut up. That's how. That's cool, isn't it? You're like, no. It's really silly. Um. <clears throat> Which I guess uh, puts us along to the first Donnie Yen set of uh, action. Yes. Um, summarizing it is going to feel a little bit strange, but I'll give it a shot, I guess. He is uh, goaded on to actually get involved by Miniboss, because obviously Miniboss is like losing some men, I guess, here and there, as you would. And... Uh, so he's like having some soup, and he's just like, "Ah, fine, I'll I'll get involved, I guess." And uh, him getting involved means that it, you kind of, I think, in a neutral environment, you're just going to be like, "But why would he be of any more use than all of your men with eyes and guns?" If if you know what I mean, maybe that maybe that scene is a bit rude. He's just but... that good. He's just that good with his sword. Well, maybe I'm skipping too far ahead because they've actually got the. When John gets involved in the fight, I don't know which one to do first. I guess we'll uh, we'll stick with the bad guys POV a little bit first. So staying with sure. Donnie Yen, he uh, he like just starts shooting his gun randomly, and I I would suppose generously that he's just trying to encourage the other m people to move back to be confused to be like, oh shit, what's going on, and uh, to maybe miss their shots while he gets more into position. But they fire their arrows, and I think if I'm being hyper generous. He's listening to those actions, and that's how he can know where they're coming from and sort of how to dodge. But you'd still have to be pretty fast and kind of lucky, because uh, yeah, you have to be really fast and really lucky, and you're only you're essentially operating off of old information. Yes, uh, that arrow is already going to be very close to with you by the time you're reacting to the sound. Um, so. You know, it's the best they can do, I guess. But you could have just said, like, you didn't have to make him blind. Yeah, I don't know why they. <laughs> that would have been a full of solution. Just like, don't do it, because they clear, like, they they try sometimes, but most of the time they clearly do not give a shit. They oh yeah, just have so this sword fighting people. It's and... worth clarifying. This is the scene I'd say is probably the best for him in terms of action that I I'm kind of some of the stuff I'm okay with, some of the stuff I'm not. But as anything going forward from here is terrible. Oh yeah, it's um, really bad. They just they I think they 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 front load a lot of the attempts at convincing you that he's blind. Yeah. Um, but after this, it's just they don't give a shit. <laughs> blind master trope for cool factor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but do, 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 do you not see a bit of a cheat code there? If we just have him do normal things, but we say that he's blind, <laughs> the people will like him more. You're like, okay. I guess that works. He puts up little sensors that ring sounds when people move past them and uses that to just shoot them, uh, basically, so he can he'll remember where they are. The thing I kind of liked about it... Well, so this is... I fucking hate that this happens. I wanted to be happy about this, but then I thought more about it, and I was like, oh, no, this doesn't quite work. So, I like that he seems to be having fun, 
And uh, there's one guy where he does like a flurry of punches really fast, and then he does like a wind-up punch that's clearly just for fun and for show. And he's like kind of having having fun with it. And I was just like, that's that's kind of cool. But then I was just thinking about how, wait, he fucking likes the people who work here, and he doesn't want them to die. Like he he already said to Koji, like there there shouldn't have to be blood here. We should all just do what we're supposed to do. He even tries to give him an out soon after this part. And that these people are all trying to defend someone, and he's doing this only because he's been forced to under threat of his daughter dying. It feels weird that he's having fun, if you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, yeah. It's like, he shouldn't, like, he should be... Well, do we have a character? And, well, this would be why it would be interesting to have the police show up every once in a while. Uh, so you have characters like John Wick and stuff who are, like, like not killing the police. They, they, they're... They're just doing their jobs. They're not part of this assassin group. Uh, you could have had that with, you know, Donnie in here where he's really trying to not kill him. He's hitting him with the cane, uh, punching him. Uh, maybe he has, uh, he, if he had a gun that had rubber bullets or if he had a, um, he used the environment like pots and pans to hit him and knock him out, things of that nature. Because yeah. he doesn't want to, you know, he's like, I'm only here to kill one person or something like that. Um, but. Just, he might be nah. in the clear for, um, I don't think he overtly murder, uh, kills anybody here. I think he only ever hits them really hard. Oh no, he does shoot at them. Okay. He shoots at them. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I just, I just get, I just, Except the power he shot at them, okay? <laughs> there's a blind man with a gun shooting at an oasis. It's literally what we've got. Oh yeah, I think they actually pretty blatantly show he headshots one of them as a blood splatter as well, so yeah, okay. Oh, uh, well. That, oh, for a second there I was like, wait, maybe that was what happened, that he did only use non-lethal attacks on him because these people are being forced into a fight that he doesn't believe they should have to be, you know? Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's that. And then, of course, this just th this applies to every moment he is on screen. Um, He's just constantly incredibly lucky that no one's just shooting at him without his knowledge, you know? There could be anybody anywhere at any time that shoots at him. That's always going to be a yeah. possibility. Someone yep. could just be standing in the room 10 feet to his left with a gun pointed at him, and he just wouldn't know. He's just like, is he blind? I'm just going to stand here. Is this guy <laughs> actually blind? Like, I kind of feel bad. <laughs> like, oh, never mind. He's a superhero. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> He's a superhero. Kind of. Um, so, yeah, and then, you know, we are rewinding chronologically, but I'm just moving over to John Wick's side of things, I guess. Uh... They find out that all this is happening, and then the girl, uh, Koji's daughter, like, takes off her dress, and she's got, like, combat gear underneath, and she's getting a bow and arrow ready. I was just immediately like, for fuck's sake, why don't you have a pistol? Just anything. Something. It's You're a world of assassins. Man. And it's funny, because they'll show an incredibly effective bow and arrow, right? But it can't be more effective than a gun! No. And I know you know that. <laughs> like, he's, like, you can't lie to me. And she'll have to do some crazy moves, too, that are just like, wow, that shit's lucky. It was funny, John was standing there with her and some other guy, and then that guy gets his head shot off. The three of them are there. Any one of them could have been shot, but it was him. And it's just, it just makes me think, like, there was a sniper or a guy with a rifle, and he could have taken out John fucking Wick right there. But he was like, I'll nope. take out that other guy first. Yeah, this random guy with the bow... He's a priority <laughs> He's more target of, of John Wick. Oh, it makes me sad. Um, but yeah, they're all firing their bows and arrows, and they're just, like, incredibly effective against the super armor men. And she starts doing this thing that I, I'm surprised everybody's chill with. She not only takes on men that seem to be four times her size in close combat, like punching, kicking, and dragging around and stuff, she does it to men in, like, full armored suits and rifles, too, and sometimes she'll take on two at once. She looks mm -hmm. like she weighs about 80 pounds. She is an extremely lean young lady. Yes. She does not. She looks like the kind of person who just tries to not get into these, the, these, these essentially strength matches with yeah. big men. Uh... Boy, she sure. Wow. Look at her go. She's punching and she's kicking and she's spinning around and she's somersaulting over people and she's li there's like there's one where like the really big guy with a beard and she like 
lifts him over her back and like forwards. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's, oh, yeah. that's bullshit. You can't do that. There's uh, no dude, way you I, could do that. There's a part where Donnie Yen manages to flip uh, John Wick from behind him over him when John had like all the leverage and is a bigger man. And I just wonder sometimes like, could he really not resist the, the push and flip thing? And then I'm like, well, that's not even close to as ridiculous as when she did it to the giant man. So it's just like, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Anyone can flip Another anyone. Another giant man would have a very <laughs> difficult time yeah. doing that. And she just does it. Like, oh, this is just... It doesn't give a shit what we're actually shown on screen. Well, so, it's just whatever happens, happens. I guess we're getting close to highlighting uh, what the key is to the action scenes in this getting a pass from everybody, and that is that they are very, they have great clarity and they long shots. Yeah. That is what I think distracts everybody from even really caring about the mechanics of everything that's happening. Which uh, I understand, and it'll absolutely work on me. It, it, I want it on the record as it should be. I thought the throne room fight was amazing in TLJ when I first saw it. Mm -hmm. Then I watched it again, and again, and again. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, this might be one of the worst action scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> like, it's... A recurring theme in, like, John Wick fights is that people will sort of run in to get shot, when if they yeah. had shown up, like, a little bit earlier, they would have gotten John Wick, just with because the, he was preoccupied with, the, with something. With a gun in their hand, by the way. Like, there's a yep. lot, of, lot of scenes where they well, just they stab them with people. their pistol. Well, what I think Matt was pointing out is they don't exist until they appear on screen. Like, they can't yeah. be shooting off from a distance. Yeah. And any time that they ever do, John Wick is ready for it. There's, like, never a point where he's actually, like, not in a position to deal with the enemies. I guess I'm going to be like, well, yeah, I mean, of course, right? Because otherwise he dies. It's like, well, I mean, what we saw in the first film was more of an effort being made by, like, John Wick to put himself in situations where he could handle these situations. But now yeah. with the vest, the vest is like a convenient. If John Wick is in a position where he should get killed, well, good thing he's got the vest, uh, the the suit. He can put the flap up, and then yeah, yeah, he never has to plan another. anything. It's all reactive nope. every time, and he's just running around doing crazy nonsense things, yeah, yeah. getting incredibly lucky. Everybody struggles and is staggered for exactly as long as they need to be that he's prepared to take them out again. And you oh, might be yeah. like, yeah, but Enemies isn't it around. impressive though? That everybody's doing all this choreography and it's all done in like these longer shots, and it's like, yeah, and the lighting like, and yeah. the framing is really awesome. It's yeah, just kind but... of a shame that all of this effort and work went into essentially creating and constructing fight sequences that are shit. Just really, Cause... really watch them. <laughs> That's why I don't want yeah, to like, say. Yeah, like really. Well, next time you watch John Wick two, three, or four. Just actually watch the fights. Take note of where everyone's standing. How long they don't attack. Their refusal to just shoot John Wick in the head. Or how their stun times are just long enough to where they're out of the picture. Uh, or, or just how, the, how people... Oh, the insane inconsistencies on how people react to being shot by bullets. Oh, yeah. These vests and everything. These fully oh, armored guys with the... Oh, yeah, you, you want to say it. Go ahead. The, the, these fully armored guys, they you know head to toe essentially in bulletproof armor, and they'll just take bullet rounds to the face, and it just gets stopped by their armor, and it'll be fine. It's as if nothing ever happened to them. But then if they get like punched, or sometimes that when they get shot somewhere else, it'll like stun them for a while, or they'll get hit by a nunchuck, and then they'll just be absolutely staggered and on pause. Yeah. And it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. There's there's no way an assassin would rely on these insanely inconsistent methods of you know incapacitating people. It just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't work. This is a John Wick is a character who acts as if the plot is just changing everything in order to work for him. And it's probably worth not mentioning making the world work for we're him. We're currently himself. judging the best action scene in the movie. <laughs> like... Uh yeah. Probably. I, I can't think uh, of why. I mean, there's the oh yeah, probably Let's because see. like one in power the one in Paris is like insane. Yeah, the there's a couple different ones that we have left. There's one that might be better than this, but holy shit do they get really bad when you hit the end. Um but yeah, so there's that I suppose. Uh Koji, I can't. I think he, because he's uh, he's walking with a little bit of a limp, and uh, his daughter's been tagged as well by a bullet. Lucky she's not dead or anything. It's fine. She yeah, kind of she fights wasn't wearing the bulletproof stuff like the others were. Yeah, yeah. She she actually wasn't, even though the uh, Osaka Continental has that tech uh, because the sumos have it, but his daughter doesn't have it. 
That makes why, sense. Why wear that outfit? What What's up with that black skimpy? It's not skimpy. That that tight black outfit you have underneath your work clothes when you could just be wearing the bulletproof stuff. Is is that your battle outfit that you just have on it's you for at the all aesthetic. times? She's playing Fashion Souls. Oh, okay. Well, well next time souls. maybe you should wrap that up in that bulletproof fabric that everyone else is wearing. I just, it's just unbelievable a little bit, but it's like, whatever, <laughs> just move on. Um, yeah, they, they basically say, John, get out of here, just go. And he's like, oh, okay. He offers to stay, but they're just like, no, 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 just go. And so John moves through, and he he's at the doorway of this, this fucking set me off so much as well, everything does in this movie. This enormous hmm. room filled with panes of glass and frames everywhere. It is a John Wick action room. Like it's the, like it yeah, really an art yeah. exhibition well, room. It was after uh, episode, not episode, chapter three, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, when, it, you, you remember how he kept getting kicked into the glass? I think it was at that point, it's like, oh, ah, yeah. yes, room, room full of glass means an action scene is about to happen here, yes. and there's going to be a lot of shattered glass. <laughs> And uh, so you, you might be thinking to yourself, like, okay, so how does he approach? He immediately sprints into, like, the middle of the room and just starts shooting everybody. Yep. This is so yeah, annoying. Wick, he, man, if you guys could see it, it's he just, like, runs into the room and there's, like, three guys right there with guns. And he it, it, it almost looks like they're just, like, covering their hands, uh, covering their heads with their hands and just sort of, sort of shooting blindly towards the other people. And I'm like, guys, this... This is John Wick. I think, could, shouldn't we be doing better than this, where he just sort of runs essentially blindly into a room and just starts yeah. shooting? He's just uh, surrounded by guys, and he just shoots. Are, and... we, are we really nitpicking John Wick? You guys are kidding, right? So can you can you help me? Like, when I see that these films get, like, 75, 75, and 78 on Metacritic, what am I meant to make of that? Am I meant to make, yeah, That's man, th these movies are really stupid, but they're fun action films. Or am I meant to make, no, they're actually, like, they're not like Commando or something. They're actually like quality more so. Is why that what I meant to like? I don't get like why can't this apply to Star Wars? Why why doesn't it apply yeah. to Star well, Wars? Yeah, exactly. Or uh, or Marvel movies. You make of it that I'm people are like, entertained. I... Yeah, that's no. Fair. I um, make of it. But I make of it more than that though. There's honestly. another element Whenever to it. I feel like <laughs> that. It's that it's it's actually like good. It's not like yeah, it's dumb fun. I don't see that. When IGN gave it a ten out of ten, they weren't saying it was dumb fun. They were saying it was like a fantastic film. Oh yeah, this film. this narrative. There's some people who, for some reason, believe that everyone agrees it's nonsense, hilarious fantasy no, violence. No, that's it's not like, true. No, people <laughs> consider John Wick to be like very, very good. Yeah. yeah. People think this shit is like well done and not something you're supposed. Like, I think people would concede the staircase was a good laugh, and it's like the whole thing is a good laugh. <laughs> who cares oh, about yeah. what IGN says? I mean, we can keep saying a lot that, of people but, do. Like, a lot of people do, yeah. IGN is a very popular, IGN you know, have, like, you know, millions website. of subscribers. Like, their reviews for video games tend to get, like, hundreds of thousands, millions of views. And it's more so, like, I don't need to go to Many IGN. Many sales. I can 78 on Metacritic means a lot of people. More than 50% of the people who reviewed it gave it, like, an 8 or above, by the sounds of that. Well, I also... Well, not more than 50, 50%. We don't even have to, like, like try and get people to engage with a theoretically better John Wick. It's like, it exists. It's called John Wick 1. It's yeah. called John Wick 1. Yeah, one was exactly. good. Exactly. I think that's what I find lame about the conversation is the notion that like this is the only kind of John Wick film that could ever exist. Because people think um, that the first one was silly as well, like the other ones. Like, no, it's no. Very I mean, it's, 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 the first one. It, it, it's not. not it's not close. nearly as silly as these films. Uh, what, um, what would be said to be the silly part of John Wick? I don't know. I, I, I really guess don't. they would say just the the very premise of like John Wick, but it's again, it's like you've forgotten what it is. It's this happens with a lot of franchises. The longer they go along, is that they sort of like, the caricature that they become sort of retroactively gets applied to, like, the older thing, when what happened was changed. And the change was kind of gradual, but really it was, like, to totally change what these films were gonna be. I just, I just refuse to be, like, I was about to say gaslit, but I'm so tired of hearing that term that it annoys me. I refuse to be told to believe that everybody sees, like, the death of Sharon or any, any character of significance in these movies and goes, <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Like, that's the yeah, I just, that's, that's not the case. Like, I think that this is basically what gets defaulted to the second that you start to realize that the film does have, like, serious storytelling flaws. Like, at the beginning, it is, oh, it's actually quality. 
And then as soon as you start to delve into the flaws and the storytelling that connects these action scenes, even like problems in the action scenes, then it defaults to, well, I had fun with it, which is fine. Like, if you enjoyed it, that's that's fine. Yeah. Like, that's, that's totally chill. Just don't say it's good, though. Yeah, the, uh, certainly not. I mean, all the people I've spoken to who are saying John Wick is a fucking great movie, whenever you start talking about the story, you'll immediately find out they're just like, that's, I mean, sure, I don't, I don't even... Whatever. <laughs> it's just like, damn. Mm. The, this story I, isn't even being taken as serious say, by people who love it. Because they don't like, even remember, like, the key points of what happened. Nobody knows what happened hard. in John Wick fucking 2 or 3. We do. We know yeah, what happened yeah. in it. I know very and, well. And here's the thing. Like, you know, I, I look at a film like Die Hard, that's an action movie with a lot of cool set pieces, yeah. a lot of fun moments. But, like, I can defend Die Hard as a story. Like, I can appeal to what the work that it does with the characters. Well, so... A movie that is more intentionally enjoying its goof factor, I would say for action and what it is, is Predator. And yet the action in that is way better than in this, in terms of making mm -hmm. sense what characters are actually doing. And of course, and Predator as well, like, telling a great story as well. Terminator is another film. Terminator and Terminator 2 have great set pieces. Yep, like, they have awesome set pieces. But there's a story and characters and thematic elements that are binding it all together and making it into something better. Like... I, I, it's almost like, I, I, it's funny, people said this for us about The Last of Us, I think it is actually the case for John Wick, that, like, the standard, especially set by, like, superhero films is so low, that, like, John Wick sort of, like, John Wick gets elevated more than it should, because, like, the story that connects it all together is just bullshit. Like, I wanna, I, when I watch a fight scene... What, well, maybe that's just the fundamental question that you should ask. What makes a fight scene good? How come I can watch some fight scenes and they're just terrible and stupid and I hate them, right? And how come I can watch other fight scenes and they're really, really neat? Like, what, do you think the, you think when Luke and Vader fought on Cloud City, like, that was, like, an amazing sword fight? No. It was fine, I guess. But that's an amazing fight sequence. It's more than just... It, it, there's like there, there's more to it than just what yeah. what you feel when you're watching it well, that first time. Your visceral if, reaction. Uh, imagine the John Wick. Well, you don't even need to imagine, right? It is the first John Wick of like character informing these set pieces and action scenes way more than is the case here. Because like, I see who people is John fighting. Wick? Yeah, when I see John Wick fighting people, I want to feel as if that could actually happen. That he's not protected by, like, a meta plot. You know, he doesn't have plot armor. The only reason he's not dying is because um, it, it, the plot just doesn't want him to die. I want to see him taking actions, moving around, and, and behaving in a way that makes me think, oh, this guy really is good. Look at what he's doing. Look at how he's behaving. Look at all the things that he's, you know, accounting for. That's why he's not getting shot. Not... They gave him a bulletproof suit, and enemies just cannot hit his head ever, regardless of the situation he's in. Like, I, I wonder how far you could push it. What if you put John Wick in the middle of a room with 20 guys with rifles, and they all shot at him, and there was no cover, and yet he never... And it, but he just spun around and shot them all with his pistol. Like, w would, what, would that be okay? Would that be acceptable? If it looked cool, what if there was some cool music and there were some red lights? Mm. Well, what then? You know, it's like, how far can we push it? Pretty much. Yeah. And uh, you just don't see these defenses rolled out for the things with the, uh, like, more collectively. Like, Mando is now at the point where everyone just shits on it. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it's no different than when it was fucking being praised. It's, it's the exact all, same crap. Yeah. yeah. It started out the same way as it is now. It's and it makes me believe that the meta surrounding each of these stories is actually what determines how good they are. It's nothing to do with the stories anymore. It, really it feels annoying. that way. John Wick 4 is cool in the context that it exists, not as its own thing. It is cool in the context of, look at these Marvel films failing and these, like, franchises failing, not like John Wick, which is also a franchise at this point with multiple yeah. spin-offs and, like, stuff happening. Um, how long does it take before John Wick becomes so, like, prevalent as just a thing that keeps happening with more sequels, spin-offs, TV shows, to where, like... You know, it yeah. starts to, it starts gotta, to sort of it's wear out its welcome. At some point, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. At some point, people are going to start clowning on the John Wick franchise because it's going to be silly. And then we're going to be sitting here. Eventually, yeah. We're going to be sitting here. It's like, really? Again? <laughs> like, we've been <laughs> through this. 
Because we, all, we already have the same stormtrooper problem. I don't know, for lack of a better term. We have like what, hundreds potentially in this movie going after John. And none of them are a threat. No. None of them. I don't care. Well, it's like, oh, there's 17 people going to John. No, okay, he's going to kill them all. I know. And something that got highlighted almost, I don't know if it was by accident a little bit there, by uh, Rags talking about the Cloud City fight. Like, one of the biggest things about it is that we feel incredible tension because it doesn't seem likely Luke can win this, and Vader's like this yeah. huge Vader force is, that's there. But Vader's you know, deadly, and he's 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 um, he's intimidating, and there's this tension because you know that Luke is completely outmatched before Luke even goes. Obi Wan and Yoda are like, "Yo, Vader's gonna kick your ass. You you are not ready to fight Vader." Yeah, and then sure enough, that's what happens. That's why there's a lot of tension during that fight because you know that there is going to be believable, realistic, and intuitive consequences to you know Luke doing this. And then you've got the who they are and what they mean to each other and what their goals are, and then the big revelation at the end of that fight. Meanwhile, like the, every John Wick fight is so impersonal. The only one that's like you could not say that for is the final duel. At least there's something there, but it's been there's built out of this film. One, it's not been every... built with more. Everything else is just a thing that needs to be gotten through, um, which is really awkward when getting through it leads to story stuff that is bad, and that really, like, I don't know how many people, well, I guess, yeah, I don't know, like, I, it, character informing these action scenes would just make the film, like, better instantly, I don't see how it could make it yeah. worse. Except the problem is, of course, they're all just faceless, mindless automatons that he's just shooting down. They may as well be robots. Like, there's nothing to mm. the enemies. And, yep. and you know, like I said, it, it, that's not something you can't do. I'm just saying that after I see it for the tenth time across these films, that he takes out an army of robots, I'm just like, okay, yeah. Yeah, he, they, they shoot the gun and the robots fall over, or they shoot the blaster and the stormtroopers fall over. It, wasn't that a I good scene? I feel like there's scene? some intellectually dishonest uh, pedantry here. Kill Bill clearly gets goofy and defies the laws of physics, but I've yet to hear the crew criticize it like this. We haven't covered Kill Bill. We haven't covered yeah, Kill Bill. Yeah, we haven't done a coverage of it. But if we no. talk I find about, it weird you know, swinging the miss on that one. fight in Kill Bill 1... Also, that's just classic we'll whataboutism, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty textbook, what about him? But there's a lot of really good things about that fight. The funny, there's a lot the, of really good things about that fight. I don't know how else to put it. Sometimes it's just like if you haven't, we haven't given detailed coverage of a thing, then uh, why would you pretend to know what we think about it, like in detail? Yeah, yeah so or I, like I, very I, specific points of potential praise or criticism of like scenes in a film. Yeah, like we haven't done that with everything. I think that works. Every time we talk about a film, we need to qualify it with every film we've ever seen as a point of reference. <laughs> we need to make sure. Lot. Yeah. I mean, we're getting there, you know? We're chipping away. We recently <laughs> did all the Final Destinations last Halloween. Now you guys know our in-detailed opinions of all the Final yeah. Destination movies. How about that? So Very you know, good. All of them are very good. Excellent. Top-notch films. Excellent. Uh, That's peak cinema. You know, it's all been I'm downhill right. since. Like, non, ironically speaking. Like, it's like, yeah, you now know our detailed opinions on Jurassic Park as of recently. Like, that is, that's a legitimately, a, a, that's like, that's like in the library of EFAP now. Where it wouldn't necessarily have been for a while if not for certain events coming together or whatever. Like, anything could happen. We could cover whatever, at whatever point you'll get to know how we would uh, pull this in. But if you're really going to pull the card of, wow, you let other things get away, I just feel like, you don't let other things get away with this. You, you hate this in lots of other things, so what's going on? Mm -hmm. How come this gets the pass? When Mando it... runs through the... In, in Season 2, Episode 3, when Mando runs down the hallway getting blasted by all of those blasters all deflecting off of him, tumbles to the ground, throws the grenades and blow him up, why do you say that's bad, but then this is good when John Wick's running around holding his suit up to his face to deflect the bullets while running around and, like, shooting people? What's the difference? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. This one's cooler. This one's more fun. I mean, I just think that, uh, I just, I just try to apply sort of the same standard to both of these things, and yeah, one of them works, and no, that's right, none of them work. Of <laughs> one of them works? You're like, wait, which one? <laughs> Apparently John Wick works. It's been, uh, annihilate in the box office, doing well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh most successful John Wick film in terms of like opening debut. It's already made like 150 million dollars. 
Which, look, I will say that I would I would prefer to see something like John Wick make money to, like, Ant-Man. <laughs> um, yeah. But at the same time, I don't like the notion that, like, ah, yes, we're there, we got it, we nailed it, more John Wick 4. I don't like that uh, yeah. as, like, a lesson to be learned. Well, yeah, if someone, because people have been talking about that, what do you think the studios will learn from John Wick 4 being successful? And I'm just like, fucking Fast the Furious is already the same lesson. Yeah, it's like, yeah. kind of. It, you, you, that... it doesn't need to be a superhero thing, but it can still be crazy, like, action scenes with, like, a story that barely pulls yeah. any of it together. Yeah, because um, some people have said this is a compliment, some people say it is a criticism, I don't know where I stand on it, but John Wick is a superhero franchise at this point. He's not a normal man. Yep. No, he, he's indestructible. He, it's, yeah, exactly. Makes Captain America pale in comparison, almost. He does actually, kind yeah. of. Yeah, Captain America. <laughs> it's kind of insane. So, someone on the subreddit, like two days after this film came out, made a post saying he's fucking Wolverine in this movie, and obviously, what they were referring to is he does get fatigued, he does take damage, but in a matter of moments, it's all undone. Like his healing right. factor is insane. It's very superficial, um, and I think that. I think that really. Have you guys seen? Um, I think it was <clears throat> 1977. The Duelists. The Duelist. Um, where you have these two guys who are fighting. The, they they fight these duels over time, and you know they'll they'll fight with some swords here. It's like some rapiers here. They'll do like a, you know, they have a fight where they're just wailing on each other with um with with sabers in this essentially this basement. And they're just wailing on each other, and they're smacking, and they're just so super tired, and they could barely lift their swords, and and the duel has to be called off when they essentially collapse onto each other, and they have to pull mm. them apart. Um, and it's just you don't get that with this. You never get the sense and that John Wick has been through this, and you know, the, the, by the time the sixth fucking car hits him, yeah. I'm like, it just it's just like, does he? He's actually impervious. He's only going to get hurt or die when the plot wants him to. What I what my eyes are seeing when I when my eyeballs are watching the screen and I'm seeing the cars just hit him over and over and over. I'm like, well, I I just can't believe what you're telling me anymore. There's this disconnect between what you're displaying to me and what's actually happening in the movie. So it's like at that point, why am I even watching this? What's the point? Um, and so I said, like, uh, you can't assume what our opinions on Kill Bill are, and yet you then assume the opinions of someone on Mando from this. It's like, I literally prefaced oh, that. I've, no, 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 no I, I, I literally prefaced that with saying I could just do it back to you. I don't know how you missed that. That was my point, was that I, I, we can what about each other forever on different things instead of just addressing yeah. the current subject, which is what we're trying to do. Um... That's another thing that was annoying me as well. John doesn't pick up any of the rifles in the uh, first no, and second action scene he's cooler. in. It's insanely annoying. In the, rifles and magazines everywhere. In the third action scene he's in, and not including the opening with the horses, um, I, w I remember thinking to myself, like, I guess he just hates rifles or some shit. I know he's used them before, but here he's just, he's focusing on the pistol, he ain't using rifles, and like a split second after I had that thought, he picks up a rifle, and I was like, fuck's mm -hmm. sake. Absolutely just pissing me off. Like, now he grabs one. <laughs> All those rifles for that log. I just, just no. I'll grab it later. And rifles then, uh, are better than pistols. I think he shoots it maybe four times, and then he loses it, and then he opts for nunchucks. And I just, I. But it's so cool how he hits them with the nunchucks when there are all these perfectly good rifles laying around. Apparently, everywhere. people loved it. I couldn't get over it. I was like, there's so many better weapons right there. It takes him ages to kill one person with nunchucks. Probably because they're <laughs> nunchucks and they're wearing body armor. Yeah. That could be why. I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, I was just like, man, there's some better weapons on the floor. But you know, it's fine. Don't you worry about it, John. We gotta keep the fights going. We gotta fight with a new weapon, right? Because it's that logic that Doctor Strange 2 had. We gotta see different things, otherwise the audience will get bored. We can't have him just pistoling everybody. It's like, yeah, you didn't have to. I don't know why you thought that that was like the default position he always has to be in. Have you ever felt like when watching these that they always want to make sure they have John Wick run into a room with his pistol and then fight between one and three guys? Yep. Um, and once he defeats that section, the next section spawns. Yeah, that's what it they do in, totally... in this fight scene. Oh, it is. They it's change, like, um... They change back and forth between the soldier guys and the marquee people. Yeah, I don't know if like, you guys, if any of you played Uncharted. Un well, Uncharted One has Long a structure of waves, 
Like, that game has waves more so than the second one. So, like, you go into an area, you usually fight two waves, then there's, like, a little pause for you to, like, reload, get weapons and stuff, and then the third wave comes in to attack you. Um, so yeah. it's, John Wick has a very similar structure to the first Uncharted, which um, is not a fantastic game, uh, Uncharted 1, in terms of that kind of design philosophy. But hey, keep it alive in, in movie form, I guess. Um, why are y'all taking John Wick so seriously? It's not at all meant to be taken seriously. Uh, I'm just going to keep pointing to the Metacritic scores. I'm sorry. 75, 75, 78. That isn't, it's dumb fun. That's not what I mean, that score represents. The film clearly wants to be taken seriously. I was going to say, I wouldn't, they, I'm not going to talk about anything talk in the meta. And... The film itself. Um, this film has deaths uh, in it. It has thematic through lines about what death and life mean. Friendship. Like, mm -hmm. it's a lot of ser significantly serious moments that relate to a lot of different character sacrifices or uh, different actions that are taken. The idea that this is a clown movie on purpose is, is not true. That's just made up. Yeah. This, yeah. like, really, like, there's a lot of scenes where characters are talking and they have these heady, meaningful things about, you know, death and moving on and, you know, what are we going to do and our plans and who are we and you can't you know, overcome your nature and, and stuff like that. Like, there, there are these, this isn't just a dumb, like, so, like, Batman and Robin, that's a dumb, fun movie, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, also, again, John Wick 1 wasn't a fucking clown movie. People keep yeah, telling it themselves serious. that. It wasn't. It wasn't, it no. Go rewatch it. It's not a clown movie. It. It's a normal movie. Yeah. Yeah. There are like little beats of comedy here and there in the movie, mm -hmm. like oh, haha, ha, the police officer is, is he knows what's going on yeah. and he's gonna leave, you know, things like that. Like they happen throughout these movies, but that's a whole lot of movies. I mean, Jurassic Park isn't a comedy, but there's some funny lines in it, you know. Yeah. Well, if they we had, can't it, go like... we can't go around say to all those directors that make these clown Marvel movies, oh, you have to look at the gap, uh, the, uh, the not the cabbage. <laughs> What the the weight that comes with the old movies? Well, and then, actually, and then we and then we and then all the audience goes like, yeah, but the first one was a clown movie as well. It's like the other way around. Like it was, it, it didn't go from, like you have this through line from the first one, or like the the baseline of through the baseline from the first one. And it's like, oh, that's pretty serious. That's pretty straightforward. And then we go to the second one, we go clownish, and then everyone is like, oh, I guess they were all clown movies then. Especially after the fourth one, it's like that that would start to rewrite history. I think so it's like it's always been this stupid, right? And it's like, by the way, Fast and the Furious, the first one, not a clown movie. <laughs> like, yeah. But the rest of them, I'm pretty sure, are clown movies. I'm not even saying Too Fast, Too Furious is probably a normal movie as well. Yeah. I also think it's, it's funny that I wanted to say cabbage instead of baggage. <laughs> I, was, I was actually about to say like cabbage. What is he thinking about With the police? It was like, um... But it, it's almost like a refuge you could always retreat to. Like, oh, it's silly fun, ha! Huh? As if that's always like, see, it's okay. You know, it, it's okay that you know all these problems exist because we could say, oh no, it's just a dumb fun action movie. Yeah, as if that the Wasp be Wasp just, uh, was a dumb fun action movie. I just right? don't think, I just don't think the writers and directors would appreciate people saying that. It's this. That it's dumb movie fun. is a dumb clown movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not what they go for. That's the thing. I I want to treat it with respect. I don't want to ignore it uh, and all of its choices in writing as like whatever. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. You're just here to go. <laughs> I like the lights or something. I mm -hmm. I want to give it more than that, even if I don't mm -hmm. think it's good. Well, um, I want to as much respect for like filmmakers. I'm sure that the filmmakers themselves have. Yeah, because uh, there are plenty of things to praise about the movie. Not a lot of it's in the script. That's all. A lot of it is from the filmmaking standpoint, like cinematography, lighting, yeah. framing. Yeah, like all of that's excellent. And yeah, we like get the, the actual uh, things are happening in the script are shit. And that's yeah, what the have... story is. You have a lot of um, just inconsistent levels of force. Like, uh, he can shoot people twice with a pistol in the head and they still come at him because of the helmet things, but he hits them in the helmet with a nunchuck and they're, they're like down for the count. And it just feels weird. It's like, okay, yeah. uh, uh, sure. There's a guy he hits in the leg with a nunchuck who then is like on the floor going like, oh, no, ah, uh, ah, uh, just like, what? I mean, you could still... Get up, you pussy. <laughs> what are you doing? It's, uh... I guess propulsion and force are all plot dependent. It depends on what they need at the time. It's never been, and th that's not a John Wick four thing. That's a two three four thing. A lot of this is two three four things. Um, and yeah, and they arrive 
in waves. They don't arrive together. Because uh, yes, it makes once, you wonder, uh, yeah. like, if Kane came in to fight him at the same time those guys did, would he wait back? Would he? F I, I don't even know anymore. Like, he should just be dead. So you never. There's never an amount of people or a particular person that comes in. You think, oh shit, this this matters. You're just like, no. It's gonna be the same scene again and again and again. Even with uh, mini bosses of any kind. Yep. Once uh, once John Wick finishes one group, you could bet another group is just they're just right there. They're coming in right then, like they were waiting for a cue, like it was a movie. Mm. Like, oh, he's done with this one. Keanu's done with these guys. Now you guys come in. Um. So yeah, Kane introduces himself, which is an interesting plan considering you're exclusively there to kill John. And uh, I was thinking to myself, did um, did Koji not warn John about Kane? Uh, not sure. I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. I, I'd have to yeah. recheck, oh. but that's a kind of a fuck but up. It seems to as like oh, an introduction right. between the two. Well, not an introduction, but like the first time they've aware, like the first time that John is aware of uh him. Because yeah, the film. it's the kind of thing like they're considered really old friends, Kane and Koji, and Koji and John are, and Kane and John are. So, you know. <laughs> it's like, don't you think you should be like? Maybe by the way, Kane is here. know that everyone's friends with each other. It's like a secret kind of stuff. Like they just don't. <laughs> oh, know. you know him too. Like, oh, oh so... you know him. Oh my gosh, yeah, I can't believe it. Oh man, wow. Yeah, he seems to be surprised about it. They they have like an introduction, um, and then uh, I, I think they, they pretty much just go like John, and he's like Kane, and then it's just boom, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, the 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 thing that strikes you immediately is that. It's kind of funny after Resident Evil 4 as well, because there's a certain enemy in that game where you can essentially just walk around them the whole time as long as you stay below a threshold of noise. If you crouch after sprinting around, they might try and chase you, but then they might have no idea where you are. The reason I bring this up is that Kane being blind, you have an enormous advantage. Uh, because he has no clue where you are if you stand still and don't do anything. And uh, that's displayed quite heavily in this but john doesn't really take advantage of it other than one time one and it's single way later time in the, in the scene when it should be like the central mechanic that surrounds those yeah. fights with him um i mean there should really be fights because you just shoot him in the head but they're at oh wait how come so like the blind guy he like uses sound of course to try and see where everyone is like wouldn't his wouldn't his hearing be absolutely shot after all of those all that gunfire going off like especially if you're in a if you're in a room like a kitchen and you got all these pistols rounds going off and you're supposed to be hearing for people like you shouldn't be able to hear a damn thing after all those gunshots your ears will be ringing like crazy it would be pretty difficult to focus yeah <laughs> but, but this is this is the movies and guns aren't loud they're well, loud enough for funny. people like notice but they're not actually loud that would sort of just get piled on to the rest of the issues, I would say. Like, it's because, yeah. like, uh, I would probably be able to forgive any one of these things. But, like, when they're all together, it's just like, wait, what did you do well? Because something that really pissed me off is uh, Kane shoots at John. John lifts up his jacket. Boom, 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 boom. And then they go both go behind walls. And you, you're thinking every move counts. What does John do? Well, he sits down on a bunch of broken glass and then fiddles with a guy's hand and the pistol that guy's holding and then makes sure that it's ready to shoot. I was just like, wow, you just made a shit ton of sound. Enough that Kane would know exactly where you are, but he doesn't capitalize on it. Just... He never throws anything nope. to distract Kane, which is like the number one thing that the yes. obvious thing that comes to your mind to the mm -hmm. point where it's kind of weird that he doesn't do it. It's just obvious. It's, like, it's obvious. That's what you do. If someone can only hear you, you throw something across the room so it makes a sound somewhere. Like, come on. And, uh, go back to talking about dialogue again. Kane says, you should have stayed out for all our sakes. And John says, I tried. And he says, did you? And that's it. They don't talk about <laughs> that not. ever again. Nope. I am so fucking sad about that. I was like, ooh, that could be interesting. Tell Kane what happened. Tell Kane why this all went down the way that it did, and maybe that will actually convince him to go against the table instead. Does he know your mm -hmm. story? Does he know anything about what's happening? No, we don't talk about it. That is it. That's all they ever say about it. Fucking lame. Even though it's something that, yeah, like he's, Kane is judging him for. Yeah. It's like a decision he made. 
why didn't John Wick say they killed my dog? And then he, he, Kane would have been like, they killed his dog. Oh, wait, it was they took <laughs> his dog. That was the joke in South Park. Wait, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was like, they took his dog. They took our gerbs? They Is that what you're referencing? Our our yeah, I was about to say. No, you mean no, you took no, our gerbs? No, oh, you guys don't have the deep South Park lore. There was no. an episode where they were making fun of WWE. And there was this guy, he was like a proper wrestling teacher. And like, he, he thought like, like the kids wanted to do wrestling, but they didn't realize right. that like WWE is not like the sport of wrestling. And then the wrestling guy shows up at their thing and he starts talking about how uh, they took his job and all the rednecks like they took his job. And then, and then he starts talking <laughs> about how animal control came and took his dog. And they're like, oh. they took his dog. They took his dog. <laughs> took right. his the dog. Well, the best part yeah, is, is when it devolves into noises like, they broke his jaw as well. They broke his jaw. <laughs> and then there was actually like a rooster that just did a cockadoodle. <laughs> so That's right, me. yeah. It, but it is it is the best when it starts to deteriorate. So like, dark and dark. Dark and dark. <laughs> a fun South Park they detour. Took my job. On yeah, with so the... I guess you guys aren't acquainted with that that episode. Oh, I don't no, remember no. it more than the they took our jobs. That that one's been enveloped since Rings of Power as well. Oh, cool. The meme's been used for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the elves took our gerb. So as if we've not already highlighted enough of these like annoying issues and not taking advantage of a man, two of the greatest assassins, and one of them being blind, and the other one could totally use that to his advantage. Um, there's this moment where John's hiding behind that same like pane of glass, and he sees that uh, Kane is coming around, and he he slaps his cane on like part of the the thing to to you know let him know where where physical objects are. John sees that there is a gap of I want to say like four inches between the two panes of glass that John can clearly look through, we can see Kane through it, and he, instead of aiming his gun through that, which he could do silently, and shoot Kane in the head, done, he instead gets out, I think he has a knife, or sword, or something, and he, he goes to attack Kane, and he, like, targets Kane's cane. He doesn't it's go for... Really... It's a shitty, shitty thing when you see it in movies when these people are in a fight with melee weapons and you could just tell they're aiming for the other person's melee weapon. When you want, you aim for the person, right? You're trying to, you're trying to yeah. hit the other person. Like he you're had, not trying to he hit the their weapon. the perfect shot too. His head was right there. And he's just like, I'll get you with the, the cane. By the way, it's still a cane right now. He can only hit you with it physically. It's, it, he can unsheath it and it's like a sword. But right now it's not even a huge threat, if you know what I mean. Like he could hug it and stab him in the face like it, it wouldn't but yeah never mind <laughs> it's like that's what he does you go for kane's cane um so yeah then uh they both back off and kane's clearly getting frustrated i think he like sighs and so then he just runs out with his sword drawn uh after saying like let's end this and then he's just slowly walking around because he can't see john and i was just like wow <laughs> so if john was actually there ready to shoot him, Kane would just be dead. Like, he he's out of bullets, by the way, Kane. John isn't. And uh, we it's find out that that's very true, because Kane steps on a, a, a rifle he, he, he notices on the floor, slowly goes to pick it up, but the sound of him doing that alerts John. John turns around the corner, aims at him, shoot, shoot, shoot. Unfortunately, the greatest assassin on Earth... Couldn't tell there was a fucking display case between him and Kane, and so that tanked all the bullets. We could tell at the low quality Indian cinema that we <laughs> flew to, we were able to tell that there was clearly glass and a display case in between it. It's so annoying because it's like, are you telling me that had Kane bumped into a rifle that was on the floor that wasn't like exactly there, if it was just like in any other direction slightly, John would have had the kill shot and it would be over? Really? I guess. So fucking lame. Because what I because if this fight was like actually happening, John would just shoot the blind guy in the head. He'd probably feel a little bad about it. But <laughs> that's just what would happen. It's just mean to put this blind guy in the middle of this fight like that. <laughs> it's annoying as well. John keeps <sighs> talking to him, and it's like, dude, that's the only information Kane can use to find you. Why are you doing that? <laughs> like, yeah, stop, stop talking. talking. Yeah. 
Oh. Well, yeah, anyway, um, they both, like, shoot the shit out of each other, but they both miss. They're both on the floor, and then John finally stops talking and stops moving and pretends that he's dead. And then Kane is like, are you dead? John? And uh, he takes a while to get close, and then John, because he's out of bullets, goes to move, and he moves a bit of glass because he's on top of loads of glass, and that's it. Kane starts shooting at him again. They both do their jacket thing. It's... Jacket shoot, jacket shoot, jacket shoot. It's, it's, you know, you know how it works. Nobody hurts anybody. Yeah. They're yeah, standing it's... basically right in front of each other, and they just shoot at their jackets. Yep. I could, I, I could forgive Kane because, well, you know, he's blind, but <laughs> John could he's probably do some bad. Kane's better. the only one canonically that it makes sense that never hits the target. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's actually blind. <laughs> At least he's blind. Everyone else isn't. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. I'd say that part is the only part that I found interesting of that fight. I was like, oh, you, you're actually using the elements to your advantage? Cool. And, and then it was over. I was like, okay. And okay. that never comes up again. Um, so, uh, they, they get on, like, they're right next to each other, and there's a, you have Kane's sword between them. They're doing, like, a standoffy thing, just like, and then he just goes, John. And then Keanu Reeves just goes, Kane. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to make of that. I was like, okay. Um, and then a shot is taken, and it's like just above Kane's head and hits a pane of glass behind him. And then another shot that's taken is just missing. It turns out it's Mr. Nobody. And he is shooting, Ooh, shooting at them. And uh, it's unclear exactly what the fuck's going on, but you'll eventually find out he's protecting John, like, like we said. Uh, not something you really have figured out yet. He he explains this very soon. Um, I don't know why he didn't kill Kane. I don't get it either. Um, yeah. th I just I feel like if if this is your special gun, it's a little lever action, break apart like stealthy gun, and it's just it's really not a hard shot at all actually. Um, and he's this crazy assassin guy. You think you'd just shoot the dude and be done with it? But also, this is just the, the movie. If we fully reset on, on his specific motives, and let's see if they match up. It's like, why would Mr. Nobody kill Kane? It's like, well, if you kill Kane, John's bounty's probably going to go up. Because Kane's one of the best assassins in the world. And that's just another person down for the count going after John Wick. And he wants the bounty to go up. It's like, cool. So that's, that's one reason. Why else would he want to do it? It's like, well, Kane is his competitor. If Kane kills John Wick, he doesn't get the bounty at all. Like, not only is it less of a bounty, but it's not a bounty he can even cash. That's just gone. That goes to Kane slash the That's high table. It's all gone. Like, hmm, okay. Anything else? It's like, maybe he doesn't want to kill him because he'll get in trouble with the table. It's like, how would the table know? Like, it's three of them in that room. He could shoot him and then just leave. Just do it. Yep, just shoot him and leave. So... Yep. He's only an obstacle to Mr. Nobody, and if he killed him, it would actually improve the odds of the bounty going up. So I actually have no clue why he didn't kill Kane in that moment. The only thing that know. you might be able to argue is that he actually did genuinely miss twice. I think that's what we're supposed to believe, but the problem is that's, in, that's just incredible. That is How incredible. How could you miss? He had you the perfect shot missing. and the target wasn't moving. Everybody is just fucking missing all the time and it is so so frustrating yeah <laughs> he has a rule against shooting blind people <laughs> kane ain't blind Honorable. nobody believes kane is blind in this movie okay nobody he, he, he maybe he is just legitimately lying to make himself seem like he's not as threatening <laughs> Oh, I'm just a blind man. I can't see where I'm going. I don't know what's happening. Don't shoot me. Ha -ha. Lord, no, nope. my cane isn't a sword. <laughs> why, wait, why would I say that? That's <laughs> why did I say that? that? Weird. Oh. I'm just a crazy old man who says crazy things. <laughs> Come closer, please. Go <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Wick's bounty does actually go up in this moment as well. It goes from whatever it was, I guess, 7 or 10 million. It goes up to 20 million. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a big, big old chungus. And then uh, we, we get, so, you know, what's going to happen to Kane and John after that separation? Well, we'll get John's side first. John runs out, in, just out of the building and into a forest filled with men who have guns, and they all start shooting at him, and of course they all miss. 
Yep, they all miss. They're all they're out there apparently waiting for him. They're just in the woods. I don't know. They yeah, were it's a really weird scene to be honest with you. It's just like here I am in the woods just, now. Oh, they're just out there in the woods looking for things to shoot. Looking for. <laughs> I'm pretty sure John is out here somewhere. <laughs> And sure oh, enough, yeah, they all shoot at him. They miss, of course. They all miss. None of them, none of the shots hit his head. But John is distracted because after the ones he's killed, he's like, ooh, they've got a badge. What does this badge mean? It must be the person they work for. I'll pocket this badge and figure it out later. But then, oh no, he hears a noise and two men are coming to kill him. All right, two men, two men with guns. And he's like, oh, he pulls up his gun, but he doesn't fire because a dog bites the nuts of one of them and the other oh, one's yeah. shot in the head. And so... This is the first of, I think, three or four instances Two in this movie shots. where a dog will bite someone's balls and they are paralyzed. There's nothing they can do at all. They don't even scream. <laughs> they just, they just done. I can confirm. You're just done. The dog gets on those <laughs> balls and you're just, you're just done. You're Absolutely done until over. the dog, until the dog is finished with you. You're just, that's just your life now. Um, and then we find out like Mister Nobody is still looking after him, and that's that's what just happened. And John's like, I don't know you. And the tracker guy goes, I know you. And he goes, huh, you a tracker? How much? And I guess that means John's already figured out that this guy is waiting to collect on the money at some point, because he says not enough, but mm -hmm. it's getting there. And so John right. looks at him weirdly, and they, they look at each other a bit weirdly. And then tracker man shoots, and you need to really picture this. You are John Wick. You are just across from the guy... He's vaguely aiming at you. You're not... I think he's aiming at... John's aiming at him. He raises the gun and shoots. Now, who he's shooting at is right behind John to the left. And so, he technically saved John's life. But is that something that goes through your head if you're John Wick when that happens in that moment? Or do you think, he's trying to kill me. I have to kill him. I probably should get my gun and shoot back. I'd have to imagine <laughs> that is the normal reaction. Like, how could John have known that he was actually aiming to shoot someone who was directly behind him just off the side? After he just established that the guy is likely going to kill him once the money's enough. You know what I mean? I was like, man, I feel like John yeah. Wick would have fucking automatically shot that guy in the head as a reflex after that happened. Mm -hmm. Your knee-jerk uh, knee kind of reaction. Yeah. Hey, kind of it's Gunn's like Walking Dead. In this line of work. You guys ever see the knee-jerk reaction Walking Dead scene? It's a famous death scene in uh, season no. like six or seven is uh i don't even know if i can say she's a fan made fave character chat will have to help me out on that one but it's a girl who really there's like this cop lady who everyone hates and and it's like this blonde character someone will remind me of her name in chat as i'm explaining this and i'll say it i promise but she hates cop lady there's like a peace that's established between two teams and cop lady's like leading them and this girl is getting delivered back to the good guy team but she wants to have, I think it's Beth. Is it Beth? It could be Beth. And she's like, oh, I hate cop lady. So when I say, you know, goodbye, bitch, like I'm going, I'm just going to throw one extra thing in there. I'm going to stab her in the shoulder with a scissors. Which, okay. as you guys can already imagine, is like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. No, <laughs> like, that sounds, sounds probably a bad idea. Mm. But she does. And the cop lady knee-jerk reaction un gets her gun out of the holster and immediately aims it up at Beth's head and shoots her at that close range and she is shocked by her own reaction doing that um, it is a crazy scene and I'll never forget it in my entire life I remember just being like what the fuck just happened <laughs> it is some, such a dumb death the thing about it is, guys, I remember when that first came out, I remember checking discussions about it, and people were like, that was intense, that was crazy, oh my god, what a fantastic ending yeah, to like, like that storyline. The Walking Dead seems to be one of those shows that, again, with the passage of time, people are like, oh man, damn, it might have never been. That, that was that terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then they all shot the cop, yeah. Or I think, is it Daryl that does it? I just remember being like, what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> like, <laughs> um... Walking Dead, check it out if you want to. I wouldn't recommend well, it. How many seasons are there now? 12? 7,000. Plus all the spin-offs? Because there's other spin-offs that have been yeah, going it, for years at this point, right? Was they say, like, Fear of the Walking Dead is up to 8 seasons or something. I was like, how and the fuck? I think fuck? there's another one. I think there's hmm. another spin-off. And I think that there's, like, a new one that's happening with uh, that Negan guy. Man. Because The Walking Dead is all AMC has left. Um... 
and uh and whatever that new show is with um with uh uh soul <laughs> bob odenkirk sounds that she might have uh, had the gun drawn already that would make it better but it was still hilarious <laughs> though to be fair why the fuck did she just stab it with the scissors what did she expect was gonna happen i don't know it's all over the place we don't need to be analyzing well, the walking dead will be here all day that, that she just be sure with getting stabbed in the shoulder with <laughs> oh, that's, that's dude that's the thing that's i wasn't gonna go into again. it but i remember talking about a that to a friend i was like imagine how beth thought that was gonna go i'll stab her and then she'll go ow ah fuck okay, you bitch, <laughs> like and then they you. leave <laughs> <laughs> like what did you think was gonna happen Oh, it's boy. that customary stab you in the scissors move you do to all the people you don't like when you just Oh yeah, leave them. I mean I do it to people I meet all the time. It's basically how we say hello. Mm -hmm. Stab in the shoulder with scissors. That's how you do it. Uh, so anyway, Tracker Man says, You need to take better care of yourself, John. We're in this together now. And that is him saying, I need you alive for as long as the bounty is going up to the point that I like it and then I'll happily kill you. Now, oh, so I'll kill you first. I, I don't understand. Like, this now. is John fucking Wick. Why isn't he killing this guy? This guy basically just said, I'm going to kill you eventually. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to kill you then. Yeah, John should be like, oh, he yeah, seems very like, capable. I don't want him around when my bounty or is or be like, high enough oh, for him. He should just say, thanks, bro. Uh, see you later. And then yeah. just stand there totally still while... Mr. Nobody start like turns around and kind of looks over his shoulder. He's like, "Yeah, see you, buddy." I just think <laughs> just it's amusing to me too because like Mr. Nobody couldn't even stop him because he'd be like, "Oh no, shit! I need to, no, I need you for the bounty." Fuck! I, I guess I could if I kill you. Exactly. This is like that. That conflict would be enough for John to just be like, "Boom, dead, bye." Mm -hmm. Anyway, now we're moving on. So that's that's John's portion of the story. What happened to Kane? Now you might be thinking to yourself, "Okay, so you're in the big glass-filled building and you got." John went, let's just say, to the left exit, okay? What did Kane do? Kane went out somewhere else, fought a whole bunch of dudes for, like, defending Osaka, and then he bumped into Koji. I'm just like, what the... How did you even, like, didn't you just go the direction John went? Why didn't you just go the direction John went? Especially because John was just outside the building where he got into another gunfight. You would have heard it. How did you end up in a completely different area of the Continental, fighting a bunch of people who have nothing to do with anything that you were just a part of? How did that even happen, logistically? And it's just like, well, fuck it. He ended up there. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Alright. Because, like, it's not like it was hard for him to tell where John would have ran off to in that room. You'd hear shit tons of glass noises. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, he's, he's bumped into Koji. Oh, he's like, oh, okay, fine. I guess that's what's happening now. And he says to Koji, tell me where John is, and you can leave. Which is kind of funny for the audience, because it's like, Koji doesn't know where John is. Yeah, he doesn't actually know. John's been fucking around. Yeah, John could be anywhere in the hotel, continental. I would it's, imagine. it's a big place. In fact, the person who has better knowledge on where John currently is than Koji is Kane. So... You <laughs> like, blast, yeah. I don't know, like, there's a lot to this. That I hate the dialogue. I'm just like, why does... Why do you think? What do you think Koji's going to say to you right now? He is moving through, you know, F block, and he's heading to the guess, the southeast courtesy. exit. He's just gonna ask him anyway. Just like, hey, buddy, come on. Which you is, know, you know, what? fine, here. whatever. I just, I just find it funny. Baller, come on. It, it's more than likely that he wouldn't be able to tell you anything, but you may as well ask the question. Fine, see what he says. And the guy says, "You know, I won't tell you." And it's like, because well, I, I, mean, I physically don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like because you don't know, or because because principally you cannot give it whatever. And uh, uh, Kane says, "You owe him nothing. He he doesn't even have a marker on you." And oh, I, I just, I, it, it's so oh. funny. I'm just like, hey, that's the markers. Cute. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. They remember that thing that that started <laughs> r recalling the mechanic that just drove this series into the fucking dirt. And then uh, uh, Koji says, you believe the only debts we have lie in markers. And I was just thinking to myself, like, well, no, I mean, he knows about regular debts. Like, you know, borrowing like £10 or somebody or whatever. It's funny. <laughs> um, and he says, come on, I don't want to do this. Uh, and then Koji just draws his sword anyway, and they begin the fight. And you kind of sit in there, we'll get more on this in a second, but you're kind of like, why are you guys fighting? What's the point? And it's like, well, because he, he doesn't want to give up John's location. It's like, well, but you don't even know what you, it is. Or, 
first off, you don't you don't have it, and two, you could lie pretty easily. You could be like, John told me he's going to be heading to um, I don't know, fucking literally anywhere. He's he's or why don't you just tell him? What is the truth? I don't actually know, because if I did know, it would be a liability, but he ain't gonna be staying here after what you guys have done. Yeah. yeah now, I want to get my daughter to a like fucking left. hospital, if you don't mind. It, yeah, he's got his daughter with him, the daughter is injured, and he could just play it and say, like, well, if you let us go, I'll tell you where he is. You know? I just, yeah, I, you know, yeah, if she's if, hurt, if... I gotta get her to a hospital, and then just lie about where he is. Or also just say, like, I, I legitimately don't know. It's a big play. Just explain to him the way that this movie doesn't make sense. And be like, you <laughs> met him last. I don't know where he is. He probably left. But, well, and you can also tell a convincing lie of, like, I told him that there was plenty he could restock for armor and ammo and transport in the southeast armory. So he's going to be heading there. And then just toss him a random key from your pocket and be like, that's the key to the... <laughs> that's the key the, to the armory, yeah. yeah. That's the key to the armory. And then, and then just gonna the get there. And then you frozen past him because he's blind. He's like, did it, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm blind, you motherfucker. Well, it is, Why right did you there. do that? Like, it's right there. Well, you go find it. That's the only key we got. Are you throwing him the whole key ring? <laughs> but no, uh, Koji just immediately like, let's fight. And it's like, all right, I guess the film's desperate to have these two fucking legends fight each other. Here we go. And they start fighting and uh, l legit, uh, uh, Kane gets the one up on Koji by doing a Dark Souls roll around him and then stabbing him like before he can turn kind around. Kind of embarrassing, actually. It, it's it takes so weird. a long time for Koji to react to it. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It just feels weird that he, like, loses so badly to a blind man that's rolling around. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then they have they some... They didn't have to have him be blind. That was a choice they made. Well, then we wouldn't have this amazing dialogue. You ready? Very Here we amazing. go. Even a blind man can see you've lost. You don't need Whoa. eyes to see the right path. Oh. It's like the... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. Um, okay. Um... And then, yeah, he says, just take care of your daughter. And then he's like, nah, and keeps fighting until he dies. And you see, this is the scene where the if you went to the director, would be like, yeah, this is like, this is meant to be funny. This is meant to be like goofy and silly. This isn't meant to be like the daughter, a dramatic moment or anything. Daughter's holding him in her arms as he literally fucking passes in front of her and she's crying. And, uh... Kane is looking on because he's depressed as fuck that he had to kill an old friend. Don't tell me this is supposed to be funny and stupid that and it's like just a nonsense. That's right. Thing. It's, it's yeah. The, 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 if you told the writers, yeah, I really enjoyed that dumb fun there when this character died and it was meant to be sad. You think that the guy who made the film would just be like, yeah, that's that's what I was going for. I <laughs> figured that would get a few laughs. The Even a blind yeah. man can see this is a somber moment. Yes, <laughs> and and when and when everybody in the cinema laughed, the director smiled, and then he did like, yes, got it, nailed it. I did it. <laughs> I'm the tone master. One did catch me saying Kane was looking on. Wait for that. Oh, oh, they got it. Uh, um, I get it because he can't see. Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> That's how good of an actor he is. Uh, so, yeah, he's like, well, weren't you the one to see him last? It's like, oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Oof, I didn't I'm so it again. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, High five. I have, uh, no, the other one. The other five. Uh, what are you blind? Oh, damn it. Uh. So. Uh, wait, wait. Why didn't they do the thing where John had to fight Kane, like, in the dark? Where that would have like, been a thing. Oh, Ooh, cool. where, they, where they fight, um, where Kane, like, takes out the lights or something, or he cuts the power to the building. Uh, you know, something to be, you know, to have it be where they're kind of on equal footing. So that would have been a thing. Yeah, believe it a lot more, um, in a, you know that they could kind of go toe to toe, and it's and not just John Wick shooting a blind man in the head. But <laughs> I mean, that would have been an idea. That would have been cool. You could even have had, uh, you know, we don't at least for a portion of the fight we see pitch black as well, but then. You know, one of them makes a you move. You just hear the sound You hear a swipe, and then the clash of the swords makes like a little bit of a spark, maybe, and there's some light you can see briefly. Something like that. Yeah, They're John could be like, I can't fight you, Kane. You know, you, you, you're blind, you can't even see. And then, like, the lights go out. And it's yeah. like, I guess we're now we're, now we're equal. Now we're that would have been some fun to be had. Oh, well. That would have been cool. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. 
So, Pain knowing to electric boogaloo. the scene is actually meant to be taken seriously, and that Koji is a character that's just had a start, middle, end, I guess, I'd like to announce he's a fucking moron. Uh... And it sucks, because I kind of liked him right up until this scene. Uh, mm -hmm. Not even for much of a meaningful thing. I was just like, I, I like the actor. I like the idea of a guy putting some stuff on the line to help out John, and that he's just committed to it, and that, you know, there's something to the whole, like, putting friendship above these crazy, crazy rules, especially if he knows the grander context, which he probably does, because he's an old friend of John's, and they've been talking. So there's, there's something I can draw out of it. But then you make him do this. Literally sacrifice himself and caring for his dying, theoretically, daughter. At least very, very wounded. I'm not going to say that she's I think dying. she really is his daughter. Um, oh, sorry. I meant the, the dying, the, the wound. Whatever. Oh, Words are okay, too complicated okay. these days. Um, and, well, yeah, John so, couldn't explain to Koji what was happening because it would over-exceed his allotted dialogue budget. <laughs> he's allowed, like, three <laughs> syllables at a time. <laughs> like, well, he, has to, he has to think about how he's going to explain it. It's like, dog... Revenge betray. <laughs> like, a oh, cute okay, dog I dead. What you mean? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So basically, Koji has every single reason to not like fuck all of this up, and he fucks all of it up. And why? I don't even know. Um, the most obvious yeah, thing is to lie, know. but I don't know why he didn't even pull the card of, dude. Why do you think I know where he is right now? <laughs> like, why? I don't. You were just fighting him. I assume. Like, he's been shooting people. He's all over the. I don't know. They just wanted the fight scene to happen, and they couldn't really think of a good reason. Or, or maybe they thought that they had one. Maybe they thought it was like, ah, uh, see, he's not going to give his friend up because he values friendship and, like, honor above all. But the problem was that the scenario that was set up didn't put him in it. Because the, the obvious way to do it is John Wick is, like, through you. I have to go through. I need to go in that direction, and you're in the way, and you're not going to move out of the way. Like that's that's the way to do it. You could have had it. That's that like the lobby right at the beginning. You you could have had it so that as sound as as lame as this sounds, like John and and Koji have had a back and forth in their fucking phones, and that he's like, "Give me your phone." He's like, "No." He's like, "Well, yeah, I'm exactly. gonna have to kill you to get you, the phone." Because that, because that's what you have to do. Is you need to you need to do the the like unstoppable force meets an immovable object setup, right? Where it's like he like Kane is the unstoppable when, force. Koji's the immovable object. He will not move. He will stay here and, and defend. Like, even, even if it means that he's, you know, not going to be able to help his daughter. Because, like, that honor is, like, more important than all, yeah, uh, and, like, and, everything. And instead, they've written it so that it comes across as, like, did Koji want to die? Was he just done? <laughs> like, was he bored? He just was like, fuck <laughs> It almost this shit. seems like he is resigned to it, which is odd. Because uh, there's a difference between, like, accepting it as a possibility and being resigned to it, you know? They're, like, two different things. Yeah. Um, and what a and, shame, because uh, Kane I... himself, he's like, please stop fighting me, please live, please be yeah. with your daughter. Which is kind of like, I like that as a thing for him. Yeah, it helps out uh, Kane a little bit, it just ruins Koji, this whole thing. Yeah, which is a shame, because I liked him. You, you fucking, like, it's, it's hard not to say, it's like, dude, you just abandoned your daughter for no reason at all. And yeah, she's wounded, she needs no you, like, what are you doing? There is actually no reason here. Um... You didn't need to do this. In fact, you, you actually kind of achieved nothing by doing this. Oh, yeah. Nothing changes at all. And, you know, live to fight another day, right? Like, could have just yeah, exactly. told, <laughs> told Kane anything. I actually think Kane would have been amenable to the whole, like, I don't know where he is, man. Uh, it, he probably is. Well, yeah. fair enough. And then they just part, they just go different ways. Yeah. <laughs> like, Kane's yeah, just like, it's like, I don't, well, why didn't, he should have just said Oscar. something like, I if think you want a cool they, line, he could have just said, like, well, follow the gunshots or something like that. They just wanted the fight there on the bridge surrounded by the water and, like, the lily pads and the, uh, and the trees, the, the, it's cherry blossoms, right? The, in the background. Like, that's what they wanted. Mm. Oh, yeah. They wanted the be doing the show down there. It's, but, the, but, hey, this is a good example of, like, I guess what we were talking about in terms of, like, the broad problem with this film. It's totally fine to want to have those moments. Like, I like stuff like that. Like, I, I like that kind of imagery, and I, I like that as a setup, but there is work to be done to actually get there, and you can do it, and it just makes the film better. Like, it just makes it strictly better, and you can still have your cool action scene, but you can have a scenario that's more properly established, um, better supported by the material, and, and it just makes for it being more potent instead of a situation like this, where you're just kind of perplexed by, like, the whole arrangement. What's interesting is I've seen uh, two, what I assume, are counter-arguments to this, and I feel like these are pieces of information that have now made me think it's all even worse. So, 
Someone said, well, Archer. surely his life is forfeit anyway because of everything with the Continental, the High Table, that, like, yeah, he's dying here, but, like, he was only ever going to die anyway because he'll send people to come get him. Put a pin in that a second. The other point was, um, isn't it better that he dies here so that they can never use his daughter, like, as leverage against him? Is that the idea there, that it's like a parallel with Cain? And I was just thinking to myself, like, fuck. So... That's true, they are going to be hunted, probably, by the High Table now, and his daughter was the concierge, so he's just left her alone against that. Yeah, like, mm. he's going to have connections and network and probably friends that he could have helped her with, but no, fuck it, I'm yeah, dead, bye, bitch. Secondly, stuff. if he believes that people will use her as leverage against him, and thus I will just die, it's like, well, then they're just going to fucking do things to her, they might just kill her. She betrayed the High Table, she was a concierge. Do you know what just happened well, yeah. to the last concierge of the fucking New York? Hello? Oh. Like, I... Man, Koji, you didn't think about this at all, did you? He, he, he wanted <laughs> to let you go, and you were like, no, honor. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. Honorable death, question mark. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, apparently. It was definitely a death. Um. So then John's sitting on... What looks like public transport, just a train, and then yeah. she walks in and sits like near him. Uh, the, the daughter, just like, wait, what? <laughs> just chilling. Like, did they just happen to get on the same train at the same time? It's like, okay, was she following him? I don't see how, because they would have been in different. Um, okay, it's fine. And she basically just says, "My dad's dead because of you, so you got to kill him." Which is true. The, the guy, who, who, yeah, but that's the last it'll get addressed in this film, pretty much. Um. And what did she say again? She, he needs either kill you kill Kane. Kane or I will, basically. Well, I mean, he didn't. To spoil. <laughs> yeah. He didn't do that. Well, and so even Kane I said to her, I'll be better. waiting for when you return. That's another thing. Like, the idea that the daughter will be safe if uh, Koji was to, like, die. It's like, what do you think the daughter's going to do? No. She'll get revenge. She's an assassin. Yeah. It's just going to be. Stop leaving happens. people alive to get revenge. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing was because John... Well, it wasn't really. John Wick's story was resolved, and then that guy in two came along with his bullshit. <laughs> but hey, it all traces back to that revenge, right? Yeah. Koji told John it's, to um, go to that station? Is that true? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think I think so. So is it, is yes. it not public transport? Uh, I, I think it is still. There were I'm pretty sure there's people, people getting out of there. Off. Yeah, right, it's, but then everybody conveniently clears out of the train so that they can have their conversation on an empty train in Osaka. I don't know how often I was about to say, yeah. It's um, kind of funny, but it's also but, just the hey. fact that John gets on. He doesn't look like he's waiting for anybody. So she got no, there I, at exactly the same time as him. It's just like, damn. Yeah, I think so. And also, it, this is worth emphasizing, like Mola said, the whole, you know, wherever you go, John Wick, devastation you leave in your wake, that, that never... Why would you forego that as something that John Wick has to try and grapple with meaningfully? Of like, what am I actually doing here? Like, all I'm doing is fighting back against something that I might not be able to defeat, and all it's leading to is the destruction of everybody that I care about. Like, that's not something that is meaningfully explored. Um, it's set up, but it's it doesn't go anywhere. Isn't that just a huge missed opportunity? Yes. Like oh, for, that's all it for, is. For, like in particularly, maybe if you really enjoyed the film, like don't. Do, don't you agree that, like, that would be something that would be worthwhile to do, that it certainly couldn't hurt this film? It might give, God forbid, us to learn a little bit something about John Wick, our protagonist. That's Wouldn't another that thing crazy? that sucks about this, is that his character is so fucking thin at this point. It's funny, you might be like, do you he's think he's... more time? And they're not adding anything. Yeah, I was, I was, it's like, in the first movie, it's like, would you think he's thin in that? It's like, not really. We got a, a lot, like, for the time we had with him, we got to know a decent chunk. But now we've had four movies and nothing's changed. It's the exact same character yeah, like, the whole time. John Wick was never, like, hugely multifaceted, but no. he was definitely coherent. And, like, there was something to... Because, I mean, it's, it's like everybody says, it's just a dog. And, like, even he's there to come in and say, it's actually not just about the dog. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course not. Because even if it was the dog, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, you know. But, like, when you add on what it meant to him because it was the gift that was left for him by his wife and it was sort of, like, representative of, of like, um, the life that he had managed to acquire that it, the, the son took from him, that's something. But we haven't added anything in the ensuing, like, uh, in the ensuing films. 
but but we're like we're getting so far removed from what happened in john wick one that it feels like awkward to even appeal to anything that happened in that film to say anything about where he's at right now mm. logically you know majority like how much does <clears throat> the fact that he his dog got killed by this guy that he at this point killed in the timeline what probably like months or years ago at this point how much does that factor into anything here and and that film, you you have like the opening twenty minutes to fully like foundationally set his character. Then you get the big uh, him and villain man talking to each other before he gets like almost killed. But Willem Dafoe saves him. You get like the, their discussion about the events and John just committing like fuck you, I'm back, and it's because of that bullshit with my dog basically. And at the end of the film, it's like it actually came to this. You killed everything. You stole all my money. I'm gonna fucking kill you. It's like I'm gonna fucking kill you, and, and then it's over. And that's it's yeah. it was it was it just that was it it was done. Mm -hmm. And someone just like summarized it's like had wife wife died had dog dog died had gun shoot gun, and then it's like okay so that's film one. What have we got to add on to that with film two three four? It's like shoot gun had house shoot gun lost house no just shoot gun <laughs> that's it no he lost the house okay that's what you took from me. I was about Killed to say does even I don't me. think he cares <laughs> had marker. No. Yeah. <laughs> shoot kill that ass for me shoot gun Again and yeah again. that's that's what he does so uh I winston meets up with hobo king like hey hobo king how you doing are you all right and uh he says i want to speak to john and hobo king says you shot him off a roof and then he's like he yeah well the table has led made the marquee go nuts and uh we need to sort that out and so, oh, in case you cared, the... <laughs> there was an implication at the end of John Wick 3 that Winston had betrayed him, and that that was going to be a yeah. big old thing for this film. Literally, yeah. in this film, they're like, nah. No. They draw it, it's I... weird. It legitimately weird. I thought Winston would be the, the ultimate, like, big bad. Uh, that Which would have been, like. been a cool idea, honestly. That's interesting that Winston, who has kind of persistently in the film has been somebody that he can lean on, is uh betrayed him like you know, the, what's he gonna do now there was a limit to how much he would allow john to cost him sort of thing well it's a more meaningful betrayal than anything that could be said for like the guy in two who we didn't know because winston actually has history with john wick that we know yeah and understand and you can't pull so, the card of I, well winston didn't kill him winston didn't even try to kill him right and it's like no what happened uh, to him would have killed uh, a normal person <laughs> like if, yeah. as far as anyone's concerned winston did indeed attempt to murder him like <laughs> that's what happened and you should probably have a little bit of a grudge about that. Well, I thought yeah, that's not cool, bro. Remember at the end of the first film when he's like, yeah, but but like saying it about getting revenge. Uh -huh. I thought that was going to be for Winston, but then it wasn't. It was it ended up being for Bill Sarsgaard. New character like, who nobody knows anything about. The Marquis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, no. Speaking of which, we got a scene with him now. Yay. <laughs> oh, you the scene with the knife. Yeah. It's, well, it's one moment before that that I find particularly funny. Oh, you have right. um, Mr. Krabs is like, I fail to see how laying waste to continentals. You mean, you mean Cortex. No, oh, Mr. Krabs. He's also Cortex. He's also a lot of people, but Mr. Krabs Mr. is the funniest. Mr. Cortex. <laughs> um, Dr. I, Cortex, I think you mean. Says, I fail to see how laying waste to continentals gets you to John Wick. Which is a really point. great point. That's a good <laughs> what, point. Yeah. What an How excellent they allow point him to do that. Yeah, why he would he, he's let not him even do that? He's not even got an hourglass in this scene, and he's saying he's spitting truth. So you know that wow. the hourglass <laughs> is just like maybe holding him back at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that's true grit. You don't even know my true power. And uh, because the dialogue is just so excellent, uh, Bill Skarsgård says this campaign is not about killing John Wick; it's to kill the idea of John Wick. <laughs> idea I must, okay and he says i must destroy everything that idea touches <laughs> oh, well, but, but we're job. talking about it sir <laughs> yeah he what does that gun. even fucking mean <laughs> like how, do, how does that translate into an actual plan <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna destroy everything so people forget about john wick no, but sir if you, if you if you if you if you go around and kill everything people are gonna remember that you killed everything because of john wick <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a steel man. The idea of John Wick is the notion that you can defy the high table or the rules, because the second that people start to realize that they can defy the rules and the high table, then the institution collapses. Everything breaks down the moment that any individual, like, assassin 
realizes that they can actually go against the high table or that if they work together to take down the high table, they can actually succeed. How does so destroying we need to buildings the idea. have anything to do with that? I, oh, I, I'm, I'm steel manning, all right? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that destroying steel man better. Do <laughs> Give me more. Do, do better. I think that it, no, what, what I'm saying is I think that's what they were going for. If they wanted anything more than that, I don't know what I'd be appealing to because I don't think it makes much sense at all. But I get the impression in terms of like a thematic through line that they seem to be building in this film that that's kind of what was there. So this is, is why I said, defiance. what the fuck does that even mean? Because the reason this conversation starts is him referencing the destruction of Continentals. And then his response is to destroy the idea that is anything that's touched by the idea of John Wick. In this case, if we want to translate it as defiance of the high table, it's like, yeah, so you get rid of the people defying it, right? Like Winston? It's like, no. No. Oh, okay. Well, out of, out of course, <laughs> there is jumping the gun. The, the characters essentially win the film by following the rules. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And the, the only reason them. anything well, the only reason anything went wrong for John Wick was because he didn't follow the rules, and then he used the rules to win. So, yeah, we'll talk about that really when we get work. there because I'm not even sure. Yeah, we will. What it counts as at the end, but uh, yeah, the, this doesn't like the plan is not to kill John Wick; it's to kill the idea. It's like no, the plan is definitely to kill John Wick. That's like that's, uh, of that's, course, yeah, that's the number one plan. Uh, yes, uh, the fact that he keeps raising the bounty and, and setting yes. these crazy prices <laughs> to get him killed. He wants, and then of course everything that happens at the end too. He doesn't, like, yeah, sure, the idea of John Wick is one thing, but like, first and foremost, you want to get rid of the guy who was an agent in the world who could hurt you. You know, well, the, like, the, destroying everything it touches is like we should probably get rid of it then, <laughs> like because that'll cut out the many things yeah, we have to destroy. But it's the joke we've already been going over, like. What if he walks into your house? Do you blow that up? Like, what does it even mean at this point? <laughs> yes, no compromises. Um, yeah, and then uh, Clancy Brown says the bloodshed in Osaka wasn't necessary. And his response is the bloodshed was the point. Uh, then why did the Marquis guys, like, go in with even the pretense of, of like, doing an investigation without fighting people? Also, well, some people mentioned it, and I wanted to did... keep it until this point. Was was the idea that they were going to kill everyone. It, 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 there was never anything else to it. Because if so, that's insane. That is and insane. Why would, the high table, why would the high table allow the Marquis to do that? Why would they well, be yeah. allowed to do something like that? Yeah, how would yeah, they know we need that to John Wick was there? I was about to say, we need to remember. They go, so Kane says, I reckon he might be hanging out with Koji, who's in the Osaka Continental, because they were old friends. It's like, okay, go kill everyone pretext. there. Exactly. <laughs> the only pretext is Kane has a hunch. That which, one that's person just, might help him. It's so beyond. I don't even know where to begin. Well, I, I, <laughs> which, yeah. by the way, I mean, would be amazing revenge for um, Kane to be like, oh, I gotta work for these guys and I really don't want to and they're basically coercing mm -hmm. me. Yo, what if I just tell him how they would actually do this? Wouldn't it be funny if I told him that John Wick was at the uh, Osaka Hotel and they just, like, I tricked them into destroying all of their own hotels? <laughs> yeah. Kane's like, like the, pretty sure the, John the, is hiding at the Disney HQ. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. This, yeah, because after the uh, to uh, the the continental in Japan, the high table should have been like, "You did what to the hotel? <laughs> you started shooting it up? Why?" Well, we thought he might have John Wake there, but did you see him? Uh, eventually, no. someone did. Eventually, I think. <laughs> someone did eventually. <laughs> kind of killed every person who saw him, but you know. Like, what do you, you mean? How, how did you survive the famous Osaka archers? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know how oh, we like, shot with them with our guns. <laughs> with like John Wick universe, nobody uses rifles. Nobody really uses vehicles either. What if one guy, like, I don't know, they had like a little bird or something, yeah. like some kind of helicopter, like an attack helicopter of some sort, and they use that? How could any like institution even stop them with that? We never see anybody use like. Do we ever see anybody use like grenades or, or no. RPGs or like any think... sort of explosives? Uh, C4? I don't think oh, ever. John Wick. I think he uses C4 in the first film to block yeah. some cars. Mm. There's at least one. Oh, and he also uses a sniper rifle in that scene too, because John Wick one is better than all the other ones. Whoa. They actually it would be really the funny if he had this disposal. You, it'd be really funny if you had like one like in a new John Wick, like this one guy. You, we need you to kill John Wick. It's like, okay, uh, do we have tanks or like, uh, like? Armored cars or anything? Do you have like RPGs? Yeah, you have armored cars. Can I have like an armored car, like anything? And I was like, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. 
I don't mm -hmm. know why none of the other people ever thought about that. <laughs> well, we, we talk about all the time. There's so many assassinate. That's another thing. It's like, it's assassination world. Everybody just has a suit and a pistol. Yeah, yeah nobody has It's like, what do you mean, Mola? There's a girl with a bow and arrow. Like, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, but she had to give up a suit for it. Because <laughs> uh, it's funny as well. You were just talking about like that theoretical conversation about telling them the report of what happened at Osaka, which, oh, like I said, um, I just, Clancy Brown I, disapproves I of it. Wait, you want to? I've just got a meme. I've got a meme. You know how, like in in Winter Soldier, that scene where like Captain America charges towards uh, the minigun with his like sh uh, shield and all the bullets deflect. I could easily just imagine if somebody had a minigun in John Wick, if John Wick just held up his suit and ran towards it and all of the bullets were like reflecting off of oh his God. suit. Yeah, like Wonder Woman with her shield. Yeah. <laughs> just charging. How it goes. Um, he turns around and reflects his suit and then it shoots the bullets at some other guy. <laughs> you'd have to, you'd have to time the parry, okay? Him. You have to time it's the time parry. You have to parry. lift up the suit right as the bullet strikes. That's how you get the parry. That's right. Um... Yeah, so uh, uh, Clancy Brown's surprised by the choice, right? Meaning the high table would be two. So if what Bell was saying could actually actually happen, they see the report, they're like, holy fuck, what did you do to Osaka? It would just be like, wait, do, it's not as bad as what we did to New York. They'd be like, what did you do to yeah, New, New York? York? What did you do to New York? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nothing. <laughs> well, did you change your management or what? Did you I, sell it? I do love the idea that, yeah, like, Marquis... Yeah, management for nothing. Marquis, you have full power, go ahead. And the first thing he does is nuke one of the Continentals. They're like, what the- that's not what we <laughs> meant by full <laughs> who power! Who told you to blow up New York? Who told you that? It's like, well, <laughs> you know, that that who told you we that? thought you'd be a little more clever. <laughs> here's, here's, a big old, here's a big old problem that you have. Like, if you just go into Continentals, the apparent, like, safe haven locations in the John Wick world, and just keep having these crazy gunfights in them, doesn't that destroy people's trust in the idea of the yes. Continental? If They'll anything, saying, they're not wow, destroying John the Wick idea of right. John Wick. Yeah, the whole point is that the Continental is meant to be neutral ground. You can't just go in and start fighting people. Yeah, also just... <laughs> Unless they just randomly like, announce, oh, you're deconsecrated, what? bitch. Yeah, I, but they realize, how like, oh, know. one guy goes haywire, and we, we just all get evacuated and don't have a thing to go to anymore. Wow, mm -hmm. that's kind of shit. Well, yeah, think of all yeah, the, damn, the standing man. contracts with all the people there who, like, use yeah. this place and have paid for the- you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, well, fuck all of you. It's no wonder that the hobo assassins just do their own thing. <laughs> the, the hobo assassins have got it figured out. You might but, as but well the hobo be assassins involved. suck, too. Oh, that's fine. Uh, didn't they- oh, yeah, because remember they got their asses kicked by, by the sushi uh, those guys. Sushi, sushi assassins. No, the sushi Oh, assassins. yeah, they worked <laughs> at the sushi <laughs> store. That's right, the, the sushi store guy. And then, yeah. um... I, I I guess Lawrence Fishburne is is over getting chopped up because that was a lady who ordered that, but she's not part oh of the story. Oh my god! So yeah. It's, oh it's just right, over that the happened. Fact that the high table lady or whatever the adjudicator got him chopped up seven That's true. times. True. Yeah, I remember. Because right. these films forget their own. I remember more about John Wick than the writers might. Man, that know. part was fucking stupid as well. Well, remember how they very specifically specified that it was going to be seven chops, and I think you figured it was like six. <laughs> like, they actually forgot to throw one in. I remember it being the people interpreted, there's like one slash she does that looks like it could be ah, a right, double, yeah. or whoever does it. Um, okay, yeah. But it, it's 50-50 on that, I, I'd have to look at it again. Um, <clears throat> but we're past that, we don't care that he got shot. Nobody up. remembers that, I didn't even fucking remember it, I remember the stories, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I remember... <laughs> Um, I remember. So, we cut, yeah, we got uh, Mr. Nobody's meeting with the Marquis, and uh, the conversation's pretty straightforward at first. He's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm a guy who can locate him. And he's like, how do you locate him? And he's like, if you pay me, I can tell you. He says, how much? He says, 25 million plus matching contribution to my 401k. And uh, he says, nah. We found him once, we can do it again. And then he says, before or after he kills you? And, uh, the Marquis then goes, I like you. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> All right. Then he says, but we'll do it for 20 million. And then he goes, 23. And then uh, Marquis's like, ego, Mr. Nobody. And he goes, you can afford it. I'm just sort of, I'm just waiting for anything to happen. You know, I'm just like, I don't really care how much you're haggling <laughs> over literal millions. Um, and then something does happen. The Marquis stabs Mr. Nobody's hand through a table. 
Um, which is, you know, aggressive to do in the middle of negotiating your millions of dollars. Yeah. And he says, what the fuck is this? It's the kind of thing, um, I don't even like the movement of it. If he shakes his hand, and then he, like, brings it up, slams it on the table, draws the knife out, and then stabs it in. And I was just like, you know, you would have pulled your hand away. Any normal person would have during that whole thing, until the knife went in, of course. Uh, and it's pretty easy to, too, because it's just, you, you've got your full body strength, he's only got his arm, because he's trying, he's using the other part of his body to do the other stuff, so it's just, just, he sort of allows the knife to go into his hand, it's just like, eh, whatever. And then he says, you have a choice, pull the knife out, or pull your hand out. One would be to prove that you're a man that's out for himself, and the other one proves you're a man committed to the cause. And it's funny, when I first saw yeah. this, I wasn't sure which was which. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, same. Because I, uh, I think you told me about, because this was before I'd gone to see the film, um, and I think, again, Steel Man Fringy, I'm, I'm like the, the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, all right, walking out here. <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, the point of that is that you have two choices in terms of your way to deal with the world when you have a knife in your hand. You can pull the knife out, which essentially means that you're sort of agreeing to the terms of the world, like you're gonna, and it's the one that causes you the least pain and harm, but it's obviously like the path of least resistance, or you can like fight back against the world, um, but look at where that'll get you, that'll get you your hand like torn to shit or something, which represents essentially being destroyed. That was the impression I got, then I saw the scene and I was just confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand it at all. Yeah, because that, that, that's pretty much my take, is the, uh, why, why would he say it without being specific? Because I can interpret both both ways. Like, le pulling the knife out the way it came in from the high table is like, you are following our command, sort of thing. And to rip your hand out is, is you doing it your own way. Or, pulling the knife out is to take the easy way out, and you're just, you're only here because you're in it for yourself, yeah. less pain. But to pull your hand out, that means you're committed to doing the hard shit for us or something like that so i was just i was just like you might want to be more specific about the choices <laughs> imagine he and yanked his hand out and he was just like oh okay well oh, no God. deal oh yeah it's like what what your hand it's fucked up how are you gonna like <laughs> use guns and stuff like your hand is <laughs> yeah. seriously injured well so yeah there's that Which, by the way and yeah that good job buddy seriously injured dude is working for you like <laughs> It's like the possibly one of the worst professions to have done this. Like, why did you wound the gunman's hand? Like, what are not, you doing? I'm a professional hand puppeteer in Vegas. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? You've destroyed wants, my livelihood. He's offering to pay the man over twenty million dollars and to put that same amount into his four hundred one k to assassinate John Wick with a gun. And then he says, to but prove I, that you're committed, I want to fuck your hand up. <laughs> I think we can all agree, though, that, that what the the people who made this film wanted you to do in this scene was laugh. Like, ha ha, ha ha, that's so funny. Well, I did. That's a funny, goofy thing in a movie. <laughs> well, yeah. I, but not not ironically, Mauler. They wanted you to do it unironically. Oh. Because this is just a dumb, fun movie, and there wasn't anything to be read from what that guy said about, like, I don't know, whether you pull the knife out or pulled your hand out. It's not like that's trying to enforce a theme or be some kind of symbolism. It's something, something's to be dug out of it, I am sure. Something that definitely makes mm -hmm. sense and doesn't make you go, what the fuck? <laughs> so we're done with that scene. Mr. Nobody is now officially on the payroll and he's going to be going for John Wick more so, well, I guess. Well, he's yeah. going to be tracking John Wick. He's not going to kill him. Oh, yeah, That's that the deal. That does, I, was, I, I almost, well, this is the thing with summaries. It's like, we have a scene where he calls him to say, no, go kill him. And then he's like, I don't want to. And he's like, do it. And he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, I, if if I literally don't even summarize that part and just say that in this scene he's gonna go kill him now, like it it just cuts out <laughs> like the scene for that doesn't do fuck all anyway. But yes, he's he's only tracking him, but he will be told to kill him when he gets there anyway. Um, so then you have uh, Winston and John having a chat, and um, they're talking about you know it's sad that uh, Sharon is is gone, and then he's like, so you know. Who who's the, who are the people that are killing killing me right now? And it's like it's uh, it's the Marquis, and he's a man only elevated on the promise of killing you. And I just think back to him saying, "This isn't about John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is about more than John Wick." You're like, yeah, okay, man. Your entire now. career is based on killing John Wick specifically. It's about the idea of mm -hmm. John Wick, right? Um, and then John says, mm, "Okay, where do I find him?" 
uh, because they, they oh, sorry, they, I've skipped ahead a little bit of, they've come up with a plan. Winston says you got to challenge him to a duel. Um, no, wait, actually, it is in that order. He does actually say, where do I find him first? Yeah, because this is kind of funny. It kind of relates to John Wick, too. So, yeah, he says, where do I find him? And Winston says, Paris. And John just walks off. I thought that was <laughs> fucking hilarious. Like, yeah, he's in Paris. Off you go. <laughs> like, right, cheers. See ya. Yeah. Could you maybe give me a street? <laughs> like, that might narrow it down a little bit, but no, Paris is good enough. And uh, as he's leaving, he's like, when does this end? And he says, with him dead. Which I find really interesting, because it's like, do you, is it even the Marquis to blame at this point? Is it not the high table? Aren't they the ones you want to get? They're the ones that literally told him to tell people to yeah. kill you. You know what I mean? But he's the, he's the current man, so he's got to go first. There this is go. why there's going to be so many more John Wicks. All it's they have just, to do is keep... It's just a pipeline of people. There's a, yeah. Here, no you, no you. They even say it in the movie at some point of things. Like, they have more people to replace that you have bullets or something like that. Um, uh. And so then he's like, have you learned nothing? You have to kill him the smart way. <laughs> and it's such a like... like what? With, a, with what? a pencil? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I legit had no idea what he was talking about, and there's a reason for that, because what he's talking about has never come up before. <laughs> like, it's gonna be a brand new mechanic. He says, challenge him to single combat. And I legit, like, it just, it just sends me completely. I'm just like, no fucking way that's an actual mechanic. No way. <laughs> and then John's like, well, I can't because I don't sit at the table. And then Winston says, yes, but your family sits at the table. And then John says, but they've torn up my ticket. And Winston says, you just gotta mend the ticket. Isn't this just like, what it's just are we doing? absolute what horse is going shit. On? You don't get to do that. Where movie. do we even begin? All these new rules out of your behind. It's, like it, we needed where a side was quest this before? To do. In John Wick 2 or 3, that he could just challenge the guy to a duel, and then that would clear him and he'd be fine. Yeah, can you do the duels for the markers? Can you do that? Just get rid of the marker with the duel? Does that work? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Seems Why? Pretty useful. What does it mean to be excommunicado, but also have a family? You just... Yeah, exactly. I thought that you were locked out of everything. That that's what it meant. And can he escape the duel by challenging someone else to it? Like, can the Marquis be like, nah, I'm going to go challenge someone else before you challenge me? Well, uh, I mean, because uh, the Marquis had the option of saying no, I think. It seemed that way. When Winston talked to him, he basically said, I accept. And it's like, well, what do you mean you accept if, if you have to? So what happens if he just says, nah, then you're just still excommunicado? Well, yeah, Winston says that, like, you'll accept because you want the, the prestige of having killed John Wick yourself, bringing but him into your light. Oh, uh, whatever. I know. <laughs> that's that's their way of justifying it. It's like, no, trust me, the Marquis as a character will accept the duel Literally he wants to. Literally, doesn't even, doesn't even make sense, though, because when the duel is set, like, when it is arranged, he then, or, he then pays as best he can, a bunch yeah. of money to get a bunch of people to try and kill him before he could show up. That is a great point. So it doesn't even... They use doesn't a character reason sense. to make it happen that they then don't follow through on. That they then defy. They they outright contradict. It is the opposite. Wow, great. Awesome writing. I didn't have that in my notes. So, nice. Yep, <laughs> like, that's, a new, that's a new thing there. New problem. Nothing uh, stays consistent at all. Yeah, it just feels like every single... I, I keep wanting to say episode, and I, I might start calling it episodes at this point, because that's all they are. Mm. It's uh, every single episode, they just fucking redo the rules, and they, they're always grander, and they always, like, beat out every other rule. They're like, this one's the big one. Okay? Yeah. And uh, John says, like, dueling, that's like a myth. It's like, fuck off. Either you know it's a <laughs> thing or you don't. Don't give me this myth. That's like Force Awakens. What does it mean to be a myth that you can have a duel in the John Wick world? <laughs> it's not been <laughs> done for thousands mean? of years for you. The ancient assassins would do it. <laughs> the ancient assassins. Even the one so with the tired. bows? Damn. <laughs> Chapters of the book of Boba Wick. <laughs> Boba <Ooh>. Wick. Oh, <laughs> uh, and so yeah, he's like, all right then, I guess I gotta go mend my ticket so that I can then sit at the table so that I can then challenge the Marquis but he can always just refuse. Yeah, and all of this entail... This is the side quest portion of the film, really. Yes. It, or it's it's like it's like the, the missions that you do before the big mission, right? So like in Grand Theft Auto V with the highest missions, 
This is like one of the quests you can do to basically set yourself up for the heist. They needed to have John Wick and Winston in a room there and then have Lester off telling them what they, their options are <laughs> for like how they do it. Because he's off to Berlin, right? Yes. Let's go complete the side quest of going and dealing with this <sighs> minor antagonist. Well, I mean, let's just do the busy work first. So he turns up at his family's place, and he's like, Hey, I want to mend my ticket. And he just gets shot immediately. Yeah, I don't know the guy pulled out shot a shotgun. He pulls out barrels. a shotgun. I don't know why John didn't expect this. Because, like, yeah, you can't I just mend that... your family's ticket. That's, that's considered, like, an impossibility. But yet he's just like, I don't know, fuck it. Let's just do it. I presume that that was meant to be a comedy bit, all right? People in the theater laughed at that one. Sure. I laughed at a lot of it, seriously, like, I don't know. The, the, no, I, I don't. Uh, I mean, the, the yeah, there, there's some funny moments, but I don't know if they're meant to be funny in the way that, like, I laughed at them, that's all. Um, I don't even, like, genuinely in terms of substance, I just want to sum this up as they say, we're going to kill you because our leader was killed as a result of different shit that happened with you. And so, fuck you. But also, we hate kill the you. high table, kind of, as well. Oh, we're, yeah. we're beneath the high table. Well, because John says, we, we have the same enemy. And then she's like, what? I mean, what could you possibly do for us? And he's like, I could kill that guy. And then she's like, yeah, okay. And that'll mend your ticket. <laughs> That's it, yeah. It's like, wow, that'll mend the ticket? You'll, you'll literally re-familiarize him so that he can regain his seat at the table despite being excommunicado as long as he yep. kills someone who, as far as I know, is chill with the table. Right, Killer Hawken? Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, know. I think so. How could that so, possibly work? Like, isn't, well, isn't the Marquis going to annihilate that family? You'd think they would. Like, he talks about everything that idea touches. Like, they're all dead. Yeah. Well, I guess... I guess yeah, not, is yeah. the response to that, because they're fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't even think about that either. Nobody does, because I don't think the fucking writers cared. They were just like, eh, they'll be fine. They're the cool Russian family. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and yeah, I don't think anything else of note happens in that scene. Except maybe I am Klaus. I am Klaus. Really, I, I don't know why this is even... This is a funny bit, probably, that they wanted to be fun that's, that's, at. Yeah, it's supposed to be funny, I think, yeah. Rags liked it. I think that's probably the only thing he liked in the film, was I Am Klaus. Oh. I Am like Klaus. I Am Klaus. So, you know, there, there's that. Little, like, little heartbeat on the flat line. Boop. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> the, uh, Killer Harkin is who he's sent to go and kill. He is, uh, he's like a... I don't know if he's like a martial artist in real life, but he's a guy in a fat suit. So he gets to do some fun stuff. He's he's more interesting to me, I guess, than anything else in the movie, kind of. Except maybe Donnie Yen's character. Mm -hmm. Um. So the idea is the family deliver John to Killer Hawk and saying like, "We captured him for you." And yeah, he's like, go. "Oh, cool, thanks. That's nice. That's very epic of you." But he doesn't really actually care poggers. about them, and he's saying, uh, "The dirty people." Yeah, he doesn't like them. Racism. Um, but he unties John and just lets him sit down. And the first thought I had was, he's gonna take his coat? He's gonna take the body armor off him? Ew. No, maybe not. No, no, they, of course they wouldn't. And untying him, of course you need to do that, you know, for reasons. And yeah, so it's like, okay, so what's happening here? What's gonna happen? And, uh, uh, turns out, the arrival of someone else, uh, he says, you, because John's like, wait, Killer Harkin was expecting me? And it turns out... Kane is here. <laughs> and you're like, wait, how could Kane possibly be here? And he's like, yeah, I, I fucking figured you'd come here. And I had an your, idea. Your family oh. mending ticket. Yeah, I figured all that. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> like, you, you. You just track your way through the entire goddamn plot line. You just always know everything. He's like, yeah, I was friends with John Wick, so I know stuff. That's how I know stuff. Uh, where are we? Sorry, I had to uh, had to answer the door for something. Well, we have where, where are we right just now? Just met Killer Hawken, the big fat man. Oh my goodness, he is big. And like I and said, uh, Kane is also here. And the way he reasoned it was, he figured this is where John would be. 
you know. Of course, he's he's really good at just like so kind good of at that reasoning where John is. Yeah. And you know, if, you? if people wanted okay. to argue, well, he knows this because he knows John would want to mend his ticket so that John could do a challenge to the Marquis. Like if that's how he actually figured all of this, he'd be like, so one, why didn't you go here first instead of the Osaka Continental? And two, mm -hmm. if you know all of that, what's the threat? The Marquis can always just say no. Like I don't. So like the John wouldn't necessarily well, try this, right? The marquee people would already know about all this, right? They should. This isn't privilege. This isn't privileged cane information. That's correct. So yeah, it's just something he just fuck you. He's there now. Shut up. We want to have the cool guy here to do cool guy things. That's why yeah. he's here. And you're like, okay, fine. Yeah. Man, the marquee move. guy must be annoyed. Like he he just agreed to this deal with the tracker, and Donnie Yen is like, oh, I actually know where he is. He's I'm going there now. It's like, oh, okay. Um, want makes you wonder why he even bother with the deal at there all. is clearly tension there for them and uh uh kane says mr wick may feel responsible for the death of a friend but i uh may feel like i'm responsible for the death of a friend but i didn't kill koji you did john and it's so funny it's just like no koji killed koji koji did <laughs> like, just, none of you guys are responsible for that weirdo like he just, he just wanted to die okay uh yeah and then so killer harkin goes to kill john he puts the gun up, and then and then Kane is like, "Nah, -uh, we have a deal." And they never specify what like the details are of this deal. I have no idea what's happening here. <laughs> Kane wants John dead so that he can prevent them from doing shit to his daughter. Okay, Killer Harkin is just guy who's fucking around, I guess, and just will happily have John die. Okay, John doesn't want to die. So what happens in this scene? It's like, well, I guess Kane and Hawk and kill him, right? What else can happen? Uh, um, I I know what happens. But, you know what happens, uh, but like I, I <laughs> why I, like like why does Kane not? Because Kane pulls a gun on Hawk and he's like, no, don't. And it's like, what? What's what are we doing? John's right there. He's ready to die. Yeah, kill him. And while they're fucking around, Mister Nobody turns up, who is now going to be trying to kill John too. Um, and then Kill Hawkins like, why don't we play a game of cards? Obviously. And then and then nobody's like, what's the buy-in? Was... And John's like, I more than was... you could afford. It's like, what the fuck is happening? You don't know anything. I I thought the card game was to be like symbolic about a lesson or <clears> something, <throat> and and it w we'll, we'll get to it. But I I guess I just thought it would have been interesting. And that was my problem. I think we're supposed to believe like they all have winning hands of different levels, but the Harkin has the is like a royal flush, right? Or was that did did nobody have a royal flush? I can't remember. I think nobody had a royal flush. Uh Harkin had five twos, that was what it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the point of all of that? Well no, someone did, right? Didn't uh didn't Tracker Man have a royal flush? Didn't they yeah, even say yeah. it? Yeah, that's what he had the royal flush. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, the it's the most it's the it's not the rarest. Technically, every hand is the rarest, but you know, like it's the the most valuable hand of cards you could possibly get. Mm -hmm. And he gets it, and then he gets like a four, and then the thing is like, oh, are you like trying to like teach a lesson or or a story using cards about how you know the the system can be rigged and da 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 or something like that? Well, so explicitly, he says one thinks he can serve his way out, one thinks he can buy his way out. One thinks he can kill his way out. Each of them all think they have the winning hand, but the moment they took a seat at the table, they'd already lost. Yeah, because he just cheats. Well, but like, I just, what am I supposed to gain from that? I don't know. Shut up. Action scene is happening. I've heard Whoa. so many people praise the card scene, and I was like, I legit don't know what I'm supposed to gain from it. Help me out. Someone, please. I can't. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I don't... I don't know, like, like, is it supposed to be, like, I am the dealer, and you're in my house, so, like, I win? Always? But he loses. Well, that's the point. John Wick is, is, succeeds. <laughs> Even wins against cheaters. Yeah. There you go. Um, the card scene is to show the game is rigged. Okay. Is that it? 
Yeah. The card scene is a so the I game think. is, but that is the game is the card mm -hmm. scene. Isn't he saying that the table has always been in control? No, the whole well, thing, just the whole system. The the, ta the table, but like, the table shouldn't have things rigged. There should be rules that they're playing. That that the whole point is that they're all playing by these rules that are also, established, and the table is just. John's done whatever the fuck he's wanted for the past like four movies. I don't understand how we're learning from this is that the table controls everything. It's like no, it doesn't. Yeah, the whole and, and what is this supposed to? Yeah, like what am I supposed to do with this lesson? If that's even it. Like, like, if if it if it actually is the only thing I'm supposed to gain is ex explicitly what he says, which is that being involved in the table in any way just means you've lost. It's just like, okay. Yeah, I think yeah, that I've heard is that it. thirty-seven times. Yeah, um, you know, I'll keep that in mind as John kills all of the members of the high table in John Wick four, five, and seven, eight, nine, whatever. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> like, uh, action scene ensues because John cuts Harkins throat with a card uh which you that's know that's a sharp card i guess if you do it fast enough right i don't know i don't know if you can can you i don't know throw a card <laughs> fast enough that it like like cuts someone's neck like that the, the funny thing i guess to me is that john had to like reach over quite far to do that and uh Hawker just sort of allows it to happen a little bit uh but that kind of you know no reactions in terms of like what the fuck are you doing getting close to me with whatever what, he's like the guy wants to kill you he already said that by the way john said he's gonna kill him um i don't know it's, it's just a little bit more self-preservation would be neat in this movie for different characters that aren't the main ones mm -hmm. um yeah so uh, i guess that's that's how we should explain it piece by piece he cuts hawkins throat but it's done in such a way that it's not really much it's of a wound. Side. It's a very, yeah, it's very like thin, side. shallow wound. Yeah, it's it's not yeah. it's not much. Which is you know he just freaks out and sort of starts running away. While th this thing, I understand what the fuck's going on. Mister Nobody sends his dog after one of the guards, and then Kane starts shooting to death all of the guards. What's going on right now? Death. That's what's, it. What's, I, I don't know. Is is. Is the Are card game betrayed? is the card game's point that Hawkins going to kill all of them? Why all of them? I don't know. Because he works with the table. The table want John dead. Kane is here from the table. Mister Nobody was hired by and the so Marquis nobody, himself. Yeah. Everyone here wants John dead. Why are we all killing mm -hmm. each other? I don't understand. Yeah, but, this is the part of the writing, right? Where we're like, okay, we have the scenario, but how do we write it in a way? That, like, some of them, like, they want to fight with John against these people. Why would they want to do that? You know, we have to come up with a reason for things to happen. <laughs> yeah. The point of the card game is that the table wins in the end, which happens by the end of the film. No, they don't. No. No, John gets to leave. They heavily and lose. <laughs> the table has to, like, kill two of their whole hotels and lose <laughs> an insane amount of personnel and stuff. And John just gets to leave. Even yeah, though John I, broke the rules. Yeah, like, they couldn't have had a greater loss other than him killing all of the high table, which he will do at some point. Probably. I don't understand how the high table could possibly see what happened in this movie as a win. <laughs> like, that's, that's not even close. The amount of men who died, the amount of money that was spent, the Continentals lost, all of the networking that's been damaged, their reputation is in fucking tatters. John Wick has annihilated them, but he's not, like, obviously we're not operating on the information that, uh, he's actually dead, by the way. Mm hmm No way it's happening. It's just no way. But anyway, yeah, it's just a big old fight happening, and everyone here, like, doesn't have guns. They all have, uh, axes. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> they all That's have little good. axes. Would be, uh, you know, different if they did have guns. One neat thing happens. No, it wouldn't, Mahler. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it would all in the same way. It would, yeah. John, uh, John goes to chase Hawkins because he really needs to kill him to get his thing mended. And meanwhile, a bunch of guys are running up to uh, Kane to attack him with axes, and Kane throws a flash at them, and it blows up, and he's like smiling at them. Uh, which is just like that's that kind of reminds me, of, like you know, the whole idea of fighting in the darkness with John. That could have been a good idea. The idea that Kane uses a flashbang on someone—that's that's, that's kind of fun. Ironic. And then, to be fair, I shouldn't say flashbang. It's probably just a flash. If it was a flash, yeah. If it was a bang, then you think that would have to cover his ears. Hearing up. Um, and, and so, I guess, loud, yeah. That's true. 
I was going to mention it earlier, but I had to step away when you were talking about it. When John goes into the church to talk to the Roma people, and the priest takes out the shotgun and blasts him with it. So, w was he meaning to kill John with that? Hard to say. I guess uh, if he had, he'd be fine with it. But they all—you're okay. right. Like they all capture him after it. So I don't—I don't know, honestly. And um, secondly, I was going to get to it uh, about the gun thing. But that's not how guns work. What? Um, if you take if you take out a gun, and you, like let's say that the 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 priest right takes out that shotgun, he hits John. Sorry, I got hiccups all of a sudden randomly. Oh no! He hits John with the shotgun shell, mm -hmm. and John like flies back comically off the stairs and like into the aisle. And the and the guy who shot the shotgun, the priest, is just standing there. So if John was hit with enough force to f make him fly back from the shell, then the priest guy is going to fly back even further because that's how physics works. No. Right? They have uh, sci-fi tech. Oh, okay. It's just one of those things that you see in movies and stuff where people get shot with bullets and they fly back, but the person who shot the gun, they don't move at all. Do you like, remember... Oh, okay. One of the ones I really liked is, is uh, do you remember Pirates of the Caribbean 3? No. God, I wonder if I'm going to be able to reference this well enough that I can actually pull it up. Let's, let's check my archiving powers here. It's, uh, I forget the, the name of the character, but he's like the, he's like, um, no, I don't know if he, is he in the first one? He's like a, the midget of the team sort of thing. Um. Uh... Someone in chat will remember. You guys, you guys, your part, memory of Pirates of the Caribbean should be better than mine, okay? Maybe. I don't know. I think it's near the beginning. The Do you have a cannon? Yeah, he's like holding a big weapon. Um, and there's like a big opening fight, and I'm pretty sure there's just this really quick moment where he fires it. Oh, I think I found it. God, please be the thing I'm talking about. Oh, are you going to link it? No, no, I'm going to show you. have to pull up the stream. I will fetch All it for right. you. All right. Let me click live. All right. Here we go. It's almost there. Oh, it's a great moment. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. I'm here so you go. I'm so excited. <laughs> that's pretty great. And that's what you're talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, flight. Basic, into the yeah, hole basically. As well. Yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Such a great gif. <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> I think the way the way that he's holding it, that 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 thing would have just flown out of his hands backwards. But yeah. yeah, if he was like shouldering it or something, yeah. But that's way funnier. That is way funnier. <laughs> he flies back. Oh, I can't remember like anything about now. Mm. The only memory I have of this movie is this <laughs> <laughs> this moment. <laughs> Oh, that's wild. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll do a pirate talk at some point for you sure. You had, like, the good stance and everything, but it wasn't enough. He's just too little. Um, that's fun. Yeah, I mean, so, I guess it's the it's the John Wick versus Killer Hawken scene. Um, it's kind of weird yeah. that when he hits him with the card, Hawken, like, freaks out and starts running away, panicking and screaming, blah, blah, blah. When he's in a room filled with his own guards, and then when he's at this point, it's just John Wick chasing him with a gun. He, for some reason, turns around. He's like, all right, I want to fight you. Does that make sense? Maybe the maybe when he f saw the blood on his neck, he freaked out. I don't know. <laughs> I was actually, I thought that was like the first half of making sense. of I, I, Like he saw the blood and thought, you know, I need to go to the hospital? Or Well, people can panic when they see like their own blood. Um, so maybe he, he felt a pain in his neck and then he saw the blood and so he started like panicking and freaking out. That happens a lot of the time if people get head wounds and they, you know, they, they reach up yeah, and yeah. feel it so and they sweat. Yeah, I can buy that, but like, what would, what was his goal, I guess? Oh, maybe he was just, um, maybe he just got tired of running. Fat guy. No, I mean, like, so he's like, oh, I'm panicking. Oh, God, blood. Uh, and it's like, isn't the best thing to do to be with your 20 gods sort of thing? Could be. 
maybe, maybe he, he thought, thought that oh, the most go... distance he could put in between them, the better. Maybe it was like, let me go to the club. John is not going to be crazy enough to actually shoot in there. He's going to kill. Well, that's what kind of what I'm getting at. Is like he then decides, <laughs> actually, I'll take him a one on one. Like, okay. Yeah. And by the way, very conveniently, it's not. Con it's just dumb. Uh, John fights two guards before he gets to Harkin, who could have kept running, but he doesn't. Um, the first one, he shoots in the head. And I'm about to get to the other thing, don't worry. It's the thing that everyone's talked about in this movie because it's dumb as fuck. The <laughs> second one hits him, and they, they fight a little bit, and he knocks the gun out of his hand to the floor. John beats the fuck out of that guy, and then he sees Harkin, and then they he walks up to him to engage the like fist fight instead of picking up his gun. Why? Did he did he want to make it personal, I guess, or something? Or, but like there are guards everywhere potentially. They, they, yeah, well, they, they, they only have access, so it's fine. I, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Pretty good with his gun, you know. That's what I think, anyway. But yeah, anyway, uh, he has already executed several people. Shot that gun right next to, and I'm talking like what inches away from people dancing. And they do not notice for about five minutes of just big old Music's everyone killing each other. Hey, when the beat drops, you know. This is the thing that pretty much everybody's zone. already said was dumb as fuck in this film, so at least we don't have to explain much of it. Yes, there is a shit ton of people just dancing and vibe into the music while yeah. there's bloody murder happening all around them. Another staple of the John Wick franchise. Yeah, People this isn't actually new. <laughs> you might have thought it's new. It's not first new. First time they did it was in John Wick 2, I mm -hmm. think. Because in, because in the first one, I think they, the, everyone reacted. In Everybody the, got uh, react. Yeah. 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 In, um, the, in the in club. Two, it's, in two, well, in two, well, in 2, they, he goes onto the stage and someone runs at him and he shoots him in the face. And, and everybody at cheers. This, well, I think at this point you could say, oh, that's a stage thing. But the band is there. They know that's not the stage thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to put a sick beat below that murder. That's going to go great. But then when he jumps into the audience, then people start like running away and sort of well, panicking a bit. A little bit, yeah. There's like this one scene where they go left and right. And it's really funny because it looks like they just lined up people left and right. And when the scene started, told them to run left and right. <laughs> because no one right. it looks really fake. Like, it didn't look like real panic. It's just something I remember just now. But yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing that has been happening. I'm not reacting to murder. It's like, oh what no, the... assassin fight while I'm going out clubbing, trying to get drunk. Ugh. I hope I don't get blood on me this week. Look, this martini was $9. I'm going to fucking finish it, okay? <laughs> just don't shoot me. It uh, was uh, the one in the subway when they're shooting yeah. at each other and yeah. nobody reacts. Insane. <laughs> uh, um, so this is, again, I try to highlight the things I like, if we ever find them, but seeing this big old fat German man suddenly do better combat than John Wick was kind of cool. <laughs> like, it just, funny. look at him go! <laughs> yeah, I saw that kick he made, and I'm like, dang, you are limber! <laughs> it's just, a, 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 a it made me think, guy. like, that's kind of a fun idea, right? Like, putting this guy who's super experienced and body built for this sort of thing in a fat suit, and then having him still do those things. <laughs> it's like an Austin Powers. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's just, like, fun. I, I, I imagine he had fun with doing it. Uh... That to some fun. extent, because it looks so funny, but I don't think it, is it supposed to be that kind of funny? I don't even know anymore. It's all funny. So, yeah. Speaking of, um, he kicks. It's like roundhouses John off. Like I don't even know how to say what this club is in terms of its structure, but kicks him off like the bridge at the top. John falls a good three meters on his back onto a me like a steel. Uh, it, it just, it looks like it would fucking destroy you, what happens to him. It's not dissimilar from the wound we saw in John Wick 3, to be honest with you, which means we know it'll do nothing. Yep. He slams into that spine first, and then he falls another, like, five meters just straight into the floor. No and, problem. Uh, it's amazing. Uh... And he does, uh, he does the Wolverine thing. He needs about a couple seconds before he's back up to full power. Um... And yeah, everyone starts attacking him once he's back up to full power with axes, because... Axes, yep. Yeah. They all have axes. This is an axe-themed gang. <laughs> yeah. We had the bows, we had the swords, now we have the axes. They attack him with axes. 
2023. Um, just a bit sad, all of it, you know, because it's like, <laughs> it's, it's really flashy, and that's what everyone talks about. Everyone was saying, like, how amazing mm -hmm. this scene is, and I was just like, damn, dude. I just couldn't stop being distracted by the insanity of his plot armor and how stupid every one of his enemies is. But I guess the colors are pretty. And the water is cool. Colors. I don't get what, like, it's like, how come Joel Wick gets to get away with it? It's not fair. It's like... It isn't fair. <laughs> like, well, it looks real cool. And the music's pretty Would cool, Marvel too. Would Marvel films get away with it yeah. more if they had better cinematography and visual effects? Is that what's... I think so. Everything else at the moment. Yeah, and less, less cuts in the fights, maybe. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Like, if you... Yeah, the problem is that right now, when you got Modok with this big head, and mm. they don't look like they are where they are. Yeah. Modok. Modok. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not much of note other than uh, John does defeat Hark, and he tosses him off a bridge, and it cracks his skull, and he is a dead man. And he yeah. takes one of Why his teeth. Why don't you just die? Takes one of his teeth as proof. Well, that's uh, that's that. A guy we've never heard of proof. and we'll never heard of again because that was a very definitive side quest, as was mentioned. Oh yeah. Yep. Let's say um, not the best proof that you've killed someone, but I guess there'll probably be news reports and things that can. Do they I mean, have social media in this I... world? I don't even know. You just take uh, a picture with your phone. Does he have a phone? I don't know. <laughs> oh, probably not, right? Because otherwise, you get a track phone, track right? Whatever. I That's... would assume this would be on the news. <laughs> we <Weird>. crazy <laughs> probably, probably yes. Invade club. Um. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's all rather baffling, but he does actually get the ticket uh, mended, which involves like a fucking. I don't know, is it a second-degree burn that you would get from that shit on your arm? Yeah, they have, like, a like a big uh, tub. Uh, I forgot the proper name for it, where you, like, melt stuff in. Uh, and then they have, like, openings on the side, which has, like, I don't know, symbols or writing, and then they both have to put it on there. And I don't know if that's for rejoining or joining in general, because if it's for joining in general, they all should have scars already, especially well, the leader the lady. Yeah, she'll be covered in those damn things. Yeah, I was gonna say, even if it is just for mending tickets, does she have to do that for every ticket mending? Because damn, yeah, that's like, but... oh god, no, you can't rejoin. I don't want to do the arm thing again. <laughs> yeah, fuck a rule. Just wears a fake arm for it. <laughs> and that shit needs, uh, you know, I think some uh, attention. She's like third degree you know? burns. Third degree you get, burns. You should probably go to a hospital. No, it's yeah, fine. That's, he even shows that's it really off serious. in one of the next scenes, and it's just healed. Well, not healed, but like it's fine. It doesn't bother him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, swiftly moving on, because nothing will happen to that wonderful family. They're fine. The table won't hate them forever. It's totally chill. No, it's not like no. they helped and supported John Wick and then added them into the family once he, he killed a member of the table, question mark? Uh, pff, whatever. For the express purpose of dueling the marquee. Yeah, that's the whole reason this is all happening, too. It's <laughs> yeah. just like, man, you have every reason... To have gotten all of those people killed, and John doesn't even seem to notice. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, uh, Winston meets up with the Marquis and says, John Wick has called you to a duel. And, uh, and this, th again, the dialogue's so shit. He's just like, he can't do that. He doesn't have a family. And then he goes, actually, he does. It. He just got it all sorted. Here it is, evidence. And then he goes, okay, well, why would I accept? And he's like, because there are rules. And then he says, uh, new rules, new ideas now. And it's just like, what? And then <laughs> Winston it's not in up response. It's right? It's up to the table. I don't even know what's happening because Winston just says in response, yet you will accept because we all sit beneath the table, even you. And then the guy's like, okay, so what are his tibs? He says, unconditional release of any and all obligations to the table. Also rebuild uh, and reinstate me and re rebuild my continental. And he's just like, hmm. Uh, hmm. And he's thinking about it, and then Winston goes, You could be remembered as the man who brought John Wick, the most feared of all, into the light. How high that could take a man in our world. And it's like, Winston, I know you hate me. Like, you're just saying this to get me killed. You're obviously <laughs> manipulating me. You're, you're trying to manipulate me like I'm 12 years old. 
It's unreal well, you that see, that if would you work. you studied for your math test, <laughs> you, you would have really untold nice power. power. <laughs> it would take you higher power than in ever. the classroom. It's just, it's just funny to me that the implication is he could just say no, but Winston's like, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool though? Come on. Don't be a little wuss. Don't be a little pussy now. Accept <laughs> it. Come on. <laughs> then he sort of <laughs> runs around the room. Okay. And then he says, but uh, Winston's leaving. And he's like, ah, there's one thing you've forgotten, Winston. It's like, <gasps> and this is setting some big stakes now. You ready? He says, what you've forgotten about the old ways is that if you die, your second is buried with you. That is the rule. And then Winston says, Why? hmm, such is life. Yeah. Which is like a nice reference to the whole thing about the Ned Kelly thing, right? But uh, yeah. at the same time, it's like, I thought the whole thing was not killing Winston. Yeah, but not different. I thought the whole fucking idea was that you weren't going to kill Winston because then he'd be made a martyr. But now he just is. Like, okay. I don't understand at all. Why? And he reveals that like it's an enticing element. Like, ha, Winston's going to die now. And it's like, you could have killed him already if you wanted to. Yeah, he was right there. You said you didn't want to. And you said that it was a point that Winston had to figure out for himself. And Winston said... That you wanted to leave him alive so that people wouldn't think of him as a martyr, and now you're gonna kill him. I don't understand. Yeah, sure enough, a week later, he's here in your office delivering you a dual document. <laughs> <laughs> like, you really fucked up by not killing this. You know guy. how you didn't kill me? Here's your death warrant. I got it signed. Yeah. Like, oh this shit. Revenge best served hot and steamy. Like, he didn't wait at all. He's right on this. Also, someone has highlighted a problem that I've just raised technically, but I don't want to get to that until we get to the, the fight, all right? So don't worry, we'll get all there. Right. I gotcha. One of those things, you. you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes errors, they have to wait oh, until we it. find it. Yeah. I just saw it. Yeah, I you did. Yeah. It. It's one of my favorite flaws of the whole movie. It's so funny. Um, so oh. they have to pick, uh, basically the idea is that John and the Marquis have to pick an answer to a question. Say, for example, when will the duel commence? They both pick, and then if they're different answers, they both have to draw a card that's made of metal or whatever glass, I don't know, um, and whoever has the higher number then gets their pick. And so John says he wants it now, and the Marquis says he wants it at sunrise. The Marquis wins, so it's at sunrise. Well, let's start with that one. I find that hilarious that the Marquis is planning to send an army of assassins at John so that he couldn't possibly make it to the duel. Right? He wants to kill him before he can get here. Yeah. Why did he choose sunrise? Just take Other than that, way later time. time. Why did he just How say, about, oh, you know, 2030? Is, is there a time limit? I was about to say, is there a time limit to say 2050? Was there a distance limit? If you, if you want to have yeah. it later, if, you if someone have else it wants the... to have it immediately, then say, oh, Bangkok, Thailand. Well, and and what, it'll take what like a week a to get over there to up. Well, if it's a location, the moon. The moon. <laughs> we will do on the moon. And, he, and he's like, "Ha! Huh, they'll never be able to do that." And then they're like, "All right, here's your spacesuit. We're getting into the rocket." That's, and you're like, Elon "Wait, Musk what? No." Is actually, Elon the space John Wick at the high table. You, just, you can fly, rockets. right? John Wick can fly. You can fly to the moon. Yeah, Probably, no problem. Yeah. John Wick yeah. just like and, just like with Neo, he jumps into the air and just flies up to the moon. And the, well, and 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 the space suit is just a, because he's immune to fall damage. The, the space suit is just a normal suit. Again, but it's for space. <laughs> it's just the same suit. It's like, oh yeah, this one has space capabilities, don't worry. Yep. Someone <sighs> said the space suits would also just be three-piece suits. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That's what I just said. That's what Metal just said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just noticed it when the chat said it. It's, it's a fun idea that deserved repeating, okay? <laughs> I'm not sure, okay. all right. <laughs> we, have our, we have our dueling suits. We have our, our gunfight suits. We have our moon suits, you know. So dress for success. Uh, that's already really fucking dumb because, especially because he won, so he could have pushed that as far as possible. But whatever. If they had said sunrise is the absolute latest or something, then fine. But no, there's no implication at all that that would be the latest. I don't even know why it would be. It seems reasonable that you give people days to set up. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh. Uh, the Marquis then says, You come here thinking there's a way out. There is not. We will honor our word, and you will have your freedom if you win. But you won't take it. It's like, okay. okay. Then he says, You won't <laughs> no. take it, because this is who you are. A killer. Killing gives you purpose, and a man without purpose is nothing. 
Yeah, but I saw the first movie. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, we know it's not yeah, true. Yeah, we, he, we, he was fine for a long time without killing, dude. He didn't want to start killing, and he kept killing. Yeah. And someone kept killed his dog. Him. That's the whole beat. Yeah, I was, I was just chilling. It was like, hey, this is great. I'm going to chill out with my wife. Well, until she died. I was like, oh, I got the dog. going to mourn her. It's going to be shit, but, you know. My life moves on, and then these fuckers come around to kill the dog. Like, ah. Oh. And now uh, you tell me I can't kill. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> fuck you. Here I go killing again. Like, how, how, how did how judges not say? It's like, no, no, I did that already for a while. It was pretty good, actually. And then Mr. Krabs is like, all right, so we're done, right? We've got the location, sword, the time, sword, whatever. And they've chosen... He wanted knives, I think, or swords or whatever, and John wanted pistols, and pistols went out, so... Yeah. Uh, dueling pistols, specifically. <laughs> um, yeah. And he's like, yeah, so we're done. And then the Marquis goes, whoa, 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 one more thing. A nomination. And then uh, Krabs is like, yeah, who? And then he goes, Kane. And then Krabs just goes, okay, so be it. <laughs> then walks like, off. Hang on, wait. It's like, whoa. <laughs> like, and uh, yeah, we, we find out. So Kane is like, I'm not going to fucking fight your fight. What do you mean? And then he just goes, your daughter. Oh, yeah, and, and well, that's it, every done. time. Every fucking time. And it's just like, why does Kane even bother suggesting that he won't do the yeah. thing? It's just like, it's so... Yeah, they've got your daughter still, Kane. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> like, she's she's still there. She's really... and, and can we just be like, the whole... Like, doesn't this circumvent the whole point of the duel? You know, the person you've challenged to a duel can just say, Nah, this Jim's gonna you do, do it. You do it. Jim's gonna do it. Jim is the expert at whatever it is we're doing. Especially because you can choose your second after you've determined what the duel will be about. So if, if the other person's like, oh, I don't know, the, the f fencing rapiers, is like, oh, well, I nominate the world champion in rapier fencing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so uh, that's uh, the part uh, I was going to highlight. Mr. Krabs he, doesn't even check if it's okay. He just says, right. And it's like, well, can I nominate anybody in the world? Yeah, like, I, think I, the only th I think the only thing he says, like, well, that is his right. It's like, why? Why? <laughs> I want to duel him. He's the why guy are you who's allowed? sending all these people at me. Yeah, it's like, I want to duel him. That's the whole yeah. point of me saying I want to duel you. Not some other random guy. And it's like, oh, now you you now make me fight my friends? You're a piece of shit. You're going to make you. me duel this blind guy? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And if the blind guy doesn't do it, we'll kill his daughter. It's like, wow, you guys are great. <laughs> well, you, you guys just... are awful. <laughs> just... How do Jeez. you have so... anyone? He's so great. It's like, you. oh, you want him to do it? I was like, oh, okay. I mean, he's blind. I don't know if you remember that, but it... I'm just going to duck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun if Kane was like, he just, well, when he gets nominated, he's like, dude, I literally cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> and John knows that very well. Are you sure you want me to? That's a joke they could have had. They could have had him saying, you know, who do you nominate? And then uh, uh, the Marquis could have pointed at Kane, and there could have been a silence for a little bit, and then Kane went, <laughs> he's not pointing at me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is the, um, this is, what was that? What's that stupid movie about the, um, John Rick it's like the ping pong <laughs> thing? The well, ping pong thing. It's, Balls it's, of Fury? One of those, yeah, yeah. Oh, Where the old blind awesome. master, they're all sitting around. After oh, I know happens, what you're talking about, yeah. And the blind master is like, someone, someone tell you what's going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, he gets like the golden paddle or something, and he yeah. lifts it up, and everyone's looking at it going like, whoa. Like, they don't even say anything, they're all just like, wow. And he's just standing there, and he goes, what? What's happening? What is, like, why, why is it real quiet? What's going on? <laughs> it's one of those, those dumb... <laughs> Movies from they don't do they make those kinds of movies no, anymore? The, no. the Step edgy. Brothers, Dodgeball kind of movies. Oh, I like Bulls of Fury. Wow. It, it is a bit yeah. of a discount Dodgeball, but it's still good. <laughs> dodgeball. It's still a famous movie to this day. Fucking great. They just That's don't make I... those movies anymore, and they're so no. funny and stupid. Land mm. of the Lost stuff like that. Oh. I don't really like that you put Land of the Lost with Dodgeball, because like I think Dodgeball is actually like pretty solid, whereas well, the, not the, sure about that Land general of the Lost. kind of movie, the, the, the sort of uh, I comedy kind of movie, yeah, because they're definitely uh, well, of different qualities. I saw, I saw a trailer for something that was seemed to me like it was going to be that kind of goofy. It even got Will Ferrell in it. It's called Strays. It's about talking dogs, and that's coming out at some stage this year, I guess. 
Oh boy, you know your career is doing good when they start casting you for talking animals. <laughs> hey, I, I, Lost I, Wish was great. Yeah, that's why I said that's how you know your career is doing great. There you go. Uh, so, John and Kane have a little chat before everything's going to go down. Um, I don't really know what I would mention about the conversation that is of interest. Kane basically says, like, we do everything we do, we do for the living. The living. The living that are all that matter, and that if it's between you and my daughter, you're going to die. And that is the opportunity to be like, how is it your daughter versus me as opposed to your daughter versus the table? Yeah. Think about it, Kane. Think about it. You talked about how they just coincidentally happened to show up at the same church. Maybe they, they said, meet me here. So we can have oh, a chance. Okay. I don't know. I mean, oh, Kane knows okay. where he is all the times so anyway. Yeah, he literally oh, has a tracker on him. <laughs> like, I had a feeling you would be here. For John, John Radar. This is this is the church you always go to before a duel, John. <laughs> like, I know. Like, what I do you know. mean? That's the first time I've ever I know been this here. Because I'm your friend. Um. So yeah, and then Mr. Krabs is like, "This is how you resolve the situation: a duel with the Baba Yaga." And failure would mean like. A complete fuck up and embarrassment for uh, the the table, and that um, a man's ambition should never exceed his worth. You would do well to remember that. And like I was hearing all this, and I was just like, "You gonna do anything about it then? Or are you just gonna fucking <laughs> no. talk? Where's your hourglass? He never brings it back." Yeah, that that's, was like the that's most like important one cool prop. You could have hit him over the he head with it and said, "Stop to... fucking blowing up continentals." <laughs> you have to I don't shoot. have enough hourglasses for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I, I legit I'm just sitting there like he represents like the interests of the high table. This guy is clearly insane, the marquee, and he keeps pointing out how insane he is but not doing anything about it. He's just like, "Man, you're nuts." Anyway. Anyway. Like, All right. <laughs> how come the uh how come the Mr. Krabs guy? How come he doesn't go to a duel and when he <laughs> save the weapons? Dude, imagine he says, he's like, "Who's Hourglass your nomination?" You just go, "Mr. Krabs." He's like, Mr. "What? Uh, what? You can't do that." I don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, weapons, hourglasses, pistols, <laughs> hourglasses. It is. What and it's time? like, how can oh, whatever you, the you can't make on. me do it? He's like, I have a marker. And he's like, oh fuck, oh, god damn it! Oh, when did I agree to marker. this? You know, they probably think about that on the right end team. They're probably like, never confirm whether or not anyone has or hasn't got a marker because we'll need to pull them out of the ass every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, the marker it's ass. John Wick two. Um, so then the Marquis, good old mini boss, walks up to him and he says, like, what are you doing, man? Why are you putting your faith in a blind man? And he's talking about the duel. And I legit was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? He outplayed all of your men. You saw him you do that. Him to save, you wanted him to, like, save your bacon at the Osaka. Yeah, you hotel. asked him for help, and he fucking killed them all. Like, why? He's the only Somehow. person that fucking fought John Wick and lived. Why? <sighs> like, he's, like, the one guy yeah, who can't make this comment. I, yeah. I can't be too hard on him, though, because the guy is blind. <laughs> he is blind. <laughs> Theoretically, he is he's blind. blind. And being asked to participate in a duel of pistols at 30 paces. So then uh, the Maki guy says, There are those who have something to live for. There are those who have something to die for. And there are those who have something to kill for. John has none of these things. He's a ghost. But the blind man, he has all three. But I guess he, he, kill for. he wants the blind man to do it because he thinks he's really motivated to do it. When it's like, John mm. wants to kill you. Yeah. Anybody, he has something to kill for. <laughs> let's be clear. Anybody who's involved in a duel has motivation to win the <laughs> yeah, duel. I do. Okay. It's, this is why every time they pull out these fucking quotes, I'm sitting there like, but what about the obvious thing that's happening right now that completely <laughs> destroys that quote? I don't understand what you're trying to say. Like, John hasn't got anything to really motivate him except a pure, angry, furious fucking vengeance to see me die. Which I guess happens if he wins the duel, huh? <laughs> like, I don't know. That's, that's nothing, though. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And, and he follows up with saying, Mr. Wick will never make it to the duel. And so the obvious question is now going to come in. A couple people said it already. It's like, how is it okay with the fucking yeah. rules that he can, like, basically encourage an army of assassins to take out John Wick to prevent the duel from ever happening? How is that okay? Yeah. Because we don't give a shit about rules or, like, what the rules mean. Like, obviously, this is a breach in the spirit of the duel. If you try to murder the, your duel opponent before the duel, 
yeah, obviously you're circumventing the purpose of the duel by doing that. Yeah. Um, but this film's like, I fucking, well, whatever. I fucking do you think it's this. like they called the high table because they were high when they fucking wrote all these hey. rules? <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe fuck. it's called, no, it's called the high table because they're actual infants. And then they sit in special <laughs> That's the big twist. John fights his way up this huge tower, like of baby. all these men, and then he gets the the boss, and it's just a baby, and he's like, oh, "It all makes sense." Oh he kills yeah, it. it's <laughs> like, yeah, you have boss baby there, and then there's uh, there. Oh, there's the E Trade baby. Do you guys remember the E Trade baby? What about the Sun Baby from Teletubbies? That's there too. Ooh, yeah, the Sun Baby from Teletubbies. Grogu's there. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just. It's oh just, my god, it's so many the, famous babies. What? Is, <laughs> so many famous babies. <laughs> Laura Dannon's there. And yeah. You have the, and then you have um, like just an embryo from Man of Steel. Oh there. god. <laughs> he finally got his chance. He finally got his chance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to become Maybe a part of the, the table, um, it like reduces yeah. you to your baby form. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. What are some other famous babies? I like, I love know. the inauguration of it. Is like you could just write a random rule. Go right ahead. It's like, what if it contradicts other rules? Okay. It doesn't matter. Go right ahead. Read. <laughs> just write a rule. It's real fun. We do it all the time. It's great. Oh my goodness. <sighs> We're about to begin the big action sequence. Uh, uh, Ho Hobo man. Hobo man shows up and he gives John uh, his outfit and gun. I thought yeah, he already he had it new... anyway, but whatever. Gets a new big boy suit. It's really funny. He says, like, uh, if you if you have any close encounters or intimate encounters, I think he says, this pistol, it has fangs. Rags rightfully said, what does that mean? Ah, and I was like, question. well, it means that you can dismantle the gun to a point where it can be used to stab people. And the big question <laughs> you may have is why not just give him a knife? No. Okay, that's fine. Just, uh, just, just a random thought. This viper has fangs, and you fucking like it. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, because I yeah. just... Knives are like... It's really weird, I, I've noticed this. Knives are like built for human hands to stab people with. You can't I mean, prove that. you could... I mean, I guess it's like ergonomically, you could stab with a knife attached to the end of a pistol grip. That'd be fine. It's just... Like, it's inside of the pistol... That's you obviously know, like, what that I'm getting seems... at, because <laughs> we watch him stab yeah, people yeah. with it. I'm not saying it's that, that's like an impossibility or even a difficulty. It's just that you, you present this like it's this amazing feature of a gun, where it's just like, oh, we have those already. They're knives. And yeah. they fit like on a belt. You'll be fine. In and fact, you, you don't can don't put it in the other the... hand while you have the gun. Yeah, you can stab two people at once. <laughs> They make such a big deal about this gun, oh, too. Oh, and that's worth mentioning. Someone just said, like, why isn't it, like, something that's attached to the gun as opposed to you yeah. have, the gun has to be dismantled to use it? So, so I think you can sneak it through security. So that whenever you're going through security... The gun. <laughs> <laughs> whenever you go through security, people are like, They'll never hey, like, you have any have knives on you, right? We're gonna have to check that gun for a knife. <laughs> <laughs> It might just uh, work. So, <laughs> but yeah, they they like think it's really cool describing this one gun they give to John is like it's a like nine millimeter pit viper or something like that. And like it's a nice gun, yeah, yeah. Like like most of the audience even knows what that fucking means. They're just like words to people. Like gun, gun. yeah, it's gun. It has a name. It's being talked about like it's really special and cool. What a cool gun. Compensated I think you should have said, no like, not recoil. only does it stab, it also fucking injects venom. We've got <laughs> venom yes. in it. It slices. Or and it actually, dices. it's even more than that. When you detach the thing, a, a snake jumps out. It's like a Resident Evil 4 with a crate, <laughs> but it's not a viper. It just jumps out and starts attacking people. Allegedly, if you remove the fangs, you can eat it for health, but I'm going to be yeah. honest, I don't know how to fucking do that, so I guess I'll just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, uh, the stakes are set, I guess. Well, they, they build it up first. We got this, um, this DJ person who's, like, announcing to the world that the bounty is going up and that John Wick is, is we know, I was about to say we know where he is. They know he's in Paris. They don't know more than that, right? So she says, for all the people out there, to all my loyal listeners, tonight is your chance to make some beautiful music. 
It seems there's a thorn in our slice of paradise. A wicked man. Okay. If you want the hold prize... Up, there's a thorn in our slice of paradise? That's just like, that just doesn't work. There's like a... There's a lot I have, have to say like about a, this whole thing. It's... You have like a, a fly in the ointment or something like that. You, you have like a thing in a thing that isn't supposed to be there. Like a thorn in a slice of paradise? It like, feels well, like thorn uh, slice and paradise are one part of three different things. Yeah, like it doesn't, like it doesn't quite mesh. Like, oh, we've got too much salt on our tofu slice or something. You know, just like a <laughs> like you do a food related thing as an example, or you do a gardening related thing as an example. Um, well, so my issue with this was going to actually be that up to that point, I was kind of okay with it in terms of. This announcement, because I was like, oh, remember when the idea was that we're in the real world, she's actually on a radio, and that you can tune in as a normal person, but that she all she says is, it's your chance to make some music, there is a wicked man out there, and she says, this golden oldie goes out to him, um, and uh, up to that point, I was kind of like, okay, language. cool. Yeah, the, the, yeah, there's assassins listening to that, and they're like, Wicked Man, that's going to be John Wick then. And mm -hmm. maybe I would have appreciated some of the, like, get John in there somehow, but in a different place at some point. So they have to just do a little bit of... But then she just says, this hit goes out to you, John Wick. <laughs> like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that makes it a little less... Uh, hmm. um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a little overt. I guess if you're just listening in, you're like, oh, I guess it's John Wick's a special guy. Also, well, it's not really a, a criticism. It's more of just a sad moment of like, well, that could have been more neat, but it was just that. You could have done something a bit more clever, but instead you just said John Wick. Um, which, yeah, I think it starts to crank up with uh, the, the, the whole sequence. He gets his shit from... Oh, he does say on his gravestone he wants it to say loving husband. He says that to Winston and the Hobo King and it's just kind of like... Remember yeah, the okay. wife? Yeah, the wife. I, mean, the wife I remember. Is, uh, the yeah. Wife. From the first movie. He was in the first movie, yeah. Yeah, fucking dead. So now it's time to think. John has to no. get to the duel. And he's currently in the sewers and there's a whole... City of people gonna likely gonna try and kill him. What do you do if you're John Wick? Uh, Here's my ideas. Uh, 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 swim. Uh, hide. So uh, I actually said this. I, can't, I think it might have been on your forge. Yeah. But you'll think you'll think I'm lying or I'm crazy. But put on the full clown outfit, full yep. makeup, the little afro, or whatever, and and even maybe get a unicycle and just perform in Paris, and then slowly make your way the area and be like, yo, I'm John Wick. <laughs> and be like, oh shit, that's John Wick. Because nobody's gonna think the clown is John Wick. Nope. That's he one... should have done a mime, because he's yeah, in you, Paris. You could do a mime, that's another oh, one. Oh, mime. So these are like, these are the high-level brain plays, okay? I wouldn't expect <laughs> yeah. John Wick to be able to achieve that. So what can we do this for maybe a... John? This is like... a high-level mime maneuver right here. Well, what about a ghost sheet? Like it's a spooky Halloween costume. It's like, ooh, and then he and ooh. then he orders a taxi cab and he says, Ooh, take me to the duel. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 imagine being a, ta a taxi cab in Paris and some ghost rolls up to you, he just walks up, gets in your cab, and says, Ooh, take me to the duel. <laughs> the cab driver's like, Yes, sir. He knows exactly yeah, what he absolutely, wants. Absolutely, sir, right away. <laughs> It's like several duels oh, happening at all time in Paris. Just like whatever, it's normal. Ah, oh, take me to the duel. Now, if anyone's unclear on why we're suggesting these, it's that you don't want to look like John Wick. Is my point when you're moving yeah. from one place to <laughs> yes. another in public, because that's what everybody's been told to kill. But, you know, like I said, clown, ghost, mime, whatever. You just, just, just pick. You know what? You could just wear a Hawaiian shirt. He could tie his hair up. Maybe wear a wig. Have hey, a wear a hoodie. It's me, hood John on. Wick, or it isn't, man. I'm I'm Bobby. You could have Salmon. like oh, you remember um the Pink Panther outfit he has with the hump, the fake the hump. <laughs> <laughs> you could use that. You could put on the fake nose and everything. It would be great. But fat suit. <laughs> you, if... you could go back and get the fat suit from the guy. There you go, on. fat suit. There's so I'm many not options. John Wick, I'm John Thick. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get to the duel. Um. 
So there's all that. But let's just let's just throw on a restriction for no reason at all. He has to look like John Wick. He has to be wearing the suit and the and the hair and the facial hair. All of it has to stay the same. You're like, okay, why? And you're like, shut up. And you're like, okay, okay. So that's that has to stay the same. So now what's the plan? It's like, well, stay in the sewers and get as close as possible. Maybe actually go by boat. That's not actually a crazy idea to get as close as possible, wherever the closest area would be to that. And then just, I don't know, drive there? It's going to be hard for people to know that you're in a car, especially if you have like blackened out, you know, like the, the shaded windows and stuff. Yep. So if there's all, you know, that, that'll do it. And it's like, no, you're not allowed any of those things. And you're like, I'm not allowed vehicles that'll protect his identity. It's like, no, you're not allowed vehicles. Uh, why? Well, why? You may ask. Shut up. Why? So now what's your plan? It's like, I'm not allowed any vehicles and I'm not allowed any disguises. Uh, I guess he like... He tries to find a way around, like a really secret way, stays by, tries to go th avoid public areas. I don't know. Yeah, Why are these weird restrictions stuff? on me? And it's like, well, because we're almost to the reality, which is John Wick knows this entire city is full of people that want to uh, kill him, right? And, and, and he decides to literally walk from the sewers. He's, he, he, he erupts out of there for, at the Eiffel Tower, and he has to walk from there to his dueling location. He's, he's crossing streets filled with people, and he looks literally just like John Wick. Like, I was, I was confused. I thought I'd missed something when I saw this. I was like, oh, this is something he has to do for some reason? It's part of the honor of the duel or something. Yeah, but know. no, he's just an idiot. As, as is every fucking character in this universe. Why? Why couldn't he dress up as a clown? It would have been funny. Yeah. It would have been funny. And he could have, think of all the weapons he could have used in the clown arsenal. He could have <laughs> used like the flower with the water to blind someone. Oh my gosh, I should, it wasn't right. I should have smelled it. I thought it'd be great. And then he punches him. Or he has like, he takes off his red nose and he throws it at someone and it gets in their mouth. <laughs> um, or, oh my goodness. <laughs> Hang on. Oh no. Check this out. Oh, no. <laughs> That's great. Oh, no. I'm going to get you. Those poor buttons. <laughs> There's a skeleton in there somewhere. We can see the weak spots. You can get them right between the... Yeah, that's right. He's got the weak spot. <laughs> the, to be fair, the bullet would probably, like, bounce off of his, um... Really belly and just shoot that this, back. That his facial hair is more unkempt. Yeah. Uh, it's more like fat guy <laughs> facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, greater are, you are you gonna get him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> this was the, this is the meme that we were talking about right really early on that the the guy in John Wick Two comes to John Wick like I need you to <laughs> satisfy the marker. He's like okay. Who do you need me to crawl? What do you need me to eat? <laughs> Look at his little legs. His <laughs> tiny little legs. I want to see the movie John Thick of him doing John action Thick. scenes. That'd be a good movie. Uh, It'd be better than John Wick 4. Yes, because he does... Uh, the, the, I know that this is going to surprise everybody. He walks through the streets very publicly and then someone spots him and alerts the radio DJ who then tells everybody exactly where he is and then he is attacked. Yep. That is just that's what happens. That's how we get our big fight. There By the go. way, he is, that is, is the closest... That's the closest thing to cause and effect this movie ever has. And it's all built on <laughs> someone doing something incredibly fucking dumb. And it's just like, thanks, I guess. For a little bit and of now that. the fight scene begins, and this fight scene is going to last for like thirty minutes. Yeah, but we are. Wait, wait, wait! Why would someone who's going after John Wick want to alert more people to where John Wick is? That's a uh, maybe. He works him for the DJ, for the one who spotted him. <clears throat> oh, they're know. just out and about that day. And yeah, no. It, it, I, I was gonna. <laughs> I'm of two minds about this. It's like he got <laughs> spotted immediately, and it's like, would that happen? It's like. Maybe it would. Like, I don't fucking know. Everyone's an assassin, right? I'm very uh, sad because yeah, I'm already. I already know what we're gonna be talking about now. Um, John Wick gets hit by about seven or eight cars in this. Yep. And some of the hits are like the worst kind of hits you can even have. 
The kind that would have broken bones and possibly, like, moved his limbs in ways that are not the kinds you want to move them. Um, oh, no. Let alone the force. And I, I feel like saying that, most people would just be like, yeah, okay, so he was hit by, like, two or three cars, was it? And it's like, no. Like, seven well, or four, eight. Four or five? It's a lot it's like of it's, cars. Seven, eight. It happens really quickly, but he's, uh, he's hit by one right at the beginning to the floor, and then immediately after that run over hardcore by one. So it's like two within, like, a couple seconds as soon as the fight starts. Well, he gets... Yeah, he, he slides off of a car into another car. So that's that's one, kind of. I would even count the one where the car drives him into a car. Like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he's mm -hmm. hit by another car. So I would say it's up to four pretty quick. And there's more. It's, um... Yeah. He also gets kicked into a driving car that goes sideways, and he is like a bulge in the car, or like an indentation, or whatever you want to call it. Like, gets kicked into it by the Marquis henchman boss guy. So that must have fucked him up pretty bad. And there's a moment I highlighted it on, uh, on your forge, Mel, as well, but there's this guy who he's having a fist fight with, and he, I think... The implication is he knocks him out and drags him down, and his head is on the right. side of the door, but his arms are behind the door. I'm not sure if that was supposed to happen or not, but the guy then lifts both of his arms up and over to hang them over the door so that when John drives off, he doesn't immediately fall off. Instead, he's dragged with it and then tossed off. I guess the only way I can say this and the easiest way to understand is that the stuntman seemed to move his arms in a way that would put him in more pain and danger, in order to make the scene work, because his, his arms were in the right place. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Um, and there's stuff like that throughout. I'm not going to highlight it all, because at this point I'm getting tired. It's just like, a, that's all the John Wick movies ever are. There's all these weird things happening, because they do long shots. And when you do long shots, it's hard to maintain strong choreography. Everyone has to get everything right. And it's tough. And so when people do get it right, and it looks amazing, uh, you praise the hell out of it. When they do okay, and there's some people fucking up and stuff, you kind of just, you're like, well, you know, it's alright. And then sometimes you just have, like, a complete calamity. Um, combination of people not being on the right cues, plot armor everywhere, people making baffling decisions, and you do get that in this every once in a while. Um, but yeah, he gets run over, like, four or five times, and it doesn't even matter. He's just moving on, and everyone there got killed. And then it moves into possibly the dumbest fight scene in the whole movie, the one with all the cars. Oh, uh, God. Oh, this, one's um, miser this one was miserable to watch. This was like, oh, can I downgrade a movie from third monitor to a... Oh, I don't have a fourth <laughs> monitor <laughs> movie. Damn it. I could put it behind another window. I mean, that would probably be better for the experience. Um, how like, do you explain really, this what this is? Just one of those, like... This is just one of those checkout moments where you, you're, you've just totally checked out from the movie 100%. All of this is nonsense. There's not going to be any issues. John Wick can do anything he wants. He could be in the middle of the street. Dozens of people can be shooting at him over and, and over and over and over cars, again. Like three he or four times. He can be hit times. by cars over and over, and he'll be fine. Don't worry about it. No problem here. And you're like, oh, like, why am I even fucking watching it? There are no stakes. Yeah. Uh, and yet, so it's considered one of the best parts of the movie, I think, by a lot of people. This is like the, oh, the favorite balls. action scene. Why would this one be picked over, like, other set pieces? It's so yeah. fucking intense. There's cars driving everywhere, there's men everywhere, there's people getting run over, there's dogs biting balls, there's guns going off, there's all kinds of lifting jackets on heads, and lights <laughs> everywhere, and gunfire and headshots. I, don't, I guess I just... Uh, I, I don't know why it would be... Like, I guess the thing I... I don't know how you get past John Wick getting hit by a car, like, four times. Uh, it's a fantasy. Well, it has to be, because, <laughs> like... The the marquee That's mini boss me. guy, he throws the dog at the car, and I'm like, oh, the dog's dead, damn. And then the dog, like, just sort gets of... Gets up immediately, because like, they wouldn't want to do that to you. And gets up. Yeah, the dog yeah and, as, as, and once I saw just... that, I think it's like, oh, so, like, we are, like, in, like, this isn't Earth. This is, like, an alternate reality, Blick like, this. fantasy world. It has to be. This is insane. It's just, it, I don't understand how anyone dies in this world. Well, why is it that when other people get thrown that's into cars, the... they die? That, because that's the thing. If you're like, well, it is a fantasy world. How come, like, when other people get thrown into the cars, they die? Yeah, <laughs> when the John Wick gets hit by cars, he's okay. 
Oh, because actually it is a serious movie where they just make mistakes all the time. That's probably it, actually. How about that? Yeah, that's what actually is the case. It's just it's just not very good. What? Um, it's, it's also the scene that feels the least tangible because it's clearly the one that has the most visual effects stuff going on. Well, and, um, yes, and, and the question rises of, like, where the hell are the French police? It's like, mm. Well, and why are all the yeah. people who are going on the roundabout just continuing to drive when there are people stopping and shooting at each other? Well, the, like, to be fair, they if, are Frenchmen, this is Paris. Uh, uh, what? That means they don't want to make sure their car doesn't get fucked well, so, up. Well, so, funnily enough, there is an shot. argument, like, you might want to get the fuck out of there if there's people shooting guns, but the weird part is when they run over people. Um seemingly like they just it's that shit that happens in movies and tv shows all the time the runaway car lorry driver or something that somehow couldn't hit the brakes i guess like that happens and, so and much often keeps going they just keep going and keep driving <laughs> like as if, but this is just like, lady just having a lovely little drive down the parisian streets oh, so. just, because of course John, John Wick Wick fighting is, all the uh, men. what's john wick's concern for the potential collateral damage of like innocent people getting caught in the crossfire or does he not give a shit the thing about it is I don't know. I don't know what John Th yeah, Wick thinks no about this stuff anymore. We haven't really no. explored that element of him uh, at all. It's like he, uh, if someone said, would John Wick care if in order to kill one of his enemies, he shot through like a child's head? I'd be like, I, yeah, I, th I, I, don't, I don't think he would do that. And it's like, okay, what about like just a guy, just a random guy? It's like, yeah, I, I don't think, I think he'd be upset ab about that. It's like basing that on what exactly? It's like, well, he just seems like a good guy, I think. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't really have much. Because he kind of seems like an asshole going into all those hotels and stuff. Yeah, that's the and... thing. You start to think about it, and you're like, well, I guess he doesn't really care that much about collateral damage. No, I mean, he goes also to do all these clubs and starts shooting people, even though there's people like right behind the people he shoots in the head. It's, it's like, like he oh. had a wife. And you're like, yeah, that's he had a wife. I mean, he probably thinks humans are okay. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them. I don't know. I, like, there's just not a lot. Because you think about, like, when was the last time in one of these movies he had, like, a discussion about what he believes in? Uh, yes. Yeah. I remember yeah. the last time. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, yeah anyway. <laughs> uh, the. Yeah, I don't know. The, the stupid like, fucking fight scene. Mr. Nobody yeah. is like, yo, pay me more money, and I will kill John Wick. And then the guy's like, fuck you, I don't need you. And he's like, okay, call me when you realize you do. And he's like, <laughs> whatever. And then he does ring him back, and he's like, okay, I need you. And then he's like, haha, price just went up. And he's like, fuck you, man, and throws his phone. And then he f rings him again and says, fine, whatever you want, fine, fine, fine. And so Mr. Nobody is now in the game, in yeah. terms of like he's actually trying to kill John. And you he can bring him a fancy old timey phone with on the yeah, it's a, yeah, it's yeah. rotary phone. I'm pretty right? sure there was no cable on that thing. Yeah, it's, it's, wireless. it's wireless, a wireless rotary phone. <laughs> oh, of course. Be, it, they didn't have a wire, but there was a dude that brought it to him. So yeah. on a little tray. Um, of all the millions of times in this film that people shoot at John and hit his suit, the mini boss, who's got really great accuracy from what he's, we've seen, finally pulls the gun on John when he can do nothing right at his head. It's over. It's done. But he freezes for a couple seconds. He looks at John and he's like, hmm. And then the dog grabs his hand with its yeah. mouth <laughs> and uh, bite, bites his head so he can't shoot. And it's just like, of all the times you would freeze, it's when you've got the clean shot. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. You know? I, I guess maybe the mini boss. It's like that moment sometimes where you've been fighting a boss for a million years and the last thing you need to do is just hit him with a normal strike and you just you just you're just like wow it can't be that simple can it and then you fuck up and then everything dies yeah <laughs> yeah simple as that i guess uh. and so yeah uh, john runs into a building and then all of the uh the lads with the dragon fire or whatever weapons chase him in there and um mm, they have like weird modern thompson things <laughs> i'm like okay whatever so uh, we begin uh, the Hotline Miami sequence, I guess, is what you'd call it, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good way of describing it, with the music from John Wick 1, the, the, uh, the club, club music. Uh, yeah, being played. I, I think as soon as I heard the music, I was like, oh, they're probably going to do something, like, big here. Well, like, um, do you remember how much we could talk 
almost infinitely about all the music choices in Ragnarok, all the leitmotifs and how they set things up mm -hmm. with different speeds and different instruments of the same tunes and then how they would repeat them and for tragedy or, you know, whatever have you. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so much to say about what the songs are telling you and how they're backing things up and where they're placed with a lot of purpose. This one, to me, it's funny because um, a lot of people didn't even know that it's a song from the first one, but I immediately was just like, ah, I remember this one. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Yeah. And, 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 but like, wham, wham, what wham, is there wham, to it wham, 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 other than that? Wham, wham, wham. It is just meant That's... to be like, this is the song from John McWan that played in the club, remember? Uh, mm -hmm. I guess their thing would be, well, hey, for those of you who've, because I wonder how many people have even seen John Wick 1 at this point compared to like 2 or <laughs> That's four. actually a good point. Well, well I mean, because uh, they've all, they've, inc they've made more and more money each time. Each one's made like double the last one made at the box office. So I wouldn't be surprised at this point if like, <laughs> there's a lot of people who didn't even see John Wick 1 and so it's just like cool music that's playing in this scene rather than because it's not really a callback at all they're not in a club that was, um, that's what, what I'm trying to get at is there is nothing to it other than this is an easter it egg is, essentially yeah, back um, easter egg thingy yeah yeah which is kind of like the most this will ever do John Wick because like, if you think about it like what what would be the meaning of playing that song here and it's just like well well, Maybe. it's uh, it's the thing is, it's kind of awkward because it's not like I think you could you could read into it being diegetic in the first film and into as well when they do like a similar thing with the club shootout in uh, like in the big uh, like ruins place where they play. I think it's the same artist as well who did that track. Um, and it's like, oh, well, that could be diegetic too because it's another nightclub like shootout. But here they're just in like some abandoned, dilapidated building. Yeah. So I, th I think it's just because it is a song from the first film when it's about to accompany their big one-take, big uh, spectacle shot. So there's that, and I realize when attempting to praise the fact that they chose that song, it's like, man, I'm kind of overblowing something that is a really simple choice that is just that song existed before and now here it is again. There's nothing more to mm -hmm. it than that. Um... And then, of course, uh, yeah, the style, for anyone who hasn't seen this, it's basically like they're shooting it from like a bird's eye view, and they're moving through each of the rooms as though there's no ceiling. Uh, and it's like a big set that is all one shot, and John's fighting everybody. But, you know, it's the same stuff. You slow it down, everybody there is much stupider than John, uh, even though there's many of them. They're all like surrounding him. They'll all miss their shots. He'll hit them all. None of them are wearing the um, the special armor. You know, and, and plenty of them have to wait. If they all came at him, he'd be fucked. It's just all the normal stuff. There's nothing I have to say about it in terms of choreography that makes me impressed other than the fact that it's new. I'm just like, oh, this yeah. is different. Yeah, it's novel, that's for sure. I, I mean, I like the framing. I think it's like a cool way to shoot it. Well, so, um, I mean, I, I would one-up that and just say I like the normal way they, they do it as well. It's just I don't think the choreography is that impressive anymore. Mm. Right. Um... I still like the regular way he kills people. I just wish it were because, like, it's it's just something you don't get in most action movies where they actually let a scene exist as it is and they fight each other instead of just cut, cut, cut. Even House of the Dragon really disappointed me with the um like the sword combat. It was a lot of the time they just zoom right in and cut, 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 and it's like I have no fucking clue who's doing what right now. I just know action is happening. Well, it's it's the one thing that like is always going to earn John Wick like points is the fact that to have enough confidence to have clarity in your stuff even if the choreography is uh eh, you know like at least you have the confidence to show it uh yeah. fully and that you have actors who are willing to commit to doing the choreography like it's um it's it's uh i think because if, if you were to be like so what is it really that i think like people who especially people who are like more invested in films like about john wick it probably would just be the fact that from a production standpoint it feels like everybody's working really hard to try and do something cool Problem yeah. is that like the script gets no attention or care at all. Mm. Um, it's just like it, I don't know, and and it, it seems like a shame when if the script is uh more well fleshed out, it could just like serve to enhance all of this. Like these scenes could exist beyond like when people talk about these scenes later on, you know, in the same way that people talk about really cool action scenes from uh you know, from other films, that you could talk about the character motivations that are informing the fights rather than just the fights. That's that's that. I mean, I don't have anything mm. else to say. If there's anything else you guys want to say about that scene, you go right ahead. Uh, no, not really. All that work, and yet, you know, 
You watch John Wick for the action, not for plot. Why are there any plot at all? Why isn't it just uh, action scene then? Also, how, I, we have, uh, how about we have a film with the action together? and the plot is good? How about that? Yeah, like John Wick 1. <laughs> I don't know. Whenever they say this, I'm always just like, okay, but both? Question mark? Mm. Well, I suppose it's it because it, if somebody said, "Well, I don't really care about the cutscenes in this game, right? Like, I'm only in it for the mechanics." Well, it's like, yeah, well, I guess you can skip those, right? But like, when I'm at the theater watching John Wick Four, I can't skip the plot. I was about I to say to it's a it's like seventy five percent it. plot. It's a huge. It's a long movie, and the action scenes are long. You know what reminds there's me of? More, there's more people talking than there is like action scenes. Mm. Uh, when I said the big problem with King of the Monsters for me was it was like 95% fucking idiot human drama and exactly. people were like yeah. people were like I go to see yeah. it for the monsters more I don't care about the, the human drama the monsters belly in it I was like the monsters, the monsters grand total what 7-8 minutes of monsters the rest I of it was yeah. just humans being dumb like yeah, why dumb bullshit it's the same as like with a lot of the Roland Emmerich films like yeah. really you want to see the disaster stuff but unfortunately 2012 has like way more of just shit character work and and terrible scenes like connecting it all together like it, it i i feel i feel because i'm thinking about, I'm thinking right about the, the raid because the raid feels like yeah. that is a film where the plot is very much there to facilitate the action scenes but the of course the raid has like incredibly well choreographed action scenes oh yeah with a huge amount of clarity uh, and a lot of variety in terms of the action scenes and the scenarios that are set up in terms of the locations that they're fighting in, whether they be hallways or the big open, like, lab that they fought in. These sort of, like, mini-bosses with their own unique gimmicks and stuff. But, like, I don't remember the plot of that film very well because it's been a long time, but I remember it all being, like, totally serviceable. Like, it wasn't, like, that it was all serviceable and ser uh, for, the, for the action scenes to happen. In this case, it's, like, it is detrimental a lot of the time. Like, a lot of what is enabling these action scenes to happen is just, like, you know, like, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And I don't understand why people would want to dismiss the idea of, like, having a strong plot or strong characters or strong character conflicts. As we mentioned with Empire, what makes it so easy it. to be invested in that fight between Vader and Luke is the characters. And, like... Mm -hmm. Having John once again, like, imagine all these people mattered. Imagine they were sent by someone who, like, had a deep connection with John. Imagine they were there with them, and we know that, and you can identify them through what they're wearing, and, the, like, each of the combat scenes, like, the, we can actually tell how things are progressing better in, t in terms of characters rather than nothing at all. And then, of course, like, Lord of the Rings might be a comparison of just, like, building a plot line that you can see, like, oh, Saruman's building a whole army. He's getting all of his tech ready. He wants to take over Rohan. He wants it. Rohan currently are on the back foot. They've held up in this giant castle fortress. Oh shit, that army's coming. Oh, we have. Oh, I see. I see how everything's coming together. Oh shit. And then when it like starts to build up the actual seed, it's like, yep, I understand how everything got here. Now I'm ready for mm -hmm. everyone to start killing each other. Instead of just randomly being like, you know, Frodo is moving through the world, trying to get that ring there, and then suddenly it's like, hey, look at this castle. Oh wow, there's loads of men in the castle. Oh wow, there's loads of orcs attacking that ca Wow, that's just something that's happening. Look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> like moving back on. Like, why would you want contextless action? And if you say, well, like, I mean, well, it's not contextless, context it's just shit context. Well, yeah. the thing is, is it, there's a lot of, like, you can, there's heaps of YouTube channels that will make really cool contextless action scenes. Like, where right. it, it, is, it is simply there for you to enjoy the action. Like a lot of those old Freddie Wong, you know, shorts back in the day. Like mm. that is just contextless action. It's just, oh, we're gonna have an action scene here. But like this film is three hours long. I was about this to say was even long. Even those shorts would probably have more, more would character. have context. Yeah, yeah. Usually yeah, they'd like have the, like, some context. Yeah. Uh, it's just not a big story, right? It, uh, the context is there just for the action scene to happen. And hell, like, the action's often know. better too. People who do the sword fights and stuff. Some of that stuff. Some of that's really impressive. Or you know, like those guys who do like the Assassin's Creed like parkour videos where they're like running around on rooftops and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's really cool to watch as a spectacle. If if they were going to make that two hours long. You know, I I probably would expect like some meaningful. Yeah, why content. is this guy running? What's he running I, from? What what are we doing? I don't know. It's just um. It's with a get up. This is the worst defap in history. How is it going <laughs> to beat out eighty four? Come on. <laughs> Wait, um, which one was that? <laughs> <laughs> just uh, give it give it a YouTube for you. Go go check out. Which All right, okay. Eighty four. Um, but yeah, by the way, uh, I want to amend my statement. It's not that nobody would ever want um, 
context assassination is that why would you pick it over <laughs> context, you know? Uh, why would you, especially when you have to watch context? Uh, it's it's just, it, it boggles the mind sometimes. It's like, yeah, the, these are cool cutscenes for fights, but man, cause they, they could be so much more interesting and better. Not just for choreography, not just for character, not just for plot, not just for will building. All of it, all at once. Yeah. And man, these movies would be fucking amazing at that point. Imagine how well these would do at that point. Yeah, well, maybe really maybe they well wouldn't do any better or worse. That's I reckon thing. they'd do maybe better they if, if all the writing was tight would, as fuck but... and the characters were really interesting. Well, like, it's kind of awkward, right? From movies, well, you know, when we're movies. talking about, uh, like, I enjoyed plenty of the scenes in Top Gun Maverick that weren't them in the planes. Like, that film makes efforts to actually have some amount of character in forming those action scenes. I'm sure everybody would agree. Like, isn't that preferable? Like, if you're going to have one of the two? I think so. I, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I don't... I'm, 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 it has to be a well, like, you know, surely. The Last Wish, if someone said, like, it's the animation style, and someone else went, no, no, it's the comedy, and someone else, well, I think it was the action, it's like, I think it's the interaction, a lot of the, I'd be like, dude, I think it's the writing, that's what pushed Last Wish as far as it went. I know that the animation yeah. still counts for a lot, it's just that I can't, yeah. I can't assume something, that writing must have done a decent job for a lot of people's investment in that movie, it had to have. I think so. It's more than it just looking pretty. There's plenty of pretty looking movies that no one talks yeah. about. Last Wish? Yes. Puss in Boots 2, The Last Wish. That is what I'm referring it's to. A phenomenal oh, movie. You should see good. it. One is of the best the of 2022. Of 2022? One maybe. of the best. Of the fact that Avatar was nominated for Best Picture over that bullshit yeah. is what that is. If you want to know more about it, we did a Forge on it. Go check that mm -hmm. out if you, yes, can, yeah. if you, if you want to know more about, about it. We talked about it here for like two hours, I think. It's actually the most watched Forge to date. <laughs> oh. Which is pretty cool, because it's a good movie, which makes me very happy. It is a good movie. Very good. <sighs> so anyway, uh, everyone gets killed except, of course, the two characters. Because I guess they qualify. Um, and of course, as soon as it's just those two, both of them miss, 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 miss. None of them hit each other except maybe John gets tagged in his clothing. And then they both run out of ammo. And so John tackles him, and he just so happens to tackle him through a hole in the floor, and they both fall to the bottom floor. I just, I, I was just like, what the fuck? What are the odds Wait, of that, it man? Even, doesn't, doesn't it collapse? I thought it collapsed. No, it's just a hole there. Oh, that's even funnier. It is funny. Because <laughs> no. um, so John didn't know that was there. He just seems no. like, oh, fuck, here we go. Uh, but just put it on his list on multiple concussions today. It's I was fine. about to say, distances like that don't hurt John at all, so it's fine. Anyway, they get into a big old fist fight, and this, by the way, John recognizes exactly who this is. He is trying to kill you. Clearly the bounty actually reached, you know, the point. And it's like, alright. Yep. So they're fighting. John Wick, however, beats him. Of course he does. And he's strangling him, just choking him out. But while they're having this fight, Mini Boss turns up. And he is just looking around, and John spots that he's looking around. And then uh, Stranger's Doggo, which has been mysteriously missing for this fight, by the way. We saw him, like, attack someone at some point, but you'd think he would have attacked John by now? Especially with his owner, like, many grunts of pain and anguish, and, and you'd think the dog would have turned up. But no, it's because we're doing a thing. The dog turns up to Mini Boss. Mini Boss sees Dog and knows from earlier that Dog is an asshole and bit him, so he aims the gun at him, being the dog, John Wick sees that, and so he releases uh, Mr. Mr. Nobody and shoots Mini Boss before he can shoot Dog. Which, in this moment, I believe is supposed to be considered a great emotional payoff for the fact that he really likes dogs. Doesn't land for me, though. I don't think this makes much sense at all. These two have been trying to kill John. Why is he protecting them? What's going on? Is it literally just because it's a dog? It might be. The dog would have bitten John to... if Mini Boss wasn't here. Would what would John have the done then? He would have been like, ah, get off my balls. He likes dogs. What about the dogs that are biting his balls? Does he like those ones? Specifically. <laughs> Especially, I don't know. Like, look, um, guys, I'm I'm pretty keen on dogs, but the dogs that are biting my balls, I just don't know. They they go down in the rankings quite a bit. 
So, yeah, um, I don't know, I thought it was actually a little bit cringe. Um, this guy, he has earned every reason for John to fucking annihilate him. Um, yeah. and he nearly does, except he sees the dog, which is an extension of this guy who has killed people, who would have killed John, is in trouble. I don't, like, it doesn't follow to me at all. It's literally just like, yeah, but I it's think a it dog. just because he's a dog. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's this awkward line the film tries to tread that um, Mr. Nobody is like a secondary lead of the film to some extent. Like he's had POV scenes and that we kind of like him, even though everything in his scenes is to do with killing John Wick. Like yep. he was set to be a good guy well before he even, you know, pretended to be a bad guy. But then yeah, you actually look at what happened and like John should have killed him by now several times over. So it's just kind of annoying, because like, he's only yeah, really... Yeah, what really separates this guy from just a random mook? I don't know. Uh, nothing, really. It's just the film... Like, the plot forces John not to kill him. And, and to the defend film his had dog. the opportunity to have him be like, Oh, yeah, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, I need the money for the operation, I need the money to save the farm, I need the money for the that stuff. But now he just wants money, because he wants... To I'd like a house, and then house. John's like, wow, it's going to be a big house. And he's like, yes, specifically a giant mansion. That's what I want. I want a giant for me and my dog. my dog to for run me around and my in. Dog. And oh, do we have, like, more dogs? Like, no. Just what about, one. like... No, just this one. Couldn't we have had a payoff of... I don't know, maybe it's too bleak to be, like, to kill Mr. Nobody, and then to take the dog. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Or, yeah, or Mr. Nobody. Yeah, is it a thing where Mr. Nobody, he's killed protecting John, and then John adopts the dog, and so you now he's that, got a yeah. dog again? That's a thing. You could have done that. Nobody's like, oh, I'm going to save John because something happens, or it's tragic that he, while he's fighting with John, he dies, and maybe, you know, he does something. You can give him, like, a heroic send-off, and, and then, you know, the dog's like, oh, the dog is sad because this is my Mr. Nobody guy, and he has the backpack with the armor on it. And like and this is what John's annoys me about the movie is it gets to get away with this stuff because nobody's thinking about any of that. They're just thinking about it's a dog. Don't let the dog die. Oh, he saved the dog. Oh, because oh. because the first because he was all about a dog. It's, oh, that's so good. And you're like, why? It's pretty poggers. Just because it's a dog. Pretty doggers. Pretty I thought, I thought oh. that How did you I know think of that? dogs being <laughs> used for that. like cute fact. It was like a meme people hated as well. Like people love to point it out. Because the dog in this, like I said, it's if anything. Well, what was it? People said that that was what it was in Ragnarok. But... They did. It was. That's yeah. uh, what a great thing to uh, use as a counter argument. The fact that you could like bring up fucking thirty minutes of arguments for how important that scene is versus what is happening here. I don't understand. Why would John spare the dog? Why would he spare Mister Nobody? They're both trying to kill him for money. Yep. I guess the dog He's... isn't really. Try to kill him for money. But... I mean, not like in an actual <laughs> motive, but that's the function dog of the really dog. Does the dog's like, yeah, I'd love her. I'd love her big mansion. Yeah. It's yeah, but nobody's like, I, I wanted to live in a nice small cottage, but the dog wants the mansion, so I gotta do it. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> they they did the thing where they they like, what size house do you want? Mansion. And it, like the, the dog's like, mansion. And it turns over a card and it's like 37. And the guy's like, oh, just a little villa, this little cottage in the woods, four. Oh, well, I guess we're going with a mansion. <laughs> the dog is not... <sighs> and it's know, funny the, because the, yeah. five seconds later is possibly the stupidest part of the movie. Possibly. Uh, John uh, decides, I'm just going to fucking run and jump out a window of... Yeah, because yeah. there's the next wave of enemy spawns. So, ah, I need to get out of here. So <laughs> there's only one obvious solution to that problem. It's, there's only it's... one thing I could do. Um, everyone in chat will be mentioning aim for the bushes, and we'll explain that in a second. So, <laughs> he's on the third floor, and in, yep. I th is it, I can't remember the difference, is it Europe versus America, where it goes ground, America, one, two, three, first... while you guys do one, two, in three, a... right? Yeah, we start at the first floor is the, the ground floor. That's the first floor. Wait, um, I thought that was us that did that. Is that you that did it? Yeah, we do that. That's your uh, wait, who I mean, the... We do that, yeah. Wait, who are the ones that... Maybe... Because there's confusion Maybe for. Because uh, so uh, I remember there's like a there was an argument that was being had between two people of different place. European is ground. America is. Oh yeah, yeah. America don't Reddit... have a ground floor. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, it's just always the first floor. That's. Just... Oh, yeah, Can okay. you just say right. the opposite of that? 
No, guys, I didn't. in chat, help us out. Did Rag say the exact opposite of that? No, I, think I, I just told you what we do here. The, 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 the ground floor is the first floor. First floor, then second, then third, then fourth. There is no ground floor. Yeah. The ground floor is the Are... first floor. There is no ground floor. I'm, I'm just using it because I'm talking to you, Brit Bongers, right? So, yeah, if you wanted you to... Brit Bongers, one you of them in... is British. The, the, what you needed to do was say... Your money. So, you walk in the first floor, you go... If you're in America, you walk into a building on the first floor. Yeah, you should have just said the floor bottom is... floor is first floor, not the ground the floor is the I first it, floor, because that's confusing I, as the fuck. First time, the first time I explained it perfectly fine. No, you did not, because you used yes, ground floor. You you couldn't... You, you had to keep that on, out of I the vernacular. The Otherwise, you would have, I didn't call it You know floor. for a fact you could interpret that both <laughs> ways. You know. On the ground. Literally My, on the ground. In America, ground. the ground floor is the first floor. That could go both ways. And you then know. I elaborated multiple times that you walk into no, the first No, we had to elaborate did. for you because we were confused. No, I just, I followed it up and said that specifically. Next time, to listen say carefuler. the bottom floor is the first floor. No, because you could have basements. You can't say that ground floor is first floor when the conversation is about whether or not the floor that is on no, the ground floor is the first floor. No, because there's also the, inflection. The, there's also the inflection of how I said ground floor, and then yeah, it was immediately followed up by saying you enter the building in the first floor. Next time, Rex, be more I clear, was incredibly okay? That was thorough. very confusing. It was so clear. To the point where you made me question the entire world's view on you're ground bad at versus listening. first floor. You need to listen, Kapler, like or whatever. You need to be a better listener. You Americans <laughs> fucked up the English language. All right. No, oh, we God. You enter the first floor, assuming that they the took first it. They raped it. <laughs> they <laughs> <get> ground level. <laughs> so anyway, he jumps from the British third floor and the American fourth floor. Wait, so I can't have a ground floor then? That's racist. Well, I don't well, I guess know how many other places as, uh, to do it. Yeah. Ours, right? Well, so, so if it, is, it, is it actually, so it's European and Australian. Is America the in only Australia, one? That... In Australia, the floor that is located like on the earth, that is the ground floor. Yeah. And so you go, go ground one, two, one, two three. three, four. America go one, yeah. two, three, four, five. Yeah. Yes. yes. But we do not. But oh, oh, here's another thing. Do you guys have a 13th floor? If there's 13 floors. Uh, we do. Yeah. Or 14 uh, floors, I guess. <laughs> We skip. I, do, I don't think we do the skip thingy. We do here in America. What do you mean you skip? What do you, what do you mean? So because technically, when you get unlucky. up to the 13th floor, it's, you, you, it's skip. It goes from 12 to 14. There is no 13th Why? floor. It's just, uh, it's just like, a, it's like a superstition that kind of became tradition. You don't have a 13th floor of a building because it's considered unlucky. Does anyone, it goes 12 to 14. Is, is there like fun stories of buildings that did it and then they got like... They were attacked by goblins or they something. All they all exploded. They all exploded. Not but, instantly. Yeah, Why do you think there's no 13 floor buildings? They all died. <laughs> well, I know, I know that 13 is an un the unlucky number. I figured there'd be a better reason than that. That's all. There, there might be. I, I think that it's... Um, it, I, it, it's, I think it's just one of those things that became tradition because of the superstition of the unlucky okay. 13 number. A 13th floor... It, it's such a commonplace little superstition that it just uh, the buildings just don't now have a don't they don't have a thirteenth floor. So when like when you go in the elevators and you see all the buttons, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Um, like oh, even the hotel okay. that I worked at it was a four star hotel, the thirteenth floor. It it followed that thing. You just don't, you know. Is there a horror movie called The Thirteenth Floor at that point? Ooh, maybe. And that it's like, yeah, you can only get there when you're in your dreams or some bullshit. Oh, oh, you know what the fear of the number 13 is called? There's a specific phobia for the, the fear of the number The Tinophobia? No, Triskaidekaphobia. Oh, That's was way close. too many that, that things. That's pretty close. Now, of course, I, now I'm, I, I highly doubt that people actually care, but it's just one of those little traditions that have kind of, you know, kept around. Which I, it's nice. It's it it just it's just it's just cultural flavor. That's what that is. Um. So yeah. Hopefully that gives an idea of the distance John falls and he slams into a van. And yeah, I don't and even then hits the ground. I was about to say like when you if you fell directly onto the van, there's a. I assume that would be better than falling onto the concrete directly. But he has like the worst of both worlds. He slams into the side and it like bends and hits his back and then yeah. he slams yeah. straight into the concrete. 
Like, yeah, it fuck. seems like that is actually the worst way to hit it because you're getting two impacts instead of one. And and again, pretty bad. Uh, I really would like to speak to the, I guess, writer or director or both of them at this point and be like, what do you want people to take from that? And if they said, like, well, you know, this is a fucking rough gig, and that once again he's been beaten down to, like, a, a pulp, this is tough shit, and he's he's gonna have to really try to make it through it, I'd be like, anything else? <laughs> like, that it's kind of funny, or... Is, is this supposed to be funny? Yes. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. When he jump, when he jumps out of that building, seemingly with no concern whatsoever as to what's down below. Yeah, so that's getting over the fact that it's insane plot armor that he's definitely dead. John, what were you thinking? Well, yeah, yeah, he, he didn't know what was out, out there. He just the river. Like, okay, yeah, that's fine. You know. But so just think of the resources they have right now. They, there's guns everywhere. Mister Nobody is now probably on his team because of him sparing the dog and sparing him. Uh, the mini boss has fallen down the staircase, and it's like, yes, but men are on the way. It's like, okay, so fight them. Like you have the past hundred thousand men. The whole time, yeah. How come these ones are different? Just kill them. Just shoot them in the face. Yeah. No, instead I will jump out and kill myself because <laughs> the thing about um, parodies, right, is the I've talked about this with a couple of things. Sometimes it's hard to think of how you'd parody some of these shows or movies because they've already done it. Um, the way that like you know the other guys parodied action movies in a lot of ways was just. The heroes have so much fucking plot armor, which they did uh, in their opening action scenes. They're just like, bullets are flying everywhere and nothing, it doesn't matter, they're not getting hit. But then, they just have this moment where they're like, oh shit, they had zip lines and they've cut them. Like, the, the people, they, they chased them onto a roof, they've gone all the way down. How do we get to them? And then they both just look around and just go, just aim for the bushes. And they just yeah. jump off a building, and then the camera pads in such a way that you can see there are no bushes anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> they just... the music, there goes my hero. <laughs> and they just keep falling. <laughs> and they and just, just slap sort of into there. the ground. Yeah. The fact that they just say aim for the bushes, do a fist bump and smile as they jump off. And it's then literally, <laughs> it's just right. It's one of the, it's one, of, it's such a great joke. Yeah, and I'll never forget it. And whenever I see anything like this, the first thought I have is aim for the bushes. Aim for the bushes. Like, Except... like you think John is thinking that? Like, I'll aim for the bushes? <laughs> he slams into a fucking van. <laughs> like, yeah, it I is guess... parody. If you made a John Wick parody film, this is a scene you'd take one for one. You wouldn't need to change it. Yeah, yeah. Just put and it in there. To think that this isn't even the worst fall that he's ever taken. <laughs> that he Maybe that's why he did it. It's like, oh, it's only the third floor. High, high. I'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. And this is after having been hit by several cars. Yeah. Um, how many ribs does he have left that are not broken? Zero? Zero uh, ribs, maybe? Maybe negative ribs at this point. Like, he, he's he destroyed ones he hasn't even got. Probably, we should yeah. probably talk about bones in general, not just the ribs. All jelly in there. And, uh, it's just yeah. Blood. Does it ruptured organs? Any ruptured organs? Probably. Oh, everything. He's dead. <laughs> he's Crack skull. Dead. So anyway, uh, he's back yeah. up and, and running because, of course, that wouldn't really that wouldn't even give a man pause. I don't think it would just. Yeah. But but he takes a few didn't, seconds. So didn't when in in John Wick one when he got thrown off of like the second uh, he fell like, one floor of, and he was pretty yeah. doomed from and he it. He was out. Yeah. He was out, like, that fight, basically. So, yep. these are John Wick universe rules, alright? John Wick 1 established that John Wick is a normal person. <laughs> he can't... He gets hurt when he falls from a height. Now it's all changed. True. It's a good fight, that one, too. Yep. The mini-boss guy. And, um... The, the, it, it, you might be able to deal with the insane jumps if he was actually, like, crippled for a time. And to be fair, at the end of John Wick 3, we're supposed to believe all he's been doing now is recovering with Hobo King, so that's something. But then this one's just like, he's fine. Like, oh. Yeah, he's fine. This is the throw, by the way. I have found it. Yep. Whoa. That's the distance. It's insane how, how like, John Wick 1 is a different film. <laughs> It really is. Desperate at that point. It's good stuff. Anyway, uh, next up is the staircase. And, like, there's not much to really go over here that's not going to no. be done pretty fast. It's just all of these assassins are on the stairs staring at John, and he looks at them as, like, a sort of standoff. And it's just like, so you guys could have just had rifles ready and shot him when he appeared. 
but you don't. No. And instead, John goes to draw, they go to draw, and he's faster and he shoots them before they can shoot him. And it's just like, why was this ever the scenario? You're ambushing. What is going on? Why do these assassins present each other to themselves, like, in public, directly to each other, that go like, let us begin the fight? Like, I don't think you guys know much this about assassination. This is what assassins typically <laughs> like, do. This is awfully chivalrous of our assassins. And yeah, he just, he fights his way up doing all the stuff we've talked about. There's no point in going through, like, more detail. Um, takes him fucking ages. He finally gets to the top. And he's, like, put his gun away and for some reason believes that there's not going to be anyone else. But mm. then he, like, somehow, it's one of those things where it's only until they're on screen that he actually sees them. Like, if anyone's seen this film, you'll know what I mean. He's walking up the stairs, and you know from how everyone is that he would see them, but he doesn't see them until the camera turns to see them itself. And it's just like, fuck's sake, I hate when they do that. And I can't imagine filming that way. Because everyone just be like, yeah. it's fine, don't worry about it. It'll look Wouldn't great. It awkward? Really awkward? In any case, they get the jump on him because of that. Like, somehow. And he is kicked... And uh, he is then thrown again halfway through, but the point mainly is that he falls down. What, like, how do you even summarize the length of this? Um, uh -huh. It's, oh, uh, I, I think it was, it's uh, overall 30 seconds long. So the first time he starts fa falling and rolling down, he just rolls down, down, down. And there's like breaks in between those staircases, so he rolls down the stairs, and then you should stop. But no, John just rolls through, because there's no other way that happens. And he rolls down, down to the next one. Down, down, down. Then he gets to like the halfway, three-quarter point, I think. And he stops and he's like, oh, finally. But the marquee guy is right behind him. So he kicks him again. Oh, no, he throws him, actually. He throws him into a lamppost. And he just falls yeah. down the rest of it, which takes yeah. another 10 seconds or so. Like, I think my whole cinema was laughing at that, play at that thing. Well, the thing, you, you mentioned it, Metal, that he just keeps rolling. It looks yeah. like he deliberately makes himself roll at one Absolutely. part. There's, so there's like one part going. in particular where he's clearly yeah. going to stop, and then he, like, and jumps he, forward to keep rolling. Yeah, keep rolling down. It's fucking dumb as shit. And, good god, I can't imagine the kind of damage that you would feel from all of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, I mean, stunt people roll down uh, stairs in a very specific way, as I mm -hmm. understand it. Well, they're also sure they usually wearing badly. some form of padding as well, right? Right, whereas in this case, it's meant to be a regular guy getting thrown. Like, you know, well, don't forget the spine slam into the lamppost, which, into by the way, the that spine, post, man, yeah. it's got to be made of vibranium at this point. It has <laughs> yeah. to be. His spine is wearing a suit. <laughs> Looking <laughs> suave. And yeah, uh, he meets Kane at the bottom of the stairs, who's like, come on, man, we gotta go to the duel. And this is where it's getting really weird, because, like... They make a big mistake here. Oh, do you they mean... They tell us how much... They tell that's me, a good tell point, yeah. how much time we apparently have, Also, that's... No. Clancy work. Brown has already said, oh, well, I guess John Wick's not showing up. Rip. Which is funny, because Kane hasn't shown up either. Right. Yeah. So the duel can't even fucking happen if John was there. And what happens if what happens if, if John killed up, yeah. Kane and then turned up to the duel? Would Clancy probably be like, "Well, I guess you won." <laughs> like, yeah, like, because at that point they, they have to they have to, they would have to estab establish easy for me to say uh, that the first guy has to be there because Winston is there, and that doesn't seem to count. But. Right, yeah. uh, Winston but Marquee and Marquee guy. would have to do the duel. Winston the and the Marquee guy. Up. That would be great. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be probably fair still, I guess. Oh, I don't know. But yeah, it's... Well, so they, what I wanted to say was that Clancy Brown's basically said time's up, but then John right. seems to think like, oh, we're fucked. And then they have Kane say... Well, they have John Wick say that it's between two and three minutes, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they two cap minutes, out three, three minutes, minutes easily. Yeah, they do. Uh, in in movie time is what we're saying. No, they didn't. <laughs> There's a clock on screen that they put in slow motion. And they're like, trust me, yeah. all of this is going real fast. They're just moving really fast. Yeah, that's how good they are. Um, and yeah, this is the scene where they gave up with Kane. He's just fucking wrecking people easily at a distance. Yeah. He knows where everyone they, is. They, they pretend because at one uh, point John says. There's three on the left. It's like, oh, which, where left? There's <laughs> a lot of left here. There's not even... <laughs> that's that's literally half of the world. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that's half. 
<laughs> if if Thanks, John had John. said like ten twenty one, it would still be kind of like I don't know, man. That's a real tough shot to make. It's it's yeah. he's blind. Okay, well, like it's, also, he cannot see. They are moving targets. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get him in the head because they're wearing the uh the, the suit. So you can't I, and you're right. Yeah, happen. so you need to aim at a specific part of their head. There's a couple of axes to take care of. There's not just the yeah. It, it doesn't yeah. work, but they didn't care at this point. They're near the end. Shut up. It's cool. It's so fucking cool to see them fight together, isn't it? And you're like, yeah, it uh, is. I love them. They're great. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's one part I like, and it's when Donnie Yen completely fucks up a guy. He like shoots him in his legs, and then shoots his friends, but then hits him, like, punch, 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 shoots another friend, then, like, knife, stife, stice, slice. The guy's, like, pretty much done, and then he finishes off with one more pistol shot, and it splatters a bit of blood on him, and he goes, Aah. I just <laughs> thought it was kind of fun that that yeah, would happen. Like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, that, That's my praise for the scene. There you go. Um, so John's about to die, because the mini boss okay. has got him. And then, because this movie is fucking lame... The stranger is there with his gun, and he's deciding whether or not he wants to save John. And he looks down at his dog, and his dog's like, Aw, oh, dude, come on, save him. He saved me. Yeah. He it's saved like, me. What? <laughs> so I'd rather be saved than have a mansion. I guess so. And so, yeah, he chooses to shoot the Marquis uh, backup uh, mini boss man in the outfit, you know? The, the, the clothing, yeah. not the yeah, head. The he had a clear... In fact, it looked like it was more clear to hit the head than the torso from the shot that he had. In any case, why? Why? Because also, why did it John. matter? The, the, usually the force of these weapons doesn't do shit all. It should have just bounced off him and then he killed John. And by the way, that guy had a clean shot on John's head for several seconds again and he didn't take it. Because he he just doesn't. He has these opportunities, and he's like, nah, <laughs> nah. Which means, yeah, pretty much everyone's defeated. Um, mini boss man still isn't dead, but then uh, stranger man gets his dog to bite him in the nuts, and then shoots him in the head. So um, that's that, you know. And all that's Did left it. now is the duel. Oh goody! All right, let's do the duel and wrap this up. I was gonna say it's kind of like a. Please end. <laughs> like, enough. Yeah, I'm about ready to be done. Um, this can go pretty quickly because there's a lot of walking slowly, you know. Mm. So yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, everything goes as expected in terms of you're not allowed to wear your armor. You get one shot, and then you have to move toward each other, uh, ten paces, and then shoot again, depending until one of you's. Well, is it one of you's dead, or is one of you's t on the floor? Uh, I think well, it's meant he's... to be dead. Yeah, I this think is important. <laughs> one of them, I, I think that uh, what's his name, Squidward said, um, until one remains. So yeah, I think he said Which something I like that. I can't dead. remember. Okay, I'm pretty well, sure he means. I'm pretty sure. Pretty that's sure. What he yeah. Means. Yeah. So yeah, well, dead. I guess we'll talk about that now. So first shot, they both graze each other, but they're bleeding. Second shot, John gets uh, pain in the kind of in the gut, looks like, and he gets John in the shoulder. So now mm -hmm. it looks like John's gonna win, and even uh, um, Winston says, "Just kill him and get it over with." And then the third shot, and so this is awkward. I'm assuming it might actually be the same for all of us. Um, I know it was for me, and it definitely was for Rags. Uh, it's very obvious to me that they say fire, and John doesn't shoot, but Kane does, and so John's hit in the gut now. He's on the floor, and so a lot of how do I put this? There is. Two viewers at this point. One who's like, why didn't John shoot? What's going to happen now? And the other viewer who's like, wow, John missed. Rip. Mm -hmm. And that creates two very different scenes for those two audience members. Because I was just confused. I didn't know why he wasn't shooting. And I was, I was like, what happens now? And all the other characters seem to believe that John has shot as well. So it's over? Because John's on the Which floor now. It feels like a difficult mistake to make. I feel like if you were actually present... You would even hear very clearly that it was one shot, not two. Yeah, like you, your senses would point you all to one direction, and it would be exactly. Kane's. It wouldn't exactly. be anything to do with yeah. John. It's, it feels really hard to fake that, and I didn't realize it was supposed to be a surprise. I thought that we knew it from watching it. I was like, yeah, John didn't f like he got him before he could fire. Is the best I could interpret, which is weird. But then, of course, you could just add in that John doesn't want to kill him. 
Um, mm. Anyway, the Marquis is like, I wish to execute John now that he has lost the duel. And it's like, I well, wait, feel the coup de is he dead? Oh. Is he lost? Is he still alive? How does it, what are the rules here? Like, what? I don't know. I guess he can just do that. It, it definitely comes across as, yeah, I guess that's just something he could do. And you're like, okay. Fine, I guess. And so he prepares the gun and he makes, uh, Donnie Yen is like, my daughter is now free from the high table, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, uh, okay. He goes to shoot at John, and this is the part that's really awkward. He clearly aims right at his head. He could fire. He could fire. There's seconds passing. He could still fire. He could still fire. Then Winston says, You idiot. He hasn't even <laughs> fired his shot yet. And he's like, Wait a minute. And then he looks back at John. And John gets up, raises the pistol. What does he say? Does he get up or does he shoot him from the ground? Yeah, he, he says consequences. consequences. Yeah. And then oh. shoots him in the head. Oh, when I say get up, I mean um, he goes from looking almost prone to being sat up. I didn't yeah. mean he stood up. Um, um, good thing that the marquee guy didn't shoot him like... He could have shot him the whole thing. time. Yeah. <laughs> and even when he sits up and says consequences, he may well have been startled enough to just, you Absolutely. know... Absolutely! I trigger. know I would have fucking shot him. Yeah. Like, but he needs to say the line instead of just taking the shot straight away. Consequences. Yeah, and that's that's, that's uh, it for the Marquee. That's Marquee guy done. Yeah, and uh, and uh, uh, Kane, right? Because the so this is the big flaw. <laughs> they made it very clear that we gotta stick to the rules, and that apparently your second has to be buried with you. Mm -hmm. Kane is the Marquis's second. Yep. So Kane has to die now. But I think the film already forgot that, like immediately. Film's like, oh, do you, do you think it. they 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 cover that by him going like, oh, but we're cool now, right? I'm done or something. Ah, that's not even that's close. They, yeah, he I lost know. the duel. <laughs> that's the, the only way that the deal can work is if he won the duel, and if he won the duel, they lost the duel. Yeah, exactly. They sure did. Can't have it both ways. It's kind of funny, too, that um, Clancy Brown basically says, like, so he says, your obligation to the table is satisfied, John Wick. You are free. Did as... the Marquis state that as a, sorry, I just would, did the Marquis state that as a condition for his side as well? Well, it has to be. Why would the Marquis be nervous if he wasn't going to die if Donnie Yen got killed? He was nervous. That's why he sent all of the people after him, because he knew that if he lost, he was dead. They've got to be in it together. I, th I think the confusion here might be the, like John doesn't have uh like like a nomination, but Winston yeah, is his sure. second. Who yeah. is the Marquis's second? It's like, well, it's his nomination. That's the only second that exists. Like, yeah, who else could it be? And you even have the Marquis giving him the ammo in the same way Winston is. Like it's it's the exact same thing, but mirrored. Like I, I don't know how else you could interpret that. Why would there be a rule for All your second? going after John to minimize the risk. Yeah, the risk of death for the Marquis guy if, uh, if Kane loses. What else could it be? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. see how it, there could be any other explanation. Where's the nomination? Is the nomination a second? I mean, why, why would he be nervous then? It, if the nomination dies, then what? Is it like, oh, your nomination's dead, so you're just whatever. So, like, he just has no second. What does that even mean? What is the second? What is that? What is that role? Well, yeah, yeah why Why was Winston John second, Why is then? Winston a second? What does that mean? And you know you don't have an answer. <laughs> <'Cause> the, <laughs> like, yeah. Don't worry, I wouldn't expect you to try and come up with something, because the film did It doesn't know what the fuck's going on. But, uh, yeah, uh, Kane is clearly But Barry functioning. did not mean dead? Are you memeing? Barry doesn't mean dead. <laughs> Are you memeing? You're memeing, right? You gotta put a kappa when you say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Lancy Brown says, Your obligation to the table is satisfied, John Wick. You are free. As are you and your daughter, sir. Uh, obviously talking to Kane. And then he says, You, talking to Winston, will be fully reinstated, Mr. Manager. All of your terms will be fulfilled. Our business is now concluded. It is the most, like, everything is over now, all the threads are tied up, thanks for playing, bye. Like, it, yeah. it is like, oh, okay, sure. It's all Done. neatly yeah. tied up in a way that didn't exist as an option for John Wick until this film.
Yeah, you as we've done this from the start, we've highlighted before. Yeah. But why didn't he challenge Blood Debt Man to a duel? Why didn't he use the Continental in Osaka in two and three? Why didn't Winston, tell, why didn't Winston tell anybody tell about him? any of these fucking rules? Why weren't the markers told about in the first movie? Why mm -hmm. it, it, they just this is what I mean. John Wick two is the Marcus. John Wick three was like uh, the extensive retarded crazy elder. All this they had loads yeah. of extra lore in that one. And then this one, of course, is the uh, the the what dueling the thing, which is funny as fuck. Yeah. Um. And yeah, uh, he's, he's just the implication is it's funny. They both have like a chat, John and Kane, and it's like you've both been shot three times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you you need might to see a doctor. Yeah, I, I don't even. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and John says, "Winston, will you take me home?" And Winston looks concerned. He says, "Of course." And then we watch John slump over on the steps because he's dead. Dead. And then they show us dead. his grave. He's a grave. Uh, he's a grave now. He's in the dirt. He's he definitely dies. dead. He's, and he's he dead beneath really the ground. He's beneath the, the ground cover. floor. And so ends the wonderful journey. As many people have said, this incredible book ends to, to a wonderful franchise. And I'm just like, anybody who says that, please tell me the plot of John Wick 2 and 3. I beg you. <laughs> I, I often mm -hmm. forget portions of it, and I think they're terrible. So like, you know, what are the people who like it remember, other than the action right. scenes? And so, yeah, presumably like, the people who like it would have more of an, a familiarity and investment in in all of it. Dead laugh. Yeah. It, so the the thing I believe immediately. By the way, I believe this so hard. I didn't even think it was considered a spoiler oh. to say that he's he's obviously not dead. Like I thought it was just like there's no fucking way John Wick is dead. They've no obviously way, yeah. agreed to fake his death so he can live in peace. The film right. was talking about how this man has to exist by killing people. That's his only purpose. He can't just fucking leave him, leave everything alone. Which doesn't make sense, because the whole fucking first film is him finally finding peace and then losing it. So of course, yeah. the film's probably trying to say that he saw this as an opportunity to fake his death, and so he did, and Hobo King and Winston facilitated it. They sorted it all but, out. But, unfortunately, Lionsgate will not allow it because this film has made the most money. Like, no, no, they will. The that will be the story. But then, like I said, my number one theory will be Donnie Yen is in trouble and the only person that can save okay. him is John Wick. Mm. Right. John they're, Wick is becoming like back. the fucking Saw franchise or the, well, the I mean, Jason they're, the Jason they're doing, uh, they're doing that ballerina spin-off. They're doing a television show about the Continental and Winston. And there's no way, there's no way that this is the end. They make more and more, more money each time. Yep, they make another yeah. one. They're going to make another one. Maybe not soon, but eventually, maybe in like five years. I wouldn't be surprised if we see John Wick Chapter Five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they said they take a break for now, but yeah. I'm trying to understand why they'd want to do that, but they're gonna they're gonna make more. There will be more, and John Wick will become like a franchise that spins off, and they make the funny, a bunch of other things. Funny part of it is that and they want you to believe that all the threads are tied up, but they're not. He wanted to take no, revenge really against not. the High Table. We haven't even fucking seen the High Table. Secondly, we've no. got obviously uh, Kane. He's got a someone's got a death wish on him, being Koji's daughter. I don't know if they ever want yeah. to show us what happens with that. Like, what's Halle Berry's character up to? What happened with the adjudicator? Like, what? This, this world's just like there's just stuff everywhere, all over the floor. Just like you gotta you gotta pick any of that up, and they're you like, eh, maybe. <laughs> That's the reason why yeah, maybe. entering into this need film, I was still kind of operating as though it was like a story in the sense of the kinds of goals that you would typically have with writing a story. And coming into this one, I just I had no clue what it was gonna look like in terms of like a finale. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be a finale. I figured they were going to that that it was going to be like setting up more sequels because how do you wrap everything up in one film at this point? John Wick Five. John, I thought you were dead. I was. John Wick Five <laughs> Part One. But I got better. Well, no, I don't think he'd even say that. He'd just say, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah." I got better. They probably would make that joke, and then they'd be like, "Aren't we fun?" No, go away. Well, that's John Wick 4. Pretty bad. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as 2 or 3. I'll agree I with that. I, th I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> like, dot, think, dot, dot. Pretty sure 2 is the worst yeah. one. The Could thing about um, what I will say is that, that John Wick 4 can never have that those two have is they did more of like the first forms of breaking the, the series apart. 
This one's done a lot oh, of the sta same things, but it just it doesn't seem to be breaking as result, much. Results, yeah. Yeah. Just carrying uh, on with what's been handled. They just add shit on top without really having to because we don't even see the coins in this movie that have no, been like a you, thing you saw you saw one. Oh, one. one. Yeah, that's uh, right. The, the Mr. Nobody put Mr. one on Nobody. the table. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Coins. Well, okay, we got one coin. Yay. I'll give him the coin. But yeah, it's just. Hey, we are, the John has really good friends with the Continentals. Like, oh man, he should have asked him for help ages ago. <laughs> That's like, yeah. And uh, you know, for those who are curious, this is pretty much our assessment of two and three. This is how it would look. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, pretty same much problems. like this. Here's why he should be dead. Here's why the rules don't make sense. Here's what rules they forgot. Here's why this character sucks. Yeah, and like, yep. it's all the same. It's, it's like you can categorize it pretty easily. Will building just contradicting itself as soon as it goes on. Characters doing things they shouldn't be doing out of their own interests. And plot armor. Plot armor everywhere. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you might think like, well, what about the other stuff? And you're like, what other stuff? Come on. What else is there? Uh, talking strictly about the writing, of course. Because there's plenty in style in these movies. And oh, I yeah. understand exactly why people enjoy them. They are fun, is what I hear. I just don't have as much fun when I'm like, ah, everyone's stupid, lame. Uh, yeah, there's nothing fun about thinking, oh, everyone in this movie's dumb and stupid, and it's nonsense. John Wick 4. Woohoo. The Wickening. Revengeance. Chapter 4, I got it right. Wickening, part 1. Chapter 4. Return Go watch to the raid and eat man. Iman has Donnie Yen in it. That's a really, that's a really yeah, good, good movie. Yeah. Up. Watch that movie. That movie's great. Actually, that's what happened I, after I watched John Wick 4 and started making notes and stuff. I was like, I should probably go get the Raid and the Iman collection on Blu-rays so I have them. And now I do. Because they're good Hooray. movies. And yeah, I guess it's like a, a matter of until the next John Wick, I guess, we'll probably end up checking it out. Because it's such an interesting little event that happens where yes this yeah. is the same as every single one of them everyone's very happy to see them they think they're amazing and it's like this is what action movies should be like and we're all just sitting here like what the fuck is going on <laughs> also, <laughs> it seems that you know give it a little bit of time and nobody could tell you anything very specific about them um dude if you which said is a lot like name yeah. the bad guy from two they wouldn't be able to name the bad uh, yeah if you said name the bad guy from three they'd be like dodo it's like it was a girl but that's fine name the bad guy from four they'll be like okay that was a french guy, guy. which is <laughs> really really awkward because everybody knows who hans like is from die hard everybody knows who he is mm -hmm. you know people don't forget him i mean people don't forget like the t1000 i, I guess that was sauron out, right? maybe i should yeah, yeah like Maybe someone would be like, what's well, so you kind of a good film unless you remember the name of the fucking villain? It's like, no, it's more indicative if you don't remember fucking anything about the plot lines. You just don't. Yeah, that's that's very much what it is. It's I like it's one of the best action films. Tell me something about it. Uh, I think it's kind of insulting to say this is one of the best action movies ever. It's like, dude, action movies can be so. so much better than this. Well, so something because uh, Fury Road was described as like one of the best action films when it came out. I remember. I think like Fury Road. Well, so I feel like Fury Road's got more working for it than like these films do. <laughs> like, um, I need to rewatch Fury Road. I remember ER I certainly need put me to. off it <laughs> like quite a bit. Um, so I might maybe I need to give it an old reassessment. Can't speak to that one very well, but mm. you know. I think, like, because Die Hard's been mentioned a couple of times, just like, that feels like a fucking a golden it's standard compared example. to something like this. Or, well, like, Lethal Weapon is another one that you could talk about as well in terms of having meaningful stuff going on with character. How about, how about Hot Fuzz? Uh, uh yeah. well, of course, Rush Hour, and that's, like, a big, fun movie. Well... I, yeah, yeah <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, uh, wow, you know what? I didn't even look at. I, I was, I was telling myself I won't look at the time until we end, just so I don't feel it. It's like six hours. Six hours to get through John Wick Four. That's yeah. a lot longer than I thought which, it would take. Which, well, Yeet. even though it's a three-hour-long film, I guess it's not that bad, right? I thought that we were going to skip through it a lot quicker, I guess, because of the there's nothing in it. But then again, you know, that's kind of the thing, isn't it? Why, why do people not remember much of anything in these films? And it's like because it's actually kind of hard. 
to remember all the shit that happens in these. There's a, there is a lot of shit that happens. A lot of people say stuff. And when you start, mm -hmm. like, listening to it, you're like, what the fuck? That doesn't match this thing, and that doesn't match this thing, but, yeah, there we go. Um, well, uh, hey, Metal, what are you up Hello. to these fine days? Uh, currently just playing Resident Evil on stream. <laughs> I know that feel. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still doing that video I talked about, but that's kind of just been replaced with just getting ready for RE4, talking about that, getting very familiar with that game. Uh, I basically have a finished strip, script around. Uh, I just need to uh, go back and watch it again. Watch it? It redrafted. Man, mm -hmm. my brain is uh, offline. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, gonna, that's definitely going to happen in the near future, hopefully. But yeah, for so, now, just Re Resident Evil uh, flim flams. Which prompts the question, when is the Resident Evil 4 EFAP? That will be an entire week from now. Woohoo! And uh, by the time that comes out, will when's Little Mermaid coming out? Uh, May. Um, so that's ages away. When's Guardians again? Guardians is the beginning of May. Little Mermaid's end of May. Interesting. I guess yeah. May will have some things uh, um, Obviously, And of course, Mario movie is out this week. Yes, and uh, oh, wait, not sure if we're gonna... covering that. It'll depend. We need to no, see it and see what far. we think. As for yeah. um, after Ari, I'm trying to think if there's anything that's guaranteed. It'll be probably figuring different things out. But um, yeah, uh, more work is being done. And for anybody who doesn't know, we've got Mandalorian, Gotham yes. Knights, and The Last of Us is all finished now. So you can go see that whole series if you want to. We reviewed it thoroughly, as we will with Mando, of which there are already five episodes out and nothing has really happened, but that's okay. Because I'm sure it's leading to something real cool by the time we hit episode yeah. eight. But yeah, you can catch all them on the Moolah channel. Uh, as for us, is there anything else you uh, you guys wanted to say, Fringy, Rag? Me? Nope. Not a thing. I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> um, well, uh, I think I may have... My brain is like... Your brain is... I I did a sound, but it didn't, it didn't come through, oh, I guess. Oh, okay. I was going to say, uh, we've actually uh, fully caught up through many different smaller sessions where we uh, have some free time on Super Chats. They're just releasing one by one, and uh, we'll absolutely get these done as soon as we have the next selection of time to use for it. Um, and then between now and next week is just getting familiar with RE4. We'll bring on a bunch of people, and we're going to talk about that game extensively. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's going to be quite the long fap. Um, <laughs> there's a lot to say. Uh I'd be my guess. And that'll be a more fun conversation, because, like, goddamn, this is pretty exhausting, like, talking about John Wick. <laughs> this is, this feels like one of those moments where it's just like, I am now happy to not talk about John Wick. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to talk about it. It's frustrating to talk about it, especially when trying to pass through the whole, like, well, yeah, but, like, why are you even trying to, like, analyze it? I don't know. That's really lame. Like, why yeah, are you trying well, it's to a good smokescreen, like, though, for the film, right? Like, Oh, yeah. People are it's almost a, encouraged to not one, think. talk about it. Um, yeah, kind of, because that's the kind of response you get. But meanwhile, because everybody agrees that something like Ant-Man is a dumb clown movie, like, everybody's happy to sort of jump in and shit on it. Yeah, why well, take Ant-Man's plotline seriously? It's just a dumb action movie. Yeah, yep. except, and, and that's something that they might actually say about these stupid Marvel movies. Like, that they're actually pretty meritless. <laughs> like, yeah. not completely, but, you know, like, that they wouldn't be treated as, like, serious attempts at making film. Um, compared to something like John Wick, which I definitely get the impression that the filmmakers are taking it seriously. I want to give them the credit that they're taking it seriously. I want to give them credit as filmmakers. And but, oh well. it's just another yeah. it slots right in. I wouldn't say it's um, better enough than two and three to be like separated from it in a tier list. I'd say it fits in with them. No, no, not really. Um, it's it's. I don't. I don't think it's as bad as those ones. But like, they're all inferior to the first film. Yeah, I would say it goes one, one and then two, three, four. Right now. And... Uh, is that your actual like order of them? Oh no, I'm saying that you'd view them that way. Like one is an island, and then two, three, four are like yeah, a trilogy yeah, of yeah. this uh, yeah, crazy yeah. new version of John Wick. I it's mean, almost it getting to the, the point, point where, where... oh wow, James. I treat I treat like uh, John Wick one as its own thing. Well, I was about to say John Wick it, walks off with this new dog, and that's the actual ending. And it may as well be like decanonized. Like it, it's. <laughs> Like two, three, four. Yeah. You watch them and then you go watch one, you'd be like, oh, they fucked this one up. <laughs> like, 
because uh, like... I mean, it, it is kind of at the point where I do view one like as its own thing on an island, like as its own story that has things about it that I like and that make me smile. Of like the you know the the speech of he's the one you sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. Like I love that stuff. I, 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 I love it. It's still I still love it. I love the action scene. I love. I I really like that film. Um, yeah, and I, great. I I really I think. I've talked about it before that like there's some films that I can I can't like pretend don't exist like canonically, and there are some things that I can like for instance I think Halo Five actually destroyed my investment in like the mainline Halo storyline from that point on like I just don't care anymore. But Game meanwhile there are other things where I can actually still... killed my investment in Game of Thrones. Sequels yeah, didn't and, kill and, my and interest it's... in OT though. No, that's what I was gonna say. For some reason, I look at the sequels and I, I more or less can just sort of move them out of my mind whenever I think about like the OT. I can sort of just watch those films as their own thing, and I can like look at them happy sitting there with the Ewok smiling, and it's like, yeah, you know. And then that was the end of that. I can do that, and I can kind of do that with John Wick. Um, like I can watch the first John Wick and treat it as its own thing, um, divorced from this insane, bizarro world. So that's nice that I'm still there. Um, I'm not even sure why this is the case. It seems to be a subconscious thing. But, uh, yeah, we've still got John Wick 1. Yep, so we got just, one good one. Do. I just hope that in terms of lessons that are learned from John Wick, because when these films are this successful, lessons are invariably learned. I hope whatever those lessons are are derived from the first film, not these ones. That's what I, that's what I want. That's um, what I hope. But to Plus recognize that you can make... It an action film like John Wick and be successful and create something that's like valuable um all on its own. Well but, yeah. Alrighty everybody, thanks for tuning yeah, in. Yeah, Thank you for done. the keeping yeah. us company yeah. and for and the kind donations. And we will like I said, we'll definitely get to reading them out. But for now, we're gonna say good night and probably mm -hmm. several of us are going to sleep straight away. But hey, it's been definitely. fun. Have yourselves a good rest of Saturday slash Beginning of Sunday, I don't know. Yeah, what, everybody. One yeah, of those yeah. two. Sunday, yes. Um, and we'll see you in the next EFAP related thing, whatever it may be. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Bye bye, bye everyone. Bye. Later. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Discord's really I wasn't surprised sure that. They all got through. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh, all right. An attempt was made. <laughs>